The Torium Pro is supported by the Queensland Government through Tourism and Events Queensland and features on the It's Live in Queensland events calendar. There's no place like Queensland when it comes to combining Australia's headline events with the most incredible destinations. From food and wine, festivals, art, culture and music, to sporting and endurance, Queensland is home to a world-class calendar of events. The amazing city of Brisbane played host yesterday to some of the epic fitness performances we have seen in a very long time. G'day, Jeremy Austin here, live from Pat Rafter Arena and with Pip Malone. And Pip, today we wear pink, and we're wearing pink for a very special cause. We lost Hannah Clark, one of our competitors, in 2020 and her three beautiful children to an issue of domestic violence. And today we're going to paint the pro pink. We are, and Hannah's parents have been doing amazing work here in the Queensland community alongside the government to raise awareness. So today we wear pink to help further raise that awareness. And we're going to have a lot of people in the crowd as well doing exactly the same thing. Team competition yesterday, very exciting. Four of our top teams coming in, and it is going to be a battle right down to Sunday afternoon. Urban, our side, Selwyn, and also EXF, our top four teams coming in. But the female division, that's where it's all happening. Look, everybody is here to see the females this weekend. Obviously, Tia Claire Toomey, we're going to see her continue her dominance and give the crowd what they want, which is a really good show of athleticism. But we have some new faces, and Georgia Pryor, she's sitting fourth behind some big names. So it'd be great to see some rookies maybe punch a ticket to the games from this Oceania region. Absolutely, and if you're sitting behind Jamie Simmons, Cara Saunders and Tia Claire Toomey, you are doing okay. Now, men's division, we had Baden Brown come out of the gates very hot yesterday. He had three event wins last year, and he has backed it up with an event win in event number one. Not so well on event number two, but he really set the standard for what is going to happen. Now, the big news of the day yesterday was the return of Ricky Garrard. Now, he didn't have a great event one, but in saying that, he did come in fifth, but he did empty the tank a fair bit, and he struggled a little bit to get that done. He has a little bit of rest, a little bit of food. He comes back and wins event number two. So the return of Ricky Garrard is definitely here, and we cannot wait to see what is going to happen over the next couple of days in the men's competition as well. More stuff coming to you live from Pat Rafter Arena right across your Saturday. We're painting the pro pink, so stay tuned right across the day and look forward to some amazing performances. Week one of the CrossFit semi-final proudly brought to you by Noble. And welcome back to Pat Rafter Arena, day two. And that is a beautiful sight to see some barbells on the competition floor all set up. And we have got a very, very full schedule today. I'm Jeremy Austin alongside me, Pip Malone. And Caleb Banfield will join us later on on the competition floor. And Pip, kicking things off with our team competition this morning. Yes, we have a big morning for the teams. With event three, it's going to be a spicy one. But event four, I'm excited for that. Absolutely. And with an event, and you look down the floor and you see some echo bikes, you know things are not going to go well for you. There's going to be some pain involved, that's for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. And lots of barbell cycling today. Day two of the Torian Pro. And we are painting the Pro Pink and a great splash of pink right around the stadium and we are going to get more and more people in here all in honor of hannah clark and her three children alia liana and trey tragically taken from us in 2020 and raising awareness for domestic violence not just here in australia but right across the world and we had Hannah's parents here yesterday morning and it was just so humbling having a chat to them and the things they are doing now to support the cause. They are just amazing people. What they've gone through is absolutely unbelievable. But Hannah was an avid CrossFitter, absolutely loved it. Her kids loved it. And I know that the Brisbane community, 
they love them as well. And the athletes doing their bit for the cause as well and decking out themselves in pink. So great to see everyone get around this amazing cause. And if you're coming in to an event on your Saturday morning, it's probably not the one you want to be doing. Three teams in our Heat 1 start list for event number three. Two of our new affiliates coming in to the Touring Pro for the first time. Wolfden CrossFit from Melbourne. Ariti CrossFit from Sydney and Norwest. Probably one, if not the oldest affiliates to represent at this regional level ever, I think. I think so, because we lost CrossFit 1-2-1, unfortunately. So I think that makes Norwest the oldest. But the event... Brought to us by US Army, event three for the teams is three rounds for time. 15 bar muscle up synchronized. 15 and 10 echo bike calories and 15 clean and jerks. Now this whole event is synchronized. They have a 14 minute time cap. So we're gonna see a lot of communication and teamwork really come into play in this. I think it's all going to come down to communication and that split, I think, on the echo bike calories, 15 calories for the men, 10 for the women. That is going to balance things out really well and get these athletes moving a lot faster than they want to be moving. Stage is set for an awesome teams competition this morning. Things up the top of the leaderboard getting pretty tight already. And the contenders have thrown their hand up. And a few surprise results as well. We have a tight competition amongst the teams this year. The top of the leaderboard is really anyone's game at this point. They're all very strong, so it's going to be very important that they don't mess any of these events up. 100 points up for grabs. They all want that 100 points. They all need that 100 points. Action not too far away here at Pat Rafter Arena, and the weather just a little bit chilly. For Queensland standards anyway, as we get underway for heat number one, event three, day two of the 2022 Torian Pro, the first live qualifying semi-final for the Noble CrossFit Games season. And if yesterday was anything to go by, we are in for some absolutely corker performances today. very excited for what's to come today but right now we have heat one of the teams and on screen we've got our synchronized bar muscle ups happening teams are taking different tactics we have girl girl pairs guy guy pairs we have some mixed pairs and that's really going to come down to your weakest athletes that is how you have to game this event is you have to play to your weakest so the synchronization a little bit different than we've seen in previous years with all four athletes having to extend at the top of the bar muscle up. Well, if I was them, I'd be waiting for the judge to say yes before coming down. But all four athletes must be at the top of the movement prior to them getting the rep. But don't worry about your own job, but you've got three other people to worry about as well and synchronize at the same time. CrossFit Norwest are having absolutely no problem with those bar muscle ups. Wolfden left of screen. And in the middle, Norwest as well. Norwest having a little bit of struggle yesterday on those legless rope climbs. And you can testify on how difficult they are. They're very difficult, as it's definitely when you start failing them, it's like a punch in the gut. <laughs> CrossFit Ariti, new team to the Touring Pro on the far right of screen. And the 
paint on the face says it already two minutes in it's not comfortable and anyone who's been on an echo bike knows exactly that you have to work for every single meter or calorie Four-way synchronization continues with the barbell. With the barbell having to be extended overhead until the rep is completed. And there we saw just a no rep there to Wolfton on screen, just coming down a little bit early. Is that hair there? So all athletes have to have the barbell locked out overhead at the same time. So that is going to add extra time under tension which is going to be extra fatigue that's why we're seeing single reps let me throw something at you they've just gone through their bar muscle ups where they are pressing out their bodies above the pull-up bar now they're getting the barbell to a rack position and having to press it overhead again what does that do to your tricep fatigue Look, this event, three words come to mind. Time under tension, because you have to wait for all your teammates. You're spending extra time at the top of the bar muscle up, extra time at the top of the clean and jerk. So all that extra fatigue. We're gonna see breakdown in communication. We're gonna see form breakdown. We're starting to see some wide stance happening on the clean and jerks. Jack Dicker there to the far right of screen with that sort of 45 degree stance. So he's got vision of his other three team members and that is experience. That is, but it's also important that they stay in their lane. As we saw yesterday, there was a lot of mistakes made by both teams and individuals where the flow of the event they weren't following the rules of what they had to do with staying in their lane, jumping over their bar. So very important that they also follow those rules so they don't get any no reps. Donnie Hankel leading the charge for Norwest. And as we've seen, even CrossFit Games, you put your toe on the line, devastation will come fairly shortly afterwards. Norwest looking a lot more comfortable this morning. Left to right, Sarah, Kathy, Donnie, and Jack. And Norwest, remember going back to one of the first regionals at Randwick Racecourse in Sydney. Norwest were one of the qualifying teams back then. Fast forward another 12 years. And they're still competing and still producing athletes, Rob Downton and Jess Coughlin. Shame not to see Jess here this year after that amazing event win as an individual, her first as an individual this time last year. Wolfton. Just lacking a little bit of experience coming in. Zach Hare, far left of screen. One of the most experienced with some CrossFit Games experience in the team as well. Norwest look like they are just in the zone this morning. Norwest have made easy work of those bar muscle ups. Only the last few reps look like they were starting to get under that fatigue. They are straight back on the echo bike. Norwest. Leaders coming up to the halfway point of our time cap. Tell you what, Donny Hankel looks like a bit of a young Adam Sandler. I'm sure he'll take that. already it's only 10 past nine and how electric was the stadium yesterday 
yesterday's vibe was the best Friday I think I have ever seen, apart from at the CrossFit Games. In a regional event, it was the best vibe I've ever seen on a Friday competition. Absolutely epic here, and lucky enough that we get two more days of it. Norwest coming into round number two of the Clean and Jerks. Jack Dicker, he's just straightened up his stance a little bit this time. He's at the back, far right-hand side. He's now moved out a little bit more. But ensuring... As you mentioned, time under tension is critical. And the less time you've got that barbell in your hands, the better. We might see some teams coming up, try and do these unbroken, some of the more experienced teams. I'm excited to see that. But these teams right now are doing a great job of managing their fatigue and making sure that they don't get any no reps. Wolfton on the chase. Norwest in control. As Ariti, our newest team to the competition floor at the Torium Pro. Start their cleaning jerk progress. Norwest, they have got to be close to their last rep. looking very strong under that barbell front of screen. And with people like Rob Downton and Jess Coglin running the show at Norwest, barbell cycling shouldn't be an issue. No, it's not going to be an issue. <laughs> Lots of experience as elite athletes, both of them. And Norwest, two rounds down. The last round coming, but only four minutes left on our time cap. The first two have taken five minutes each, so they are going to have to move. Ben rolls. Oh, the aggression. I love it. He's giving everything into every rep. If I say it's a great looking rig, you quite sure what I'm talking about. There are some good rigs out here on the floor this week. as Wolfden get through their cleaning jerks pretty quickly. Three minutes now left on our time cap. And have they got enough in the tank to start reeling in Norwest, who have got about a seven rep lead. They're looking super consistent and smooth still. They have looked great from the start to finish of this event as a team. No real standout problems. All four people working very well together. Matty McGlashan, second athlete in, looking smooth on that transition. One of our shorter athletes, which makes it a whole lot easier. Less range of motion on a bar muscle up. On everything. Makes it a lot easier on, on everything, but in this particular event, not so good for rowing, though. Norwest continuing. And Norwest now have got less than a minute, pardon me, two minutes to get through some work. Now the challenge is 
do they go ham here and get onto the barbell for some reps or do they just pace it? It looks like they're going to pace it. The girls look like they want to go a little more ham. The guys don't look too keen to go any faster. Now, Kathy, second athlete in, going very wide with her arms. You see those elbows flaying out to the side. That's probably due to that tricep fatigue. She doesn't want to pull those elbows in because it hurts too much. Yeah, she's using her more delts. Hankel just hanging around waiting for his team members. Team members must be in contact with the bike. 50 seconds now remain for Norwest. How many reps can they get done? That's it. 15 clean and jerks await. And now 30 seconds. They are going to be your Heat 1 winners for Event 3. An intensity a little bit lower than I thought it would be in an event like this. The synchronization component of this event does slow it down that little bit. Still intense, but not as intense as if you were doing it by yourself. That's all she wrote for heat number one, Sarah Corrigan. Come on, crowd, give me some love. Great result from Norwest to start things off on moving day, which is day two. Torian Pro. Plenty of pink around, Zach Hare. Has got some of the best biceps you'll see in Victoria. And there's my Adam Sandler doppelganger. Donnie Hankel, Norwest. I personally don't see it, <laughs> but since we're rolling with it. A young, very young Adam Sandler. Our rogue highlights from heat number one. CrossFit Norwest. Great teamwork from the beginning. No problem at all with their synchronization. All working together as one. All four athletes, very strong on the bar muscle up. Getting them that lead. Happy family members and affiliate members. Oh, they're stoked. I'll tell you what, the crowd interaction this year has been incredible. The spectators being so close. Our noble team standings after event number two. Urban Energy at the top, but look at that point spread, EXF only five behind. Selwyn coming in as our number one ranked team, equal third with our side. So Urban Energy and our side heading to the games last year from the Torian Pro. It looks like we could possibly see two new teams heading over. Two athletes from the Selwyn team, Marty Sykes and Maddie Schelling, part of the 6-4 Army Gold team that went last year. Now part of the CrossFit Selwyn crew with Ben and Luke Fowler. CrossFit Torian with a great day yesterday, coming in at ninth and underway. I had a feeling they would do something pretty good. I reckon they got more in the tank for today. And as we call the second day of competition, moving day, this leaderboard, I'm hoping, and probably will be, get juggled around a fair bit. Rogue barbells, epic shot, and we're used to seeing that right across our game season. A US Army heat to lane assignments. CrossFit lights, guys from Newcastle with all that experience, Taurus Teal, one of our New Zealand teams, Kira Wee. They were good yesterday. And Urban Energy Athlete, the second CrossFit Urban team. And they're repeat offenders. They were here last year and a great introduction to competition for those younger guys, but they're doing pretty well. 
I was chatting to Meg Davis from CrossFit, Kira, where you wrecked him a little bit earlier this morning. She said her abs are smashed from those toes to bar yesterday. Talking Nine months after a baby, so. Talking motherhood stuff. Oh, yeah. They're killing it out there. But the US Army event number three for the teams is three rounds for time, 15 synchronized bar muscle ups, 15 and 10 echo bike calories, and 15 synchronized clean and jerks. 14 minute time cap and as we just saw this whole workout is four people synchronized all four team members have to move through the movements together experience will count for everything but communication and a little bit of power output is going to help as well Isabella Hartman from urban energy athlete Anticipation of what's ahead. Look, I don't think the bar muscle ups or the barbell is the issue. I think it's just a little crappy piece in between that no one likes. Unless you're Matt Fraser, of course. Underway heat number two, day two of the Torian Pro for 2022. And 15 synchronized toe to bar. The precursor to that is all four team members must be synchronized at the top of the movement at the same time. That little factor does really add on to the time under tension fatigue of this event that time spent at the top of each bar muscle up just a little bit longer to make sure that all four team members are on top of the bar at the same time crossfit kirui rec gym having no problem at all some gymnastics background right there amongst meg davis left of screen crossfit lights jake mcmurray he's on the far left he's a big unit so when you're talking about an echo bike or some barbell cycling we know he can cycle that but shifting that amount of mass above the pull-up rig that's going to get a little bit fatiguing urban energy athletes Jaden Makatopi Stewart and Cody Davidson. Cody out here on the floor last year as part of the team. And there's big Jake McMurray on the left. Funny story about Andrew Collins, second athlete in. Professional golfer. Turn elite CrossFit athlete. Turn that up. I've heard some transitions, but golf for CrossFit? That's a little crazy. He was actually finished before anyone, but he's got to wait for his team. All four athletes have to pause for that split second at the top of each clean and jerk to make sure that the rep counts. Everybody has to be locked out at the same time. This is where communication really comes into play, as we can see with Urban Energy. Lots of chat. Laura Roberts, bottom left. Isabel Hardman, far right. He's now on the very far right. We're in lane seven and eight here on Pat Rafter Arena.
Cody Davidson. One of the most composed and chilled out guys you'll ever meet, let alone on a competition floor. Too much face is in. And they've only got five reps remaining now. Getting chased down by CrossFit Lights. If you've got two girls on your team that you can rely on to shift the barbell, it's probably going to be April Herring and Kate Gordon. Urban Energy, they've now fallen behind by one rep. And Kirawi Rekjin, cycle time, just a touch quicker. And there's not much in it between all four of our teams on the floor. The boys from Urban Energy, they're in a rush, they're ready to go. Jim Kirawi first to get underway. Urban not too far behind them. And poor old Meg Davis having to use that core again. Now, Jake McMurray, the athlete I was talking about earlier with that massive frame he's got on the far left. It looks like he's doing it pretty easy. Yeah, he's pulling his hips up really high to the bar, which makes it a lot easier to press out on your triceps. We'll see that as athletes start to fatigue on a bar muscle up, they'll be catching on the bar lower around their ribs, their belly button, and that's when you see people flopping over the top of the bar. You wanna be landing those hips as high as possible so you're keeping your triceps as fresh as possible. Andrew Collins, I haven't seen many professional golfers look like that. Wow, sir. Oh, well, we're glad he's not playing golf, but he's here with us. But they are doing very well. CrossFit lights far left of screen. Golf's just a good walk spoil, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. The worst four hours of my day. CrossFit Kirawi wrecked him. Last five reps for them. Last five for CrossFit lights. So lights... Catching a little on the bar muscle-ups. Kate Gordon on the far right of lane number two. And April Herring, experience in movement. These two have it all. April's younger sister, Tess, a couple of lanes down for Kirawi Rec Gym. Better sibling rivalry as well on the floor, love that. But a great battle between Urban Energy athletes, Rec Jim Kirui, and now CrossFit Lights. And very happy to be here. Yeah, that's more like it. I don't know many people that smile when they're on the Echo Bike. And there's Tess on the far right of screen. One of our youngsters that has come through the ranks over many years, following the big sister's footsteps, but now a great athlete in her own right. And Rick Jim Kirui, down in the Shire, down in Sydney. And Meg Davis, the blonde hair. I can only imagine, or I can't, actually I can't imagine what it's like coming back from giving birth, and then having to do toes to bar. That's just cruel. The mum doms are real. I don't know if that's a thing, if it's just me, but the the doms that you experience after having a child or children is next level. You need to hashtag that mum doms. <laughs> CrossFit lights, they're on the charge. They've made up massive amount of ground in round number two already, and they were the first to pick the bar up. So a three-way battle in the middle of event number three. Taurus Teal now coming to the bar. Jake McMurray does not look phased at all. Now you're a big athlete with a lot of power output. That echo bike doesn't take much out of you. They're obviously having to break with the bar muscle ups, and they're also having to cycle single reps, so he'll find this pretty easy. 
single weekend. Regan Martin, Glenn Robertson for Taurus Teal. The boys having to play a little bit of catch up as the three other teams into their last five repetitions. And as exactly what happened round number one Happens in round number two. The barbell cycle time from Crosshead Kirawi Rec Gym gets them ahead. Caden Pakatopi Stewart urging his team members to get back to start the bar muscle ups early. And they may well be the first team to get into round number three. Laura Roberts just spending a little bit more time chalking as Taurus Teal finishing their second round of 15 clean and jerks. Crosshead light underway first, far left of screen. Crosshead Kirui wrecked him to the far right. And right at the far edge of your screen, Urban Energy athletes looking pretty smooth on their bar muscle ups as well. Synchronized only at the top of the movement. It'd be pretty difficult to synchronize coming through that transition. Once the athletes start getting tired, keeping that synchronicity does get very difficult. Three and a half minutes left on our clock for Heat 2. Start of competition here at the Torian Pro and wherever you are in the world, thank you for your company. We're looking forward to delivering some epicness, if that's a word, over the next couple of days. And if yesterday was anything to go by, we've got plenty of it. If you're a CrossFit frother, you've probably been up for 24 hours straight with the Lowland Throwdown and the Syndicate crowd. You just keep watching CrossFit for three days straight. Plenty of coffee on board, and Red Bull or whatever else you're drinking. Taurus Teal are doing all they can to catch our leaders wreck Jim from CrossFit Kirawi. We are getting down to the pointy end now with the last couple of minutes. And I can't wait for this race on the Echo Bike for the last round. Meg Davis absolutely outstanding to be on this competition floor. And the super mom, off she goes again. Crosshead lights. Now they caught up a fair bit of time on the echo bike in the previous round. And Jake looks like he's just going for a leisurely stroll. Everyone else working hard and he's just chilling out. This event doesn't look like it's bothering him at all. He's just there to lead the pack. First saw Jake on the competition floor back. Australian CrossFit Championship. Now part of the team coming in with CrossFit Live. Kate Gordon on the left in the blonde hair. Rachel Herring. Andrew Collins, a fourth team member down there. April, no mucking around now. She's done already. That was quick. Urban Energy Athlete now coming to the Echo Bike. Kate Gordon has done, but CrossFit Kirawi wrecked him. With their barbell cycling that they've proven over the last two rounds, looks like they are going to lead round three start to finish. Touch and go reps from CrossFit Kirawi. That's what we wanted to see.
CrossFit Light look like they are sticking to their game plan of singles. Quick, clean singles. Time ticking down. Are they going to have time to get this completed? CrossFit Kirawi trying. Urban Energy athlete moving to the bar now. Taurus Teal are going bananas on that echo bike. Last five, CrossFit Kirawi wrecked him. Oh, and just out of time. And Meg Davis, she's done. Hey Meg, you've still got a day and a half of competition to go. Ooh, that's a little bit spicy. That body is strewn all over the floor. Carnage after that well, last step. We can set. see his legs from Andrew Collins sticking out. I know he's up now. Brandon Norton as well, still struggling to get up. Getting up now center of that rafter arena this is a tough one to get done under 14 minutes our rogue highlights for heat number two the carnage continues all of our heat two teams no problem at all with the bar muscle ups but it was crossfit kirui set the pace from the beginning. Great teamwork from CrossFit Light. The CrossFit Kirui Rec Gym, just smooth synchronicity throughout. I just think they weathered the storm. They saw CrossFit Light come at them, but they just went, hey, we'll just keep up our fast barbell cycling, and it paid off. Loving the slow collapse from Andrew Collins to get to the ground. Took twice as long to get off the ground, but we've got him now. There he is. So any path to CrossFit's a good one, even if you're coming from professional golf. And two heats down now. And we've got a couple more to go for event number three. This morning, teams will be back on before lunch, and then the individuals will kick things off this afternoon and talk about how good yesterday was. I think we're going to see more of the same. Plenty of pink splashed around Pat Rafter Arena today in honor of Hannah Clark and her three kids. And our US Army Heat 3 lane assignments, Reebok, CrossFit, Frankston, not exactly where we expected them to be. CrossFit Torian, 6 4. Onyx. And CrossFit Ruark, bottom two. Over the ditch in New Zealand. And Dave Wigan from the 6 4 Army Gold team. The went to the games last year, our only team member in the Onyx team. And event number three, first event of the day. What an absolute doozy. The last couple of heats have proven that. Not sure if warming up on the Echo Bike is such a great idea. Our US Army event three for the teams, three rounds for time, 15 synchronized bar muscle ups, 15 and 10 echo bike calories, 15 synchronized clean and jerks, 14 minute time cap. We are yet to see a team finish this event. The last heat they got pretty close. Team far right of Pat Rath Arena. 
Josh Gardner, Dan Root, Jenna Hare, and Tyler Parkey. Three of the four back from last year. Underway now for Heat three. I'll be bent three. It's day two of the Torian Pro. Thank you for joining us on the broadcast. From wherever you are listening or watching, team competition underway for day two. Generically called moving day. Leaderboard juggles a fair bit. Torian in lanes three and four. Local affiliate here in Brisbane. Reebok CrossFit Frankston. Such a great history at regional semi-final and games level. Few changes in their team, especially one Luke Spencer injuring himself last week. Synchronized bar muscle up with four people. One of the most difficult movements we're probably going to see here this weekend. Reebok CrossFit Frankston having no trouble with those bar muscle ups. CrossFit Torian also onto the Echo bike. They were great yesterday. Some great finishes for them, for a young team. Jack Jeffrey. Athlete just to the right of screen there with Chrissy Bell there. Jack for a young athlete. Gee, he was good, especially in those synchronized burpee over worm. On the competition floor here is an individual last year in the team this year. Great to see him back. Pato Kane just finishing off their reps I'd say are the first team to move forward to the 15 synchronized cleaner jerks we spoke a little bit about time under tension in the previous heats synchronicity and time under tension probably the two most important factors of the next 12 minutes Yes, this event, doing it as an individual would be completely different, complete different level of intensity. But when you have to do the repetitions in synchronized and stop at the top of every single one, as we just saw, there's just that split second pause, just puts that extra fatigue on the body. That's why we're seeing single reps here. We won't see many touch and go reps because there is no point gassing yourselves and not being able to get the synchronicity at the top. Rick, risk versus reward, and there is no reward for blowing out your grip early. And you talk about those single reps and how it throws you out. Your pattern of how you normally lift just gets thrown out because you've got to wait for someone else. Normally, you're just getting used to your own rhythm. So this is a mental game as well as a physical one. That it is, and what we don't want to see is no reps, because extra reps, when it's level pegging like this across the heat, can put you behind everybody else. Well, Lisa Campbell left the screen, and Chrissy Bell have cycled this barbell exceptionally well, and they are about one rep behind now. Our leaders, Reebok CrossFit Frankston, one round done at the four minute mark, which is a little bit quicker than we have seen so far. We might see a team finish in this heat. Fourteen minute time cap. Team's getting close, just not close enough. Sarah Pilflick moving stupidly well on those bar muscle ups, just making them look very easy. Very 
easy lockout at the top of the muscle ups for CrossFit Torian. Getting those hips nice and high, taking the pressure off the triceps. Lisa Campbell with all that Ninja Warrior experience. This should be child's play for her. She's on the far left of lane three. With that pink ribbon in her hair. Oh, she's doing it easy. She's barely bending her elbows at the top. Plus six for Onyx. There's Dave Wigan, the far left. Carlin Peterson alongside Dave. And a high individual here last year, as well as Annika Roberts, who was here on the competition floor as an individual last year as well. So plenty of clout in that team. The last five reps for plus six for Onyx. So great to see so many Kiwi teams and individuals here. And so happy the borders are back open again. And for our American viewers, Kiwis are the athletes from New Zealand. Apologies. The, the Aussie slang gets in the way sometimes. You're not sure what a kiwi is go and google that as well because it's not a fruit it's a small little bird that doesn't fly it's really cute though it is absolutely <laughs> reebok crossfit franks and your leaders sarah kilflix finished already cam kuzler done and now the whole team moves forward they have looked steady. I think maybe their coach, Rob Forte, pulls them in last night and goes, righto, let's get back to what we know we can do because they have looked a different team this morning. That team experience is really paying off here. I know they've had a athlete swap at the last minute. Yeah, poor old Luke Spencer trains the entire year, qualifies the team and then gets injured. And I spoke to him yesterday after the day had finished and he's still in very high spirits because he's still helping Rob coach the team, which is great to see him still involved. Pat Kane just giving himself a little bit more time every rep. Now the first rep for Torian coming into the clean and jerk was a no rep. So Torian are now another rep behind Reebok CrossFit Frankston. And 6-4 Onyx. They have done very well to get onto this barbell. And Dave Wigan, I don't know if you just saw it on the far right of the screen. He just said, let's woe for a second. And let's gather our thoughts, catch a breath, and go again. Really great experience from Dave Wigan. He's got a lot of experience on this floor anyway. But he knows what's what, and he knows when to push and when to back off, which is probably an important part of teamwork. If you're an experienced athlete, it is good to know what is going on around you on the competition floor. You obviously want to be in your own game, but it helps as well if you know where the other teams are or other athletes are and what's going on. You can play to your advantage. It surely does. An advantage is exactly what Reebok CrossFit Frankston have over the other three teams on the floor in heat number three. Torian, not too far behind, nor are Onyx. Onyx have made a massive move in this second round. Torian now rolling forwards. Ruark on the far right are level with them. And Onyx have made a massive jump in round two. And if they do that in round two, can they back it up and go even faster in round number three? Frankston.
Jane McKay, far right of lane number two, the most experienced team member. And you just heard her calling. I could hear it from here. Her experience was showing at the top of those muscle ups, taking charge. Well, you want one, one person. And look at Lisa Campbell, far left. They haven't changed any of the rounds. Her muscle ups have looked the same from start. And look at her. She's ready to go again. The other three are busted. She's going, come on, guys. This should be easy stuff. Ninja Warrior, or Australian Ninja Warrior, season five down here in Australia. And that transition that just doesn't exist. So impressive. Sarah Pilflick, I don't know if you just saw it then, but the last rep, a bit of a chicken wing, but it is their last rep, so it matters not. As they have taken the lead now with only a couple of minutes remaining. And they have got the lead, and all they want to be doing is finishing this under time cap, considering no other team so far in the previous two heats have done so. Our last three teams on the bar muscle ups. Make that two with Ruark onto the Echo Bike. Make that one with Torian now moving. And Onyx. They've got a couple of reps to go. Can they get on the Echo Bike? Throw oh, a cat amongst the pigeons a little bit for this final round and the last two minutes of heat number three. far left Sarah Pilflick getting done first waiting for Pat and Jane as now 90 seconds looms for 15 clean and jerks you should think they would be getting this done fairly easily 90 seconds for 15 clean and jerks seems like a lot of time but when you have to do the synchro and pause at the top of each one five reps every 30 seconds that should be doable. The time will give us a good gauge. That's their fifth right now as we hit one minute to go. If they stay on point, they're getting this done. Remember, the sprint to the finish looming as well. Dan Group, far right of screen, urging his Ruark team to lift and lift fast. Here come Onyx, level with Torian. We've got about 30 seconds remaining now. Can Reebok cross it, Frankson? Get the reps done. They are running out of seconds. Not long to go now, and not many reps to go. Reebok crossing Frankston. Can they get it done? It's going to be tight. Oh, and just missing out by one second. Reebok crossing Frankston. Brutal. And Pat O'Kane. Official time coming through 13.59. Boom, there we go. Reebok Crofts with Frankston getting it done with so much time to spare. Less than a second. <laughs> Easy, great pacing from Reebok Crossfit Frankston. And we were spot on with the prediction that five reps every 30 seconds was going to do it. It was tight. Rua. Dan Groot, Josh Gardner, Jenna Hare and Tyler Parkey. They did very well at the back end. And Onyx, they move a little bit late. Cam Kuzla. 
He was one of the first off the Echo Bike every time. Now Rogue highlights, and it was a great clinic from Reebok CrossFit Frankston. Great muscle ups from CrossFit Torian, but it was Reebok CrossFit Frankston showing that team experience. Keeping their composure and communication going throughout. And it really paid off for them in that final set of clean and jerks. Getting over the finish line right on the horn. Oh, and tight it was. And a better result from Reebok CrossFit Frankson. That's what we come to expect from that team with such a rich history on the competition floor. And they're still trying to scrape them off the floor. Pat's done. <laughs> that hurt him a little bit. Our US Army Heat 3 results. Only one team getting it done. Look at that. 30, 59, 88. You don't have a lot more breathing space than that to get under a time cap. Blink, pretty much blink, and you'll miss it. But one team has got this complete now, and as they say when programming, as long as someone finishes the event, it's a valid test. And what a great test it has been for these teams on day two of the Torian Pro. Thank you for your company wherever you are, right across the globe. I know there's been plenty of CrossFit action to watch and take in. And some interesting results right around the world as well. Two events programmed by the CrossFit Games team in each of the semi-finals. The other four up to the individual program directors. And we're gonna see one of those coming up later on. But our storyline of the day, guaranteed rates. Moving day for the teams. This is the day where you cement your top three position coming into the final day. Yes, as history has shown us, moving day is Saturday of competition. That is where the teams that maybe didn't do as well as they would have liked to on the Friday. They put in the work and try and collect themselves some points and spots up that leaderboard. And if we talk about top four teams, our top ranked team, CrossFit Selwyn, not sitting at the top where they want to be. But after speaking to them this morning, they said they're gonna be there at the end of today. So look out for those guys in Heat 5 coming up. As we bring Heat number four out onto the floor. And a US Army Heat 4 lane assignments. CrossFit underway in lanes. One and two, CrossFit Project Bayside Black. Both teams from Victoria, so they're in three, four. Six, four, CrossFit Steel. Another of our New Zealand teams. And CrossFit Wulgulga, who were outstanding yesterday morning. Their performances yesterday has moved them up a couple of heats. It's going from a heat number one up in the heat four now of our five heat event three to great performances from those guys and last christensen led the team just so very well now u.s army event number three for the teams three rounds for time 15 synchronized bar muscle ups 15 and 10 echo bike calories and 15 synchronized clean and jerks 14 minute time cap. This whole event is synchronized. 
the loading not that heavy as you would expect but challenging enough that they are having to do single reps as we get underway heat number four and underway far left of screen have a go at these guys and this is what i was hoping for yesterday we didn't get to see much of it but their muscle ups are doing very well lucas o'brien far left of screen lauren lovick second in benny newland samantha jones now sam jones part of the the team last year as well. Benny Newland, the new team member coming in, unable to compete last year due to COVID, which was absolutely devastating because it was the day before competition. But happy to be here and look at them out of the gates, hot. They would be our fastest off the bar muscle ups yet for any of these heats. Now we talk about barbell cycling. Lucas O'Brien and Benny Newland, two of the most proficient technique weightlifters that you are going to see coming from Victoria. So once they get that bar in their hands, things are going to bode well. Benny Newland just actually having a chat while he's on the Echo Bike. So this will be their rest. They will work hard on the bar muscle ups, they'll work hard on the barbell. Jess and Erica doing an absolute stellar job yesterday. CrossFit Wool Gulga. And there's Lucas. Probably the prettiest man in Australia currently on the competition floor. And just wait for these. Guys from CrossFit underway. These reps look easy. Not particularly heavy barbells for these athletes. 155 pounds for the guys, 95 pounds for the ladies. That's about 70 kilos and 42 kilos. But it's the fact that they have to pause for that split second at the top of each rep. Wait for all of the team members to be locked out. Now Lauren Lovick, she's got a little bit of a wider grip on her barbell on the far right of screen. She's got a strong upper body. She would probably have her grip just that bit wider, just to make room for that overhead mobility to pop her head through at the top. Now, Benny Newland, he's at the back right of screen. He has got probably the shortest push jerk I have seen. Once he gets the bar overhead, he pulls it very high, but then that short little punch overhead is gonna make sure that his grip fatigue is less than getting to the bar muscle ups. The last couple of reps now. The last rep, in fact, but underway. 3.30. That is a quick time considering Frankston finished their first round at four minutes. Project Bayside Black. The second team in heat four to move their barbells forward. And are we going to see another big set of bar muscle ups from underway who are on the far left of the screen? Now the benefit of underway, all four team members are roughly the same height, which makes synchronization just that little bit easier. It does because it, the lockout at the top of the bar muscle up is obviously the part that fatigues you the most. So if you're all around the same height, you all have a similar range of motion, easier to time that press out. Lucas far left of screen, looking like he's doing those bar muscle ups even without transition. They're looking really easy. Last couple of reps now for underway. 
this is where they are doing their damage. I predicted that they would do something special this weekend, and we got a little bit of a snippet of it in, round, uh, in event number two. But they are ready to stamp their authority on the Torian Pro. And don't discount them for possibly a podium spot, considering we've got heavy barbells coming up for these teams later on. Jones. Benny looking very composed. Lucas O'Brien. Lucas actually forego the individual invites, finishing 34th in the Oceania region to give his team every chance of booking a ticket. Now, last team on the Barmas officer, Wool Gulga. We had such a great day yesterday. Just struggling a little with these bar muscle ups. In an event like this, where all four athletes have to be synchronized and working together, if you have one athlete that is weaker on one movement, then everybody is at that same pace. You have to work to your weakest athlete. Underway. They are well and truly underway. Barbell cycling is their jam, as is the bar muscle-ups, and that's where they have put some separation between them and the other three teams. Next best is Project Bayside Black. Battle of the Victorian teams in the first four lanes here at the Torian Pro. And you know this from your weightlifting background. This weight isn't hard. It's just a matter of ensuring your technique is almost perfect on every rep. And when you have to hold it overhead, for that extra split second, having a really good overhead position pays off. Project Bayside Black to the barbell. Rep behind. 6 4 steel. It's underway. With about a 90 second lead over Project Wayside Black. About to head back for round number three. Eight minutes down, that has given them about a five and a half minute buffer to finish the last round. Which should be plenty of time to get this last round complete. So we won't have to go to the instant replay and check if they got another time check. Reebok CrossFit Frankston did just that with 13.59.88 as the time to beat. It's underway head back now for the third and final round of event number three. Lucas just sucking in the big ones, but his fatigue level on the bar muscle ups is minimal. Project Bayside Black now moving back. Lucas O'Brien, far right of screen. That's a beautiful transition. Lauren Lovick sticking with him as well. She's got about the same sort of transition. Lauren Lovick urging the team, telling them exactly how many reps they're doing. Communication has been exceptional. Lucas O'Brien calling it. You can hear him yelling every single rep on the far left of the screen. To Sam and Benny on the far right, just starting to struggle a little bit. But I think they're gonna have enough of a buffer to get onto the Echo bike first, because they've only got a couple of reps to go.
braking or underway. Get rid of the last couple of reps. And, and a no rep, crucial. They've probably got enough of a buffer, but that's just annoying. The fatigue's really starting to hit these bar muscle ups now in these teams. And one more communication with the judge. Judge didn't budge. She just said, no, you've got to get these done. And now they are complete with 15. And now the final 15 and 10 Echo Bike calories commence. And I think lucky for them, it looks like the other teams have had a bit of communication breakdown as well. Because that could have been crucial for them. Sonia Mori in the background in the white, looking really good for Bayside Black. And they are done. Now there is only 15 seconds between Underway and Bayside Black. And I don't know if that's going to be enough of a buffer. We are in for a race for the last 15 clean and jerks on the round of three. Still, Darcy Brosto on the far right. Just battling a little. Beautiful hair from the Louis Foster. We need more of that in CrossFit, I tell you. All right, here we go. The last two minutes. Lauren Lovick, she's in a rush. She's trying to drag her teammates over the line. Two reps down, 13 remaining for CrossFit underway. Jesse Bellini about to finish up his calories on the Echo Bike and they will join underway on the barbell. The lead now extending. It's out to 30 seconds. Sonia Mori's in a rush. Amy Tarfai's onto the bar quickly. Will it be enough? Can Underway get the heat win that they have been wanting since start of competition yesterday? One minute now left on the competition clock. Five reps remaining. Underway. They are going to get done under time cap. It just depends on how much. Steel have made up massive ground on the Echo Bike. Reps, all important. 30 seconds now. Great control. Is this the last rep for Underway? Yes, it is. Underway, your new leaders. And Underway, and that smile from Lucas O'Brien tells the story. That's what they wanted. Thirteen forty-eight. Official time from CrossFit underway. And they know what's important. The black armband and the pink shirts as flatter the arena. Underway. They were so good, Pip, from the get-go. And with a bit of a mistake as well on the bar muscle-ups. Our rogue highlights and showing their bar muscle-up prowess. They were great from start to finish. Great communication, great synchronicity. No problems at all on the barbell. They had a bit of a communication breakdown on their last set of bar muscle ups, which is very unfortunate because they, they were on their way to an even faster time, but they still 
finished under that time cap and have taken the unofficial lead in the event. Great teamwork from them. And one of the true characters of the CrossFit scene down here in Australia, Lucas O'Brien. I don't think you get a bigger smile. Absolutely loving it. CrossFit underway. I hate putting myself out there with predictions, but I did it during the week. And thankfully for me, it's paid off. And thankfully for them, they are back in the hunt. And moving day for Saturday, we are one heat to go for event number three. And that could well see them a top five spot in this event. And there's plenty of hoodies and jackets because it is a little bit chilly in here today. Well, for Queensland temperature anyway, this is more like Wollongong or Melbourne weather. I've just put my ski jacket on. It's <laughs> freezing in here. Okay, it's not that bad. <laughs> and our final heat steps onto the competition floor. And we're painting the pro pink today in honor of Hannah Clark and her three kids. Excited to keep eyes on lane one. CrossFit Selwyn. Who are ready to make a charge today. Our lane assignments for heat number five in one and two. CrossFit Selwyn, two and, oh, sorry, three and four. CrossFit Urban Energy, your overnight leaders. Five and six is CrossFit EXF and seven eight CrossFit Awasai. I'll tell you what, you go in with predictions on who's going to finish in the top three spots at the end of Sunday. And these were the four teams that jumped straight off the page, and here they all are in one heat. And this one is going to be a tight race. Absolutely, the U.S. Army event number three. Synchronized bar muscle-ups. 15 required. 15 and 10 echo bike calories. And 15 clean and jerks. Three rounds, and we've just proven in the last two heats it's managed to be finished as we get underway. For heat number five and i'll tell you what when sheep stations are on the line we're going to have a really good feel of what's coming in the next day and a half based on what happens in the next 14 minutes now i've got my eye on crossfit exf for this particular event we know their ladies are very good at gymnastics Christy Bishop to the left, Bryony Chalice to the right. And the two boys far left, Moses Patolo and Henry Carlisle. But Urban on fire and on fire early. EXF seconds behind. US Army, know your army. Speaking with CrossFit Selwyn earlier this morning, they said they would be pretty unhappy if they didn't go first and first in both the events today. They got a little bit of catch up to do with Urban jumping out to a little bit of a lead after the bar muscle ups. 14 minutes, it's a long time. Anything can happen. As we've seen in previous heats, once the fatigue starts hitting those bar muscle ups and the synchronized cleaning jerks, communication breakdowns is where we've seen hiccups. Selwyn. They've caught up a little bit of time, but EXF are hot on the heels of our leaders. 
Urban Energy. Touch and go, EXF. How crucial is touch and go reps? We haven't seen touch and go reps in the first round yet. They are still holding on EXF. Wow, I'm impressed with what they're doing because I know what the end goal is and they want to get there. They also want to get into the heads of the team next to them, CrossFit Urban Energy. Touch and go reps next to your competitors that are doing singles. Now we are level pegging EXF. You see the barbells flying on the left of screen from Urban. Breaking now the last three reps for EXF. And they have really cut that lead down from Urban Energy. Urban have cycled pretty fast. And EXF, here they come. And here comes Selwyn in lane number one. CrossFit Selwyn caught up very quickly. We know Urban were going to come out of the gates hot. Bar muscle ups, pretty much their jam. Got to pick your battles. With a triplet like this, you're going to have to have a little bit of active rest on one of the implements, and that's probably going to be the Echo Bot. Other side, finishing up round one. They are back a little bit behind. CrossFit Urban Energy being led by Kaylin Van Ziel there, calling out to her teammates, making easy work of these bar muscle ups, barely a press out at the top. Now, this is where it's going to be won and lost, I believe, on the bar muscle ups. One rep to go for Selwyn to Urban Energy get underway. seem too rushed at the moment on the echo bike exf that barbell cycling have now been overtaken by selwyn and ben fowler far left of screen in the white shirt he is straight to work and just in the background there crossfit oversight having bit of trouble on the bar muscle up this event could hurt them in the standings this weekend keep in mind only two teams have finished this event they finish the damage is lessened to an extent the worst they can finish in this event if they finish on the time cap is sixth as urban Move on. Ben Fowler finished. Marnie Sykes is done. Maddie Schelling is done. Luke Fowler in the background. The last athlete as EXF jump ahead of Selwyn once again. CrossFit Selwyn, we know they can move a barbell. They've got some work to do to catch up to Urban and EXF. And they're gonna go touch and go reps to make up that ground. Look at that teamwork, synchronicity off the charts. Gotta love it. Urban last five reps, EXF. Touch and go, far right of screen. Still, the single reps continue. Selwyn, no rep, crucial.
and Urban Energy continue. They want to go back to back games, appearances in Madison, Wisconsin. done they're about 10 to 15 seconds behind but with the walk back it's going to be a little bit longer and urban copped a no rep on their first bar muscle up extra reps extra fatigue and now they have jumped down and i think fatigue might be starting to creep in a little selwyn Sass in their walk back. This is CrossFit EXS opportunity to get on that bar. We know they're good at bar muscle ups. And Henry Carlisle, middle of the screen right there, that massive frame getting pulled over that bar. And this is going to be a very tight race. Fatigue is not your friend or oh, not exactly sure what happened to Marnie Sykes just then for Selwyn EXF having a rest last five for Urban and I think they've got about two reps remaining can EXF claw ahead now Five to go. Five versus two on the bar muscle up. Four versus two. Four versus a one. Urban are done. And now Jaylee looks like she is echo biking in mud. Those arms are like pieces of string. Got enough in the tank to overtake Urban and get home. They've got touch and go reps on their barbell. Will the strategy pay off? Can Selwyn come back? If they've got enough left in their tanks, they could empty it and do this last set, touch and go. EXF. 10 minutes down on our time cap. EXF on the chase. Johan, Caitlin, Dunn, Adam, Dunn. They are waiting for Jaylee. The muscle ups took it out of her. And this Echo Bike is hurting as well. EXF, they are coming. Can Jaylee hold on? The two girls for EXF are done. Moses and Henry are about to finish off. Three reps down. Make that four now for Urban. EXF, they need to move quick. They are 10 reps behind. Now 11. 11 minutes down, three minutes remaining on our clock. We are gonna get at least two finishes, if not three. Our side struggling at the back. Lane seven, EXF, their fatigue has just kicked in. Pat Rapp, the crowd, urging Urban to finish the last five. CrossFit EXF doing their best to catch up. Selwyn to the bars. Two and a half minutes remain. Urban, they're going quick. Urban, another 100 points for them. Came in on top, and they are staying on top. 11.57. Selwyn, can they overtake EXF? Moses. 
misses. It's starting to hurt. And the pain on the faces of these athletes is massive as EXF. What a magnificent result for EXF. That will keep them up in second position on the leaderboard. And Henry is absolutely broken. 12.51 for EXF as Selwyn. They are finishing up. And they will jump up the leaderboard as well as our side are our final team on the floor. These results are really going to shake things up amongst these top teams. CrossFit OSI just getting finished off with their 15 synchronized clean and jerks. Can they finish it under the time cap? Third and final round for our side. Can they get finished? Time running out. And time has been called and our horn is just as much out of gas as these athletes are. <laughs> the horn's exhausted. But wow, what a performance. What a finish. CrossFit Urban, they are really making a statement this weekend. <laughs> well, you finished top 10 at the Games last year. You beat Mayhem in an event at the CrossFit Games. You have to make a statement and say, hey, that wasn't a fluke. We can go back and do the same thing again. They want to go back. You can see it in their performance. And coming in as our number one ranked team and 100 points. That will be incredible. Selwyn doing what they needed to do today. Jumping ahead of our side. Very important in the overall rankings. And we know for Selwyn, they have some great events coming up for them. Seven. What an incredible time. And our winners of Heat 5 are standing by with Kayla Banfield. Guys, great job. Now, synchronizing bar muscle ups is one of the most difficult movements. How do you manage that as a team? Practice a lot. <laughs> we literally do just emoms of this stuff every day. Even if it's not the whole workout, we'll just emom things. And our synchro, I think we can do synchro without even trying to do synchro with the way we are at the moment. You guys did a great job. Now, you took the event win for a very special day. Today is for Hannah. Tell us, what does it mean to you to win an event on a day like today? Um, I think just like last year, like, this event is awesome. It's so good that we can get so many people wearing pink for such a, obviously, amazing cause. Um, yeah, so this is for Hannah and the kids. Yeah. So, yeah, we're very, very proud, and especially this event for us. And last question, you guys came second last year. Obviously, we're vying for the win this year. What's it going to take? Oh, guts and determination and just having fun, like we said last time. Yeah? yeah? More than last year. <laughs> well, I think you guys have got it in you. Well done and good luck for the next event. Thank you. Thank you very much. No worries. Well done, guys. Thank you, Kayla. Our road highlights, and there were plenty of them. And we called it from the beginning. CrossFit EXF and CrossFit Urban. It was the battle between these two teams. Showing great synchronicity on the bar muscle ups and the clean and jerks. A bit different tactics between the teams. We saw a lot of touch and go reps. For some teams, it really didn't pay off. Getting a lot of no reps, costing them on the fatigue levels, but CrossFit Urban sticking to their game plan, collecting those 100 points.
CrossFit AF7, really impressive performance from them and a great finish. Second place is really going to help them on the overall standings. Very impressive from Urban. And with some heavy weightlifting coming up later on, they needed to do that. And Urban Energy getting the win. EXF with a very important second place. Selwyn in third and our side. The damage has been lessened, but by how much we'll find out when the whole shakedown of all five heats comes out. Our next event coming up, event number four for the teams, a snatch ladder. Pip, you've got to be absolutely jumping for joy with this one. My absolute favorite. Can't wait to see these teams throw some barbells overhead. Some heavy weight coming your way here. Day two of the Torium Pro. We are painting the pro pink in honor of Hannah Clark and her three kids. And plenty of people filling into Pat Rafter Arena. Event number four for the teams coming up soon. What does it take? How do I train? What do I eat? How much do I sleep? How do I react? What if this happens? What if that happens? It all adds up. It's not about what I do. It's about what I don't do. No excuses. No shortcuts. No gimmicks. No tomorrows. No bull. Castings. For simple shapes, a complete solid pattern may be used. A mold box is filled with special molding sand that is rammed home around the pattern. The molten metal at precisely the right temperature is poured into the mold. The assemblies are tumbled. Shaping is done with the aid of machinery, and the fine finish is evidence of the craftsmanship that has gone to their design and construction. The reason I started using Thorn products was because uh, Stephanie Peters, she was very influential in terms of what products we should use and what are the good products out there. I always want to make sure that I'm sharing trusted companies and products with others and Thorn definitely fits that. NSF is a priority for me because I know it's a quality product. NSF certification is a gold standard for supplements. You know that what it says on the label is actually in the bottle.
CrossFit Games are proudly supported by Noble, the official footwear and apparel brand of CrossFit. A Rusty, the official rapid recovery partner of CrossFit. Thorn, the official supplement partner of CrossFit. US Army, know your army. Trifecta, the official meal delivery partner of CrossFit. Welcome back to Pat Rafter Arena. The overall team standings after three awesome events, Pip and Urban. Only a 10 point lead, but it seemed way more dominant than that. It did. They really are putting their dominance out there this weekend amongst the teams. There's only 10 points between first, second, third. It's tight. And 10 point splits. You mess up on an event and things get a little bit curly for you later on and this is an event where it's pretty much down to the individual components of the team rather than a collective that's right there is absolutely nothing your teammates can do to help you lift that barbell except to give you some encouragement but it is you out there snatching the weight they can't do it for you so contributing to the overall team score but it is just you and your barbell. Our first team heading to the floor now. Wolfton CrossFits. Zach Hare looks like he is ready to go first. rogue start list for heat number one of our final event for the teams for today Wolfton up top Ariti Norwest we've seen them early this morning Urban Energy Athlete the second team of Urban Energy CrossFit Light they are going to shift heavy Kira Wee Taurus Teal Ruark and Reebok CrossFit Frankston in our first heat it easy what do you think oh, nice and fast that's what you want your first lift fast under that bar absolutely no questions about whether or not you're getting the breath Ben rolls stepping to the bar now and just having a bit of trouble Getting that bar into the right position overhead. He's going to have another crack. And it's a good wrap. Number of snatches required. And athletes progressing their way down the floor. Second team onto the platform. So it is a snatch ladder that our teams are performing at this moment. The weights are set and laid out across the floor, and each team is going to come out one at a time. They've got 25 seconds each athlete to hit that weight. And they can have as many attempts as they like in that 25 seconds. They will rotate at the 50 second mark. And move on to the next platform. If they are successful, if they are unsuccessful, they will leave the competition floor. Ben Rolls doing that just now for Wolfton as our third team, Norwest, arrive with the first barbell. Tommy Galea from Ariti. Pretty well there. We're going to see a bunch of different techniques used 
amongst these athletes. The overhead position is one of the components that is really going to set them all apart. We're going to see some athletes struggling to stabilize that barbell overhead. Others, the bar is just going to land beautifully in the right position. You can usually tell by the look on their face in the bottom of the squat whether it's landed nicely or not. Over energy athletes. Feels like they the just floor. got off the competition floor and here they are back again. Now, we talk pressure in lifts right, so such as this. Talk us through what it's like on the platform when it's you, the barbell, and just silence. Beautiful lift there. He is so fast under that barbell. But. But talking back, you just asked me about the pressure that each of these athletes are going to be feeling stepping up to the barbell. Everyone is going to handle it differently. Some athletes thrive off just being them in the bar on that platform and a crowd watching. Others hate it. And it really depends on who you're talking to. We're seeing a mix out there. Male members of the team hitting the floor right now once they have gone through. The females will then hit the floor. Got a bit of a kicker coming up as well because they've got 10 platforms to lift. They clear the platform. They've got a bonus of an 11th platform. Wolfden CrossFit having absolutely no problems on these snatches. That was 102 kilos, 225 pounds. So we're seeing the male athletes of each team out on the floor now. We are going to see the women shortly after the males, but it is going to be a culmination of all the weights of each team member. Four team members getting as much weight as possible. Zach here, bottom right of screen from Wolfden. You mentioned his speed under the bar. And as the weight gets heavier, that's obviously going to be dif more difficult. Well, it's not getting more difficult for him. He still has the same speed that he had in the first barbell, and that is a great sign when you're snatching. Speed under the bar, really fast lockout overhead. He looks like he has about five more barbells in him. And this is where the team competition gets mixed up with positions on this leaderboard after an event like this because it does come down to specific individual ability on getting this barbell overhead. I'll tell you what, you wouldn't want to jump a platform, would you? So we're seeing some of the athletes pick up that barbell as soon as they hear that voice. Oh, 111 kilos, 245 pounds. He's getting better and better. That is an athlete that thrives under pressure. Tommy Galea successful, the 107, and Zach Hare, 111. That's looking easier than the ones that he previously lifted at the start. Just a little bit of trouble stabilizing at the top of that rep for the urban athlete down the right of screen. They want to stay on the platform. If you run off the platform, I believe it is a no rep. You have to finish the lift on the platform. Norwest, bottom of the screen on the left. Two athletes on the platform now. So this will increase their team score. One fifteen kilos. 
as he's chasing. We have two athletes in the middle of the screen right now that are going to think we're up for a good battle here. Jack Dicker, Norwest, successful with that lift. A little bit shaky once he got off. Stabilizing that barbell, probably one of the most difficult things at the bottom of that catch. Zach Hare now moving up to the second last prescribed barbell of the 10. He's at the top left of screen in the light pink shirt. double reds it's a good lift and all the lifters out there will know you want your empty barbell and your heaviest barbells to look exactly the same in technique oh, very close just not quite fast enough under the barbell Jack Dicker will have another attempt before his 25 seconds cutoff hits Disappointing when you don't get that lift that you want. Andrew Collins on the far right for CrossFit Lights. Wow. He looks like he has a lot more in the tank. Yeah, clearing the floor. We knew the CrossFit Light guys were going to come out here and do something great with the barbell. Hey, they haven't disappointed. Now, Zach Hare, he's at the top of the screen in the light pink. He's cleared the entire 10 platforms. He gets now a minute break before he moves on to the 11th platform. And he's on now for 285 pounds. It's about 129 kilos. And now there's the 11th platform. They get to choose the weight, I believe. They can load it as heavy as they want for their final lift as a reward for clearing the ladder. Just checking with his judge. Jake McMurray, second athlete in, in the purple and black, looking really good. What did he load that bar? 290 pounds. Zach Hare from Wolfton CrossFit. Oh, that's disappointing after such great lifting on all the other bars. He's going to have another crack. Fast elbows, and I think he's got it. Bouncing no deadlifts at all. But what a performance, Zach Hare. Wow. Jake McMurray, far left of screen, black and purple. Big frame. How does that relate to a bigger range of movement for a bigger athlete? It really comes down to their mobility. They've got great mobility for their size and it doesn't matter. Regan Martin successful there. It's 
Still two athletes on the floor for Taurus, Teal. mobility for a frame you just asked me if being a bigger athlete affects the technique of the snatch well not for Jake he has great mobility overhead great position underneath the bar Jake McMurray far left of screen about to finish off the prescribed 10 gets this, he gets his bonus. It's the waiting in between the barbells. It's a killer as an athlete. 124 kilo, 275. what it's the start of his lift looks harder than the end of his lift pulling it off the floor it looked a little heavy but once it was overhead absolutely beautiful work now jake is going to get a minute break here a little bit of respite reward for his hard work and then he'll move to the platform and choose your own adventure bar 11. Dan Brute now, black shirt. And another massive frame athlete and another good lift. He was happy with that. A bit wobbly in the elbows, but he stabilised it overhead. Now you mentioned it before about the silence, the gap between. How does that relate when you are doing a weightlifting competition and you've got to go out the back and wait? Well, weightlifting is very different to a CrossFit event because you can have a really long time in between lifts in a weightlifting competition. Up to, I've waited 30 minutes in between lifts, but here we go. Gardner in the background, they're getting his lift, but Jake McMurray not having a second attempt. Now, when you can choose your own weight at the end of a ladder like this, you don't want to make too big a jump. There's a fine line between making too big of a jump and missing it and making a small jump. Just getting that extra couple of kilos on the bar can make a massive difference to the team's overall weight. Cam Kuzler there from Reebok CrossFit Frankston, unsuccessful with his half last lift, I should say. Josh Gardner now. Loved his pull off the ground, just couldn't quite get it to the right position overhead. Very impressive though for one of the smaller athletes out there. 124 kilos. Double body weight almost, I reckon. Heat number one, there we go. Intensity level has dropped considerably. The people waiting in anticipation for these lifts to hit overhead. Now rogue highlights and a massive start from Zach Hare. These male athletes came out on fire. Just beautiful lifting from Zach Hare. All these bars on the ladder, no problem. Great work stabilizing the bar overhead, but Zach Hare 
124, no problem. He might have bitten off more than he could chew, though, on this last barbell. He wasn't happy about it either, taking out a bit of aggression on the bar. And Jake from CrossFit Light, also some beautiful lifting. Unfortunately, no dice for him either on the 11th barbell. But some great snatching for Heat 1, Sam and the team. Absolutely, and first time you get to choose your own adventure on that last barbell as well. And Zach Hare on fire, and our overall team standings after three events. CrossFit, Urban Energy, 290 points, EX there. Gee, they have done very well to stay in touch, 280. And Selwyn coming in as a top ranked team and sitting in third, but a little bit of breathing space back to our side, 30 points. That's massive. Yeah, the point spread is not much at all. Our side have got a little bit of work to do after that last event, probably not the finish that they wanted, but I reckon we're gonna see some big lifting from them coming up shortly. But lifting for these teams. Just that little Pandora's box that you open, you don't know what you're going to get because you could have a lift in your gym back home. Fast forward to some pressure and you know what the pressure cooker's like, Pip, at the Commonwealth Games when it's all on the line. I can only imagine what it's like. Well, as athletes and weightlifters and crossfitters, we know that we have training lifts and we have competition lifts. Some athletes always lift more in competition because they thrive off that pressure and adrenaline. Other athletes are more of a training lifter and will hit all their PBs in the gym at home, but coming to a competition, the nerves get the better of them. See lots of weightlifting experience amongst the athletes this weekend. Some of them also competing in the sport of weightlifting. But these ladders are very different to a weightlifting competition. A lot less time spent in between. And that works better for some. One size doesn't fit all. And with a splash of pink around, Pat Rafter Arena for day two of the Torian Pro. Plenty of happy campers in the stand and lots of pink today in honor of Hannah Clark and her three kids. We tragically lost in 2020 and small steps for Hannah, a great charity. And we're raising awareness, not just here in Brisbane or Australia and New Zealand, but right around the world for domestic violence. And there's some OGs of CrossFit right there, Mel and Renee. Great to see so many spectators here, especially yesterday, the vibe was off the charts. Event number four for the teams. Our next heat about to come out. Keep in mind that they have just competed on the competition floor. But this event, event number four, it's one of the programmed events by the CrossFit Games team. And you will see it a little bit later on at the Lowlands Throwdown and the Syndicate Crown, the other two events going on around the world. And we're gonna find our qualifiers to the Noble CrossFit Games coming up in the first week of August of this year. Who is going to be our qualifiers from Oceania region? We don't know yet. I've got an idea who one of those ladies might be. But the teams, after four events, I think we're going to have a pretty good idea of where things lie. Our lane assignments for our second heat. Our 
I'm excited to see some of these teams throw down and underway with such a great start here, uh, this morning. Not so good yesterday, but gee, they came out hot. They did. They had a great comeback at the event this morning. But at team event four is where we are at. The snatch ladder being performed by all the semifinals around the world. We've got our male athletes coming out, trying to clear this ladder. So we have set weights for males and females. And it is the total load for the team that is gonna count. The males will be starting at 185 pounds. Females will be starting at 135 pounds. And the scoring for this event, total weight lifted by each individual member will contribute to your team score. So pressure on to perform, not just in front of these great people here at Pat Rafter Arena, but for your teammates as well. You don't want to let them down. That's right. And even though it is a time to shine for each individual athlete of the team, missing one barbell it could be crucial to the team's overall standings with that team total weight. Dave Wigan looking like he's having the greatest time. And heading to the CrossFit Games last year as part of 64 Army Gold. Let's see his first lift at 84 kilos, 185 pounds. And an easy power snatch for Dave Wigan. So we might see some of these athletes power snatch the earlier barbells because they don't need to squat under the bar. It's a good way to save the energy for the heavy barbells. As Carlin Peterson steps to the bar. Your thoughts on these athletes that are power snatching, knowing they're going to have to probably squat later on, is it better to power snatch early and then squat or to start squatting from the get-go? Every athlete is going to be different. Personally, I would squat from the first barbell just to get it in my head that that's what I'm doing. Some athletes like to save their legs. Jack Jeffrey, left of screen, CrossFit tour in. And I remember some great lifting from Jack Jeffrey's last year, so I'm excited to see what he's going to throw over his head on this ladder. Great to see improvement as well. Dave Wigan with another power snatch at 88 kilos, 195 pounds. Some easy first barbells. So each pair of males getting 25 seconds each to attempt the bar. They can attempt it as many times as they like. Now, 25 seconds isn't a lot of time if you think about it. What do you do with your time allocation? As soon as they call, you step right out on that platform and don't waste time. That's what I would advise. Even though some of these weights are easy for these guys, you don't want to make a silly mistake early and cost your team on the total weight. Barbell on yourself. It doesn't tickle. And a good lift that time, but he gets a no rep because he dropped the bar behind his head. You have to stabilize and drop the bar in front of your body. And we that is going to cost them big time. And we talk about mistakes, and these are the one percenters that need to be nailed down prior to coming into competition. Now we have the kilos and pounds represented on 
those signs in front of each platform for all of our viewers around the world, whether you're in the metric system or not. <laughs> Metric or Imperial, we got you covered here. Carlin Peterson now. 6-4 Onyx, far right of screen. This first line of barbells, absolutely no problem. Dave Wigan. Easy lift for 6 4 Army Steel. Carlin Peterson. So composed and relaxed. 102 kilos, 225 pounds. Wow, what a great lockout. Smooth. It's got great overhead position. Absolutely no doubt about those elbows being locked out overhead. Well, the strictness of weightlifting competition as opposed to crossing competition is making sure that those elbows are locked out. Not so much here. Now, trifecta recipe for success for event four. We want to keep those nerves under control. As we're seeing, lots of calm heads on the floor. Use the time allocated wisely. We saw Dave Wigan, he went straight out onto the floor when he was called, and now he has time to step back and pick that barbell up again. And it paid off, because he just hit it the second time. And the third. Recipe for success from Trifecta. The patience in the lift. How many lifts have you seen under the barbell when athletes stand up too quickly? Oh, all the time. And that was a perfect example right there. Catch the bar, make sure it's stable, and then stand up. Don't try and stand up too early. And I've seen relaxed athletes on the floor before. Harlan Peterson right now is probably the most relaxed athlete I have seen coming up to a pressure cooker lift like a snatch ladder. In an event like a snatch ladder, you want to build, you don't want to use all your adrenaline on the very first barbell, because by the time you get to the end of it, you've got nothing left. Great lift from Dave Wigan. And you know when it's getting harder, when you're holding your breath for that long. What's impressive to me is that he missed his first lift on the previous platform, and then he's just come up to the next one and hit his first one then on a heavier barbell. That is a calm head. Carlin Peterson again, white shirt, center of the screen. And he's getting better as they get heavier. He's just warming up. Obviously that is what you want to be doing in a weightlifting competition is increase and have your best lift as your last one, but also not go too heavy that you're going to fail the lift. In a weightlifting competition, you get a lot more time out the back. It's definitely nowhere near as short on time and as strict as this. But these guys would have warmed up to a decent weight before coming out here. You don't want to be coming out and hitting these weights cold. 115 kilos, 255 pounds for Dave Wigan. So let's talk through that as Carlin Peterson goes for this lift as well. You get more break during a weightlifting competition here. They're under pressure to get it done in 30 seconds. What does that do for your fatigue levels? Well, they're CrossFit athletes, so probably not much they're used to this. We've got 115 kilos, 255 pounds. He's gonna go again. Just a shrug. Carlin Peterson bows out, Dave Wiggins stays in for 6-4 Onyx. Plenty of athletes still on the floor. And the only team with two athletes progressing to the second row of platforms are the guys 
coming in who I thought would do well and that is CrossFit underway. Lucas O'Brien about to lift now, bottom right of screen. To miss at 120 for Dave Wigan. We are yet to see an athlete hit that 11th weight, the weight of choice. That's dangerous, choose your own adventure. I think I can hit this. No, you can't. The barbell's very unforgiving. But the iron never lies. Jack Jeffrey, far left of screen, CrossFit Tory and the youngster. 120 kilos, 265 pounds, no problem for Jack Jeffrey's CrossFit Torian. We knew he was going to come out here and put on a show. Well, he gave us a glimpse last year in the cleaner jerk. And as you should do, you should clean your own barbell up. Lucas, proficient and happy. There is one thing you don't want to do with a snatch. It is to do it slow. You want to be really fast under that bar. Jack Jeffrey moving onto the last platform before getting into a weight of his choice. in that pool, give himself just a little bit more space to lock it out overhead. At the moment, the Lucas O'Brien show continues. Lars is doing some backflips. Backflip. <laughs> Lucas O'Brien, 119 kilo, 259 pound. And Ben Newland, Lucas O'Brien moving onto the second last platform. Lars Christensen from CrossFit Wolf Gulga will move out of competition. But a good backflip nonetheless. Big breath. Both big athletes, big range of movement. Oh, Lucas O'Brien not able to get that overhead. He's going again. On the 265-pound. 120 kilo barbell is going to get the better of him, but a great result. As the athletes rotate through their platforms, another thing that I've popped into my head, that countdown timer as you have to get that bar off the floor, does that have an effect on your setup? Yes, it does. <laughs> the effect it has is panic. Benny Newland successful with the 10th barbell. He'll have a minute break now before attempting a weight of his choice. Jesse Bellini, unsuccessful with the 115 kilogram barbell. 255. Rob Watt does it easy. Louis Foster, the mullet man at Tory and Pro. Trying to sneak onto that bar a little too early. You want to finish the pull before you get under. On the screen, Jake Armistead, our side missing that last lift, so he's off the floor. Now 
the last couple of competitors on the competition floor. Urban, our leaders, are onto the far right hand side. Joanne Van Ziel about to lift. Now we know that the Fowler brothers want to clear this ladder, including that weight of choice on platform 11. Benny Newlin, CrossFit underway. Can he be the first athlete to complete all 11 platforms? 300 pounds. Come on, Benny Newlin. Just losing it on his footing at the end. Devastating. <laughs> Rob Watts unsuccessful with that pull and just gets to the point where it's just too heavy. Tremaine Jensen, top of screen, our side. The lone hope for the men. Just catching on bent elbows. Not ideal. You want to have those elbows locked out as the bar lands. Tremaine Jensen bows out. The Fowler boys are in town. Ben Fowler. And that's patience in the bottom right there. Had a little bounce in the bottom and just waited before he stood up. Well, trifecta recipes for success. Just patience and don't rush. That is going to be an interesting finish to competition. All male athletes for our top three teams on the platforms. And Nancy successful. Still power snatching, but by the looks of that, that is more of a mobility choice. Moses. EXF. 265 pounds, 120 kilos. Oh, Johan. Easy 115 kilos, 255 pounds. But the Fowler brothers. Been successful. Making their way through the ladder. Henry Carlisle now, EXF. And just pops out the back. Moses will continue. The Fowler boys will get a minute break before they hit platform number 11. Adam Manzi in the white. Bottom of screen, Moses Patolo from EXF CrossFit. What are we going to see? First one with only 25 seconds. And a good lift for Johan. Those long legs proving helpful on the stability on the way up out of that squat. Luke Fowler. Oh, yeah. 
They said they wanted a clearance. They're halfway there. That was 285 pounds on the 11th platform. 129 kilos. Let's call it 130, 129 and a half. position he wanted to be in under the bar but he stood it up talk about pressure on your teammate you just hit it you turn around and look at him to do it <laughs> Johan Van Ziel no dice for Johan he doesn't look like he's gonna give it another crack <laughs> you can tell from body language straight away that he is done Sometimes there's just no point the risk of an injury by ripping a bar that's just not going to happen. Three, two, one, left. Adam Manzi's going to have a crack at this 11th platform. He's talking to his judges, possibly asking his judges what the previous guy did, gaming it. Judge, what's expected of him on this last platform? He's going to have a crack at 285 pounds, 129 kilos. I'll see you, Luke Fowler, and I'll raise you. Bows out. I tell you, athletes are so appreciative of what the crowd brings to their lips. The crowd really does help. Something that a lot of CrossFit athletes really thrive off when they're lifting is having a crowd willing them up out of those lifts, out of the bottom of the squat. Very impressive lifting from our males in teams. Adam Manzi, bit of a stumble. About three platforms out, but pulled himself together. And another great result <laughs> for Urban. And they're doing all of the right things to ensure that a top three podium spot comes their way tomorrow afternoon. Possibly their second trip back to Madison, Wisconsin. A crossing crowd, very different to a weightlifting crowd. Seems like there's a lot, lot quieter. Not much of a weightlifting crowd ever, really, unless you're at a really big event. But <laughs> generally, there is no crowd at all. Absolutely not. And standing by with Caleb Banfield, the brothers from Over the Ditch. Luke, Ben, guys, amazing job. Luke, you were the only athlete to nail the 11th platform. How did you choose that weight? I uh, didn't really know. Uh, my PR was like 125, so I thought I'd just whip on another 10 pounds and see what we can do. Guys, he got a PR! How amazing is that? Woo! And Ben, how did you find that ladder? It was pretty cool. Yeah, I thought it was pretty easy. I think we started off pretty light, which was good because we were in the warm-up area a while, so it was quite nice to kind of start off light, dial the technique in, and then roll through onto the heavier bars. So. And what's it like lifting in front of a crowd like this compared to at home? It's way easier. <laughs> yeah, it had a PRs. Um, it felt way lighter than what it would at the gym. So, yeah. love it. Well, good luck to the girls, guys, and go cool down. Thank you. Our rope highlights. Thank you, Kayla. And starting off, as Ben said, at a light 85 kilos. Yeah, we saw some very easy lifts on those first few bars of the ladder. As the Fowler brothers just said, just dialing in the technique on the lighter weights and then letting it rip on the heavier ones. Some really impressive lifting and oh wow, that was a massive ankle roll. He did well to stay on his feet after that, but such impressive lifting, 129 kilos, 285 pounds.
but it was the Fowler brothers show in the end. Adam Manzi giving it a great crack for Urban. And a big PR right there. Four kilo PR, that's massive. That's massive. Luke Fowler. Platforms getting reset. The female competitors not too far away from hitting the competition floor. Some massive lifts from the men and the juggle on the leaderboard will continue in the team competition. Event four down for the men. Event four for the women coming up. We'll be back here at Pat Rafter Arena. Day two of the Torian Pro coming at you soon. Uh, last night, my wife and I both signed up for the Open. It'll be our fifth year. Last year, a bit different at home, uh, but yeah, we love it. My main reason for coming the very first time to CrossFit is as both, both my sons were members. Um, they wanted me to get fit. I was 56 at the time. I was getting to that time in my life where you've got to think about your health, and I wasn't thinking about my health. So June of this year, we were back in the gym um, and I, I got this strange feeling in my, my arm. A feeling that if I hadn't come to CrossFit, I might have ignored. So I took myself to A&E. They gave me an ECG and the upshot was, it turns out I had uh, a narrowed artery and needed a stent. So I had a minor heart attack. Had it not been for the cardio work that I do at CrossFit, it could have been a different story. Thankfully, I came here. He told me not to get too smug about the fact I come here because if I hadn't been the smoker, it wouldn't have happened in the first place. But uh, fortunately, I'm not the smoker anymore. I'm, st I'm starting now to feel as fit as I did prior to lockdown. Um, after, the, after the stent, I had a bit of cardiac rehab. After a couple of months, they allowed me to come back with a couple of caveats. I wasn't to lift heavy. I wasn't to do burpees. Um, half the class wishes they didn't do burpees, but I don't mind them. Um, but I've now been back about three months and I am now lifting heavier. I am now back doing burpees. And I, to be honest, I feel, I feel as good as I did. CrossFit Glasgow is, is a big team. I wouldn't say we all know each other, but we all know each other's faces, different classes, pass, coming in, going out, everybody chats. Um, yeah, it's, it's a great sense of community. I'm Craig Stephen, this is CrossFit Glasgow, I'm 60 and I'm ready for the Open. Welcome back to Pat Rafter Arena. It is bucketing down here in South East Queensland again. Thank goodness it wasn't yesterday and we're all undercover in our open air arena here crowd filling in and plenty of pink in the stands today we are painting the pro pink to honor hannah clark and her three kids we tragically lost in 2020. yes hannah clark's parents have been really pushing the agenda to help eradicate domestic violence in australia doing some absolutely phenomenal work. Work that nobody should have to do, but we are honoring them here today. Everyone is wearing pink. The amount of pink in the stadium is amazing to see. Our rogue heat one, start list for event number four. Rinse repeat for the gentleman from about half an hour ago. And talk about pressure we talk about doing what you need to do for your team to help progress yourself up that leaderboard and now the boys are sitting back going thank goodness we're done now it's up to the girls the girls now have to do damage control if their boy didn't lift enough crossfit light we're gonna see some big lifting if anyone was tuning in last year kate gordon she can move a barbell she is going to come out here and do something special, I'm sure. She ate the floor up with the clean and jerks last year. Snatch ladder, her, and we know April Herring 
a lot of experience. She's very good under a barbell as well. I cannot actually wait for those two to hit the floor. I'm maybe going to call it early, but I'm probably going to see those two on platform number 10. I'm also excited to see Laura Clifton, CrossFit, our side. Individual Games athlete last year. She's now on her affiliate team of CrossFit our side and she can move a heavy bar. Our Rogue Snatch Ladder Team Event 4 for Max Load. We have just seen the males attempt to clear the ladder. Now we have the females. They have set weight starting at 61 kilos, 135 pounds, and then if they clear all those bars, they get a crack at the 11th platform where they get to elect yeah. their own weight of choice. We only saw one male do it. Luke Fowler for CrossFit Selwyn getting it done. But the mystery bar, up to you, how you feel and what you put over your head. As Wolfton. Coming to the floor, Maddie McGlashan. Now going back 10 years, the starting weight for the snatch ladder was 47 and a half kilos, so that's how much we have progressed. She's just having a, a bit of trouble. 61 kilos, still quite heavy for the women. Especially if you've got any overhead mobility issues. Absolutely no problem with that overhead mobility though. Casey McDonald, easy with that one. One of our newer affiliates coming into the Torian Pro for the first time this year. And another one of those teams, CrossFit Ariti, coming to the platform for the first time. Southern far left of screen. She had a great pull off the floor. Oh, and then overcooked it. Not enough aggression on the first lift, and then a little bit too much aggression on the second one. Overcooked it, threw it behind her head. Sixty-three kilos, one hundred and forty pounds. No problem. Daisy McDonald moving on. Taylor McDonald moving on as well. The past sisters. We have a couple of pairs of sisters amongst the teams. Although they're not sisters, but they could be. Both teams from Victoria, Norwest, Sarah Corrigan. And old school split snatch. Haven't seen one of them in a very long time. Nothing wrong with a split snatch. I programmed them in my own gym, but for our newer people to CrossFit, it's an old school lift. for all three athletes on the platform. Kathy Soji in that first platform getting completed as Urban Energy athletes. Laura Roberts first up in the blue. Far left, blonde ponytail, black shirt. It's a slow build. It's 
through these barbells. You do not want to blow out your adrenaline on the early bars. Save it up for the big lifts. Our guaranteed rates, storyline of the day. Clear Cleaning. the ladder. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's a simple one, easy, isn't it? Get as far as you can through the ladder. We have seen one male clear it, including the choose your own weight at the end. Really simple stuff. Lift 11 heavy barbells. That's it in a time frame. She's just getting warmed up. Easy McDonald. Exceptional lift. Smooth, strong. If you're getting faster as the bar's getting heavier, that is a great sign. That adrenaline would be starting to kick in. Well, that's all been happening. CrossFit Light, April Herry and Kate Gordon have joined the floor. They're on the second platform. April about to lift now. Always great feeling when you get that first one ticked off. CrossFit Kira Jim, Sister of April, Tess Herring, top of the screen in all black, about to lift for her first attempt. McDonald now moving to the second line of barbells. Good first lift for CrossFit Taurus. waiting for that call. Taylor McDonald, successful. Bottom left of screen. We'll see some athletes step straight up to the barbell when they're called, take advantage of that time. Some may take a little more time, but that might mean if you miss the lift, you don't get time to do it again. Daisy McDonald bows out. Sarah Corrigan, bottom left of screen in the pink with the blonde hair. The split snatch you spoke about. Are we going to keep seeing it? Not quite enough of a split. She's going to have another crack. She needs to get those legs out into a longer split if she wants to make it. Great effort from CrossFit Norwest. Sarah Corrigan bows out of competition. Taylor McDonald. Great patience on that catch. Tyler Parkey, top right of screen from Ruark, jumping for joy. One of our smaller athletes and probably over body weight. Herring, bottom right of screen, CrossFit light. Making easy work of 70 kilos, 155 pounds. Isabella Hardman, bottom left. Kate Gordon, bottom right. Are we going to see the token tongue out from Kate Gordon if she finishes every platform? Taylor McDonald, CrossFit Ariti. at the bottom of that squat. Once it was over her head, she knew she had it. 
breathing out not ideal when you're under load but she knew when she was in the bottom but the patience our recipes for success thanks to trifecta ensuring you don't rush any part of it and if overhead position is not a problem for you as an athlete then you can have that sigh of relief once it is over your head April herring bottom left of screen still looking great Great lifting though, Taylor McDonald, CrossFit Ariti. Be great for their results. Still looking very composed, April Herring. She hasn't wobbled yet. Child's play for Kate Gordon. I think the question's going to be for Kate Gordon. What is she going to put on the bar on the 11th? Well, she does. She is a really strong lifter, so she does have the ability to take as big a jump as she wants after that last barbell. I believe the last women's barbell is 84 kilos. Eighty-one kilos. Our bar, last barbell. And CrossFit lights. Talk about propelling yourself up the leaderboard. This is going to help massively. Leash Martin not able to get that lift from Taurus Teal. Tess Herring. <laughs> hey, big sis. I know what you can do. I can do just as well. Kate Gordon, she's just warming up. 77 kilos, 170 pounds. Two female athletes moving to platform number nine. And Tess Herring chasing her sister, April Herring. Sibling showdown. April with that great pull under, so much speed. Was just half a centimeter off the right position under that bar, and then the fatigue just not enough time to shake it off. Kate Gordon, Tess Herring, Tess successful. Can she outlift her sister? Kate Gordon looking to clear the clean and jerk ladder last year and the snatch ladder this year. because she went to pick up the bar but took another step backwards and just gave herself an extra few seconds for composure. Really important when you're getting towards your PB. Kate Gordon, top of screen, Tess Herring. Now to the right of screen, Tess Herring. Gordon. Now the, the 
question is, how much is she going to jump up by for this 11th platform? I'd be surprised to see maybe a 200 pounder close to 90 kilos on the bar for Kate Gordon. But on a snatch, we know that a big jump with the weight is not easy on your technique. Shanahane, CrossFit, Ruark. Continuing on, Jane. Oh, seems like she's caught her elbow a little. Three, two, one, left. I think we just had a bit of an elbow pop. Tess Herring, <laughs> so good. And a clear ladder for Tess Herring. That's really good for Tess Herring. Easy work as well, did not look wobbly at all. Kate Gordon, front and centre. She wants it. We saw it here last year at Pat Ruff Arena. Are we going to see it again? Yes! 190 pounds. Amazing work from Kate Gordon, but we did not expect anything less from her. 86 kilos. With so much more in the tank. Oh, bucket load more. Talk about favourite events. Hey, Gordon loves his stuff. Played it well for her team, though. Got an easy lift Let's in the bank. Go, but that lift is going to really help them on the leaderboard. Tess Herring. Is she going to match her? That's a five kilo jump from the last weight in the ladder. You and your platform and the entire Pat Rafter crowd. She's going to go 185 pounds. 84 kilos. Tess Herring, yes! Outstanding lifting from Tess Herring. And from a youngster coming through the ranks and watching Big Sister play on the big stage, it is now her time to shine. Hugs from her teammate, Meg Davis. CrossFit Kirawi wrecked him a magnificent result. And there are the sisters right there. And you've got to be proud of your younger sibling, don't you? Oh, look, it's competition, but as if you can't be proud of your sister and all the other athletes on the floor. The camaraderie has been amazing amongst these athletes this weekend. Oh, everything on the line, but they've still got time to celebrate and get around their competitors. And what some absolute magnificent lifting we saw just then. And can I just say, the females put on a great show on that snatch ladder, maybe outlifting the males in performance. Obviously not weight, but Tess Herring, Kate Gordon, just amazing work. Outstanding work. And down on the competition floor with Kayla Banfield is somewhat very special. Kate Gordon loves a little bit of crowd interaction. What's it like lifting on the big stage in front of this awesome crowd? I don't know, you tell me. <laughs> What's it like, guys? How much do they help you? Uh, do you know what? It, it's kind of scary how much I feel like you get that adrenaline rush just from hearing everybody screaming at you, and it's it's unreal. What are you going to do with that adrenaline now? <laughs> I'm going to probably pass out. <laughs> it's been an exhausting day. <laughs> what goes through your head just before you're about to lift a massive weight? Uh, don't forget to shrug. <laughs> That's kind of it. <laughs> the true coach in you comes out. <laughs> Pretty much. Well done, Kate. Great job on that event. Now go rest up. Yes, thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Kayla. And shrugging, so important in the snatch movement. Our rogue highlights, and we saw plenty of shrugging.
That we did. Right there, cross hoop wolfed and lots of great shrugging. And a split snatch from CrossFit Norwest. But pulling that bar all the way, that is what we mean by shrugging. Finishing the pull, getting under that bar. Kate Gordon putting on a snatch clinic. Making easy work of all of the weights in the ladder. And then on that 11th, choose your own weight platform. 190 pounds, like it's no one's business. With beautiful technique as well. It's and always great to see it done beautifully. And Tess Herring, look, she impressed the heck out of me. She was sensational. And great work from both Kate Gordon and Tess Herring. Clearing the ladder and then choose your own adventure and clearing that as well. Some great results. And speaking of results, juggles coming up. Once we do get the official results, and we'll be back here very soon to get into heat number two of the female team side of things. Heat number one out of the way. And we'll be back here very soon at Pat Rafter Arena for hopefully more special lifting coming up in just a few minutes. Yeah, CrossFit Glass was great. It definitely has changed my life and opened my eyes to so many different opportunities. Um, the confidence is definitely there and has grown across the years. I remember taking my first class and being told that I had to be much louder and I'm pretty sure people would probably tell me now to quieten down a little bit. Being a teens coach, uh, I definitely want to give them a safe space where they feel like they can have all the confidence, they have a say, they can learn new things and because I started so young um, it is a sense of giving back and wanting them to have all the opportunities that I had, that I had so many people to look up to and I only hope that I'm someone that they look up to also. We definitely do push them to get experience in the, the Open because it is a big thing here at CrossFit Glasgow um, and getting them all involved. We actually have one kid who's been with us since they were about 11 or 12 and they're super excited at the fact that they're now 14 and they can actually sign up as opposed to just doing the workout. Really looking forward to doing the Open this year actually uh, for two reasons. One, to see where I'm at as an athlete and to really push myself and also to get involved in the community aspect here in Glasgow and it's really nice to see your members also push themselves and go that little bit further than they think is possible. I'm Robin from CrossFit Glasgow and I'm ready for the Open. Welcome back to Pat Rafter Arena. Day two of the 2022 Atorium Pro, the first live semi-final event for the Noble CrossFit Games season. Semi-finals going on right around the world. The Lowlands Throwdown in Amsterdam and the Syndicate Crown in Knoxville, Tennessee. And team competition nearly 
complete for day two, Pip, and we've seen some amazing lifting this morning. The gentlemen are out of the way, and we're halfway through the females right now. Yes, these team athletes have been putting on a great show for us here today with their snatching. We have one more heat of women to go, and if it's anything to go off the last heat of women, it's going to be a show. Heat four for event four, the snatch ladder. Our rogue start list for the final heat of the team competition this morning, and we are going to see something pretty special at the back end. A great battle going on with our top four teams. Urban currently in the lead, EXF, CrossFit, Selwyn, and our side coming to the four first. We're going to get into plus six four, CrossFit Onyx. Our rogue snatch ladder, team event four for max load. We have the males and females working on their own ladders. We're on the females and they're starting with 135 pounds, which is 61 kilos. If they clear the snatch ladder, then they get an 11th platform where they get to choose their own weight. And as we just saw in the previous heat, these top teams in this heat have got a tough act to follow mm -hmm. from Kate Gordon mm -hmm. of CrossFit Light oh, and yeah. Tess Herring of Kirui. Annika Roberts first cab off the rank. And we know how strong she is. She has game face on. Here is an individual competitor here last year. Amanda Mackay is next, another individual competitor from last year. In the Onyx team, the 6-4 Army from New Zealand. And the athletes just waiting for their call onto the platform. They each get 25 seconds. No problem at all on this first bar, just getting it out of the way. But if they do miss in that 25 seconds, that they can go again and have another crack at it. And our trifecta recipe for success in event four is that keep those nerves under control. You don't want to blow out the adrenaline too early on the lighter barbells. Build it up. Use the time allocated wisely. Lift the bar when you're called. Don't waste time. And having patience on the lift. Once that bar's overhead, make sure you're stabilizing with patience before you stand up. We've seen some pretty epic failures out there amongst the men and women so far. Some unfortunate misses from a lack of patience. You mentioned patience. Lisa Campbell and Annika Roberts both falling forward onto their toes end. Ben Mackay, successful. Chrissy Bell also from Crossitorian, successful with the first barbell. Wuguga just hit the floor for their first barbell, 61 kilos, 135 pounds. The bars are loaded with pounds, but we use the metric system down here, so we have the kilos on the signs for our crowd. And for our benefit as well. And for us, because my brain works in kilos, so pounds, very confusing. Jess Ballett, successful. Erica Palasti, top of screen, CrossFit Wool Gulga. Amanda Mackay, still looking good. And as you've mentioned previously in other heats, they seem to get better once they get on the floor and get a lift out of the way and just get a little bit smoother. Yeah, those first few barbells, if they are easy, manageable weights for you, then you want to just get out a little bit of that excess adrenaline on those easier barbells. It just helps you settle into the lifting and your technique. Just dial it in. Lauren Lovick. Oh, good save. It just got, looks like a little bit of overhead trouble. If you 
you've got tight shoulders, then the snatch grip position with wide grip overhead can be a bit problematic. Samantha Jones, far left, grey shirt, black pants. Easy power snatch for Sam. Amanda Mackay continuing her path down the first line of barbells. Chrissy Bell unable to get that one from Cross Victorian. Once an athlete unsuccessfully lifts, they leave the floor and they leave their partner out on the floor to continue. Individual totals contributing to your team total as Annika Roberts again looks very good. Peter Hansen. From plus six four CrossFit Steel getting that lift overhead. Darcy Brosto will be next on the first platform. Amanda Mackay. She has impressed me thus far. She has looked the same from bar one to the bar we are at now. And still looks exactly the same. Erica Plassi just losing that one out the back in the center of the screen from CrossFit Will Gulga. And that's what we mean by dialing in the technique is keeping it exactly the same no matter how heavy the bar gets. Obviously very hard to do, but that's what we're aiming to do. Annika Roberts, bottom left, second line now. 72 kilos, 160 pounds. She doesn't have the most flexible shoulders, but she has such a strong upper body and such stability that she makes easy work of that snatch. Three, two, one, yeah. Amanda Mackay, rinse, repeat. So fluid with her movement. losing it forward then probably a little more on her toes in the bottom of the squat than she would like but she saved it and you have to stay on the platform for the rep to count rogue Murph is coming are you ready get the gear you need to take on the challenge visit roguefitness.com Roberts has just power snatched the 75 kilos. Her first lift was not as steady as she probably hoped. Maybe a little bit of nerves coming onto the platform, but since then, her and Amanda McCly just plowed through each of these barbells. And you might ask why you would have nerves on easy weights. It's because it's very easy to mess this format of an event up early on. Easy work from Amanda McKay, but as we saw in the men, there was a couple of misses early on that probably weren't expected, and that can really stuff up the overall team weight. So getting the nerves out on those easy weights is imperative. Crowd getting a little bit more vocal now. Annika Roberts, three platforms to go to finish the 10. mentioned game face it's still on Lisa Campbell having the time of her life I think we're gonna see Annika Roberts on that last platform I have no doubts Three, two, one, yeah. 77 kilos 174 pounds oh, Mandy it was a little bit wobbly on the stand up probably needed a little more patience tiny bit of panic but she made it and she gets to lift three, another barbell two, one, Sonia Mori bows out from Project Bayside Danica Roberts two, platform nine one, This is an easy power snatch towards the end of the ladder. 
No need to warm that squad up for Annika Roberts. Talk about psyching out your competitors. That's the way to do it, is to power snatch at the end of the ladder. Amanda Mackay. On her toes the last couple of lifts. She needs a bigger pull, a bit more aggression. She's going to have another crack. She's cutting it fine. A better attempt, but just not quite enough. 79 kilos will get the better of her. But great lifting from Amanda McCabe. Annika Roberts now, the 10th platform. The last of the prescribed weights. Campbell just losing it out the front. She's got time for another lift. I don't know if she's got the energy though. Three, now Annika Roberts two, just one, power snatched the last bar of the ladder, the 81 kilos. And now gets one minute break before she gets to choose her weight. The weight will be loaded for her and then she'll have the same amount of time to lift that barbell. Kate Gordon successfully snatched 190 pounds, which was 86. So is she going to try and outdo Kate Gordon, or is she going to play it safe and run her own race? Peter Hansen. Cranky with the bar when she went into the catch <laughs> position. Great aggression, though. You need some aggression on these snatches. Cannot go into it. Brett frowning at the bar as yeah. <laughs> she catch it. Come on, bar. Work with me. Darcy Brosto now. Kiwi lifters are plenty on our platforms right now. Darcy will have one more attempt in the 25 second time frame. Three, two, one, and she will three. run out of precious seconds as Annika Roberts now steps to the platform. What has she loaded on the bar? 190. She's going to try and match Kate Gordon. 84 kilos, 190 pounds. And it's easy. Game face hasn't left the building. Was that a that power dominance. snatch? It was close. It was very close to a power snatch. Mighty Sykes taking the barbell for a walk off the platform. <laughs> successful with her lift from our side. Three, two, one, now, one of our smaller athletes, Peter Hansen, she's about to Three, jump onto two, platform number one, nine. This yeah. is exceptional lifting, Peter Hansen. <laughs> Laura Clifton successful. Peter Hansen now going. Crankiness is working for her. And the patience in the bottom. She was a bit wobbly overhead, but she waited to stand up. Paid off for her. 79 kilos. Holly Heine, great lift. Let's fit our side. And they need to jump some spots up that leaderboard. The pressure is on for them to put some weight on their total. Shelling just can't get that bar overhead. Now, crucial for Selwyn as they are out now. Three, two, one, Laura Clifton, center of screen. There'll be no issues with this lift as Peter Hansen attempts platform number 10. 81 kilos, 180 pounds. Oh, just overcooked. 
overlooked it. Threw her body just a little bit too far forward under the bar. But she's happy. She did well to get to that final weight. Holly Heine, great lifting. Bryony Chalice from EXF. Proficient weightlifter. Pound for pound, super strong. Laura Clifton, is she going to go through and clear it as well? Now in CrossFit, pound for pound doesn't count like it does in weightlifting where there's weight classes, but we do like to call it when we see it, when we see the smaller athletes lifting a lot of weight. Christy Hollard, second in. Caitlin Van Zeel, bottom of screen. Christy, great lift. Laura Clifton, two-time games qualifier. Unable to go in 2020 due to COVID. Goes over as an individual last year and joins the Awa side team, her affiliate team, for this year. Now talk about game face. Holly Heine has got it on. And a good lift. This is great for CrossFit Awa side, making their way through the ladder. If they can get both ladies through to that last barbell and clear it, big points on offer and not many teams have actually gotten both athletes to this last barbell laura clifton top of screen saw her here on the individual competition floor last year 81 kilos 180 pounds our final bar oh easy there's her speed. She saved it for the last bar. Holly Heine, her opportunity now. Christy Bishop, can she get it? No, she can't. It'll be up to Bryony Chalice. Three ladies left. Holly Heine. Wow. That is some impressive lifting. From Holly Heine. Bryony Chalice, her opportunity now for EXM. Bryony Chalice has got to be happy with that lift and didn't leave herself much time on the clock. Caitlin Van Zeel all on her own as the Our Side girls get one minute respite for clearing the 10. Snatch for Caitlin Van Zeel. Mum of two. Jaylee, another mum up next Three, as well. Two, one, Bryony Chalice as well on the left of the screen. CrossFit EXF. 79 kilos, 175 pounds. And it was better than her last lift. That is a lot of weight for a smaller athlete. Pound for pound, she is lifting exceptionally well. well. Laura Clifton now, our first athlete to the platform. What is she going to lift, Laura Clifton? Can she clear the 11 platforms? 190, what, 84 kilos. Caitlin Van Zeel in the background getting that successful lift on platform nine. And a successful second attempt for Laura Clifton. She knew she had it, just a little hiccup in the first attempt. But she knows she needed to pull something out for her team and she has done it. Bryony Chalice, you superstar! And that is another cleared ladder. Bryony, a minute break for her. Now what's interesting is all the girls that have gotten to this pick your own adventure platform, as we're calling it, have taken the same jump to 190 pounds, which is about a three kilo jump. Caitlin Van Zeel, all on her own, manages to pull that back in, way out in front. 
Great save from Kayla Manziel. She's happy with it. She gets a chance at this last platform as well. We're a bit of a lull now for about 30 seconds as we wait for Bryony Chalice from EXF to hit the platform. Caitlin will have one minute rest after she has completed it. And Bryony Chalice, you're her coach. You can get into her ear in the next 10 seconds. What do you say? Grip it and rip it. 185 pounds, 84 kilos. Ronnie Chalice. Oh, rip it and rip it. Wow. Again. Superstar in the weights, you young lady. Ronnie Chalice from CrossFit EXF clears the lot. Talk about throwing down to your competitors. And she she is the smallest out of our athletes that have lifted that weight. So impressive. And important results as well for EXF. Christy Hollard getting to platform eight. But Bryony finishing 11. Caitlin Van Ziel, she's going to have a crack at this 11th platform. She's gonna attempt 185 pounds as well, 84 kilos. And some exceptional lifting from the ladies in heat Thank number two. You. Oh, they have impressed me. And you mentioned it before, way more impressive than the guys. Yeah, I'm calling it. The women went out there and put on a show. And some of these ladies stumbling early, but then finding their groove and coming home so strong. We saw a lot less cracking under pressure from our women. Some really impressive lifting. The crowd was thoroughly entertained. And event number four for the team competition. Only two events remain tomorrow morning to find out who our top three teams will be qualifying out of the Oceana region. Skipping off together. Competitors arm in arm. You do not see that very often. In any sport. In any sport, only in CrossFit. Skipping off the competition floor. Only Heidi and Shaley Mancy having the best time out there. They did compete at the games together last year on teams, CrossFit our side and CrossFit Urban. And down on the competition floor, some heavy hitters and some big lifters down with Kayla Banfield. Guys, normally we choose one person to interview, but it was just so difficult because there were so many amazing lifts. And Brandy, I'm going to start with you. Was that a PB? Yeah, that was a very big PB. So I think the last hit lift I've hit 76, so I'm pretty happy with that. And what did you hit? 83, I believe. 84? But amazing. And so how did you choose that weight? Uh, well, I just went two kilos heavier than what was on the bar before, and they said it was already loaded, so I was going to try and hit it. And that you did. Great job. Laura, you hit your lift at a second attempt. What went through your mind when you were about to pick up that barbell for the second time? Oh, my God. I better get this. <laughs> And you did, and how did you choose your weight? Um, I didn't want to do too much of a risk, like too much of a jump, so I just sort of went, obviously a number that I knew was more than the last bar, 84, but nothing too crazy. I didn't want to risk it too much. One more question. You qualified as an individual last year, and now you're going team. Yeah. What was behind that decision? Um, just like wanted a bit of a 
mental break this year, a bit more like just fun, not fun, but like, yeah, just enjoy the year, like try team out for the year, focus on my gym, so I've got an affiliate, and then yeah, get back into indie training after today, yeah. yeah. We love you, Laura. Caitlin, is it nerve wracking being the last athlete to lift a barbell, and what was going through your head? I actually enjoy it, to be honest, because obviously you can see what everyone else is lifting. Um, but I mean, I'm just happy to be here. I'm just happy to lift that last bar, which I didn't think I'd do. So I haven't lifted that since my first baby, I think. <laughs> That's a win. Well done, ladies. Go and rest up. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, Kayla. Mum strength, all important. And PBs all around with our rogue highlights. Annika was exceptional from the start. Oh, Annika Roberts, just so much strength. Power snatches through the ladder, and then 190 pounds, like it's nothing. Didn't even blink at it. Laura Clifton, we did not expect anything less from her. But her teammate, wow, Cross with Oversight, they needed that event result, but I tell you what, an eight kilo PB from Bryony Chalice. That is massive. Anyone who snatches knows that we're just, you know, we're dragging up kilos one at a time, but eight kilo PB, massive. Kaylin Van Zeel having a great performance this weekend with Urban, but this lady stole the show. Eight kilo PB, amazing. <laughs> and screaming really loud when you do get a PB, but Bryony Chalice, she is a superstar of the future. And don't be surprised to see her on the individual floor here next year. And coming up very soon, the individuals will be hitting the competition floor. Event number three, the Barbell Complex coming at you. More action coming here from Pat Rafter Arena. So stay tuned wherever you're watching it right around the globe. More action coming here soon. does it take? How do I train? What do I eat? How much do I sleep? How do I react? What if this happens? What if that happens? It all adds up. It's not about what I do. It's about what I don't do. No excuses. No shortcuts. No gimmicks. No tomorrows. No bull. It's super important to have a baseline level of where you're at. Being able to have data at your fingertips is just a great way to improve your overall life and health. The at-home thorn tests are just an amazing tool. You can have some tangible evidence as to here's what's going on in your system. It's looking at the body as a whole and trying to fix different systems that will then contribute to overall health.
Olympic Games semi-finals are proudly supported by a Rusty, the official rapid recovery provider of CrossFits. Rogue, don't weaken. Monster, Monster Hydro, the official energy drink of the noble CrossFit Games. Guaranteed Rate, the official mortgage company of the noble CrossFit Games. And GoWad, the official mobility partner of the noble CrossFit Games. Hello everybody, welcome back to Pat Rafter Arena Day 2 competition for the Torian Pro, the first live semi-final event for the Noble CrossFit Games season. And what an extraordinary day and a half we have had so far. My name, Jeremy Austin. Alongside me, Pip Malone and Kayla Banfield will join us on the competition floor a little bit later on. Some heavy lifting from the teams this morning, Pip, and now we turn our attention to the individuals. Yes, we saw some absolutely great lifting from our team this morning on the Snatch Ladder event, but the individuals, they're gonna be hitting a different lifting event. The women are up first. The Noble team standings after four events. Sees Urban Energy at the top. They have been almost unstoppable in a day and a half of competition. EXF doing some wonderful stuff to come in in that second position. And our top ranked team, CrossFit Selwyn in third. Our side still in touch at 335 points. A little bit of a gap back to underway. But I think we've got our top four contenders for those top three podium spots tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, that snatch event really put some point deficit amongst those top competitors in the teams. And as you mentioned, that, that point deficit narrowing with our side doing so well, Holly Heine, Laura Clifton doing well for our side, propelling them back up. And our female individual competitors hitting the floor for the first time today. And our US Army start list for heat number one. And we have got a few heavy hitters. Jade Williams in particular, Steel Coast CrossFit. Down your way in Newcastle. Katie Brock also a proficient weightlifter from CrossFit Newstead in lane number eight. And Jolene Neville, we know what she can do previous to being a mum. Let's see what she can do after that. She's in lane five, CrossFit Mecca. full stadium here at Pat Rafter lunchtime on Saturday wherever you're watching right around the globe thank you for joining us we're going to give you our insights right across the afternoon and tomorrow US Army barbell complex individual event three three attempts for a max load of three cleans two front squats one jerk or shoulder to overhead if they rather 20 minute time cap you mentioned the shoulder overhead we've got a couple of options there a strict press or a shoulder press which we won't see too much of a push press a push jerk or a split jerk if we're going for max load we'd have to be going split jerk i would love to see a strict press out there but i think so would i i think we are going to see mostly push jerks and split jerks Now, the athletes have loaded their own bars to the weight they want to start on. You would think that the first attempt is going to be getting a safe one in the bank first. The first two athletes at the top of screen will be lifting at the minute mark and we will progress down the floor each minute. We're gonna go through a five minute rotation of athletes jade williams looking good early on and a great
great first rep for Jade. As we said, just getting a weight you know you can do in the bank, play it safe. You do not want a donut on that leaderboard. We'll have donuts, but just not on the leaderboard. <laughs> Gary Freestone from CrossFit awaken up at Rockhampton. Successful with her lift at the back platform. Emily Asson at the front here. Julia Hannaford at the back. So we are going two athletes at a time working down the floor. The athletes are allowed to power clean. They don't have to squat clean. Also a split clean as an option as well, if they so choose. Well, we did see uh, some split snatches in the teams. Those are good lifts. 195 pounds. For those of us using the metric system, that's 88 and a half kilos. One of the athletes I mentioned to keep an eye on, Jolene Neville, front and centre. Just recently having a baby Piper and now back on the competition floor once again with a nice and easy 200 pounds on 90.7 to 91 kilos. What a shabby weight to be starting off on and she's power cleaning it. Adrian Geary at the back as well. Successful as well on 195. Important to get a com comfortable and confident lift in the books early. Settle the nerves a bit. Big crowd in here, and it's you and one other athlete, and hopefully success at the end of it. And this is a complex that we haven't seen before at this level of competition. A six rep complex, heavy on the front rack. Lucy Clark at the front, Katie Brock at the back. <laughs> Katie Brock, very comfortable in all pink. Lucy Clark getting set. That's a rough start for Lucy Clark. Just losing it on the split jerk at the end. She's gonna have to attempt that weight again. You, I don't think she'll go up, but she's gonna wanna get a score in the bank. And stepping off the platform is a big no-no. It will be a failed lift if the athletes step outside the lifting platform area. Castell Pritchen. One of our Legion athletes from Western Australia. And Talia Jordan at the back from WA as well. Self-Bridging seems to be in a bit of a hurry. And we're seeing a fair bit of hand rearrangement with these athletes. Three very different movements. Just you, you don't necessarily hold the bar in the same spot for every single movement. You change it up. Our, sorry, Pip, our first lifting sequence has now completed with the first five minutes down. We will recommence at the top of the floor with Jade Williams and Carrie Freestone once again. So only three attempts, very similar to weightlifting protocols where you only get three attempts at a cleaner jerk or a snatch. Very little room for error. Jade Williams, power clean for the first rep. Now she's on the squat clean. Very strong out of the bottom of the squat. No problem at all for her. And no problem, Jade Williams 
doing a very respectable second attempt. Now the athlete's score is going to be the best successful lift for the event. Now, important, you don't make too big of a jump, but you want to make a big enough jump that makes you competitive in your field. What that number is, I don't know. Three, two, the athletes one, also would have warmed up to one of these weights they're attempting, whether they've warmed up to their first weight or their second weight. All right, Emily Hatton at 210 pounds, which will give her the lead, and that is 95 kilos. Emily Hatton at the front, the black and the pink, Julie looking Hattin really good. Julie Hannaford at the back, just taking her time on those squats. Very happy with proceedings. Really a little bit unsteady, but still managed to bring it together for a successful lift. All the athletes in the heat one look to be split jerking as they're shoulder to overhead. We haven't seen any push jerks or push presses yet. Back, Jolene Neville underway. We see that re grip at the top from Jolene, letting those fingers go. That's danger time if that barbell comes out. First front squat done. Adrian finishes the cleans. Jolene, the first of. And Jolene Neville at 205. <laughs> She's pretty and chuffed Adrian with herself. At 200 pounds. 200 pounds, 90.7, so just under that 91 kilo mark. Adrian Geary, CrossFit cross axed right here in Brisbane. Speaking of Brisbane, Katie Brock, the back in all pink from CrossFit Newstead. Three, two, Lucy one, Clark, 195, three. unsuccessful with her first lift. Let's see what she can do this time. She's going for her third clean attempt. Just letting those elbows drop a bit in that front squat. Bit of fatigue to the shoulders. And it's a good lift this time on her second attempt. Much better on the split jerk than on her first attempt. Fast elbows, but a no rep for Katie Brock. And it's such a punish to get no rep at the end of a six rep complex. You do all that work for it to not count. And if you look at the three movements in the complex, your weakest is going to be the shoulder to overhead. For some. For some, yes. There will be some athletes that step out here where the squats are the challenge and they'll be able to throw it over their head. Estelle Pridgen now at the front, Talia Jordan representing Western Australia. Talia looking very good at the back, moving through those squats really quickly. No mucking around here. 185 pounds, 83.9 kilos. Estelle Bridgen. It's going to go back to the Lucy Clark lift on our fourth round. And Lucy looked a lot better under that bar. Maybe the nerves got the better of her on the first lift, but that was a lot more comfortable. She might have underestimated the fatigue in her front rack at the end of the complex going into that split jerk. Just need a bit more aggression at the end. You have to throw it up over your head like it weighs 100 more kilos than it does. Final lifting window underway. Carry Freestone. Back off screen. Jade Williams at the front of screen. Oh, Jade Williams. Front rack cooked. 
And this is the challenge for all of these athletes with this complex is your front rack just fatigues out very quickly. Three cleans, two front squats, and then you still have to put it over your head. And that dicey time when you have to decide, do you go for it or do you stay a little bit conservative in the hope that you have enough in the tank. Keep in mind, we have got another event coming up after this later this afternoon. Emily Atten, 215, 97 and a half kilos. She is cleaning that bar easy. Hannaford at the back. Fatigue is real now, it's starting to build. Have they got enough to get this bar overhead? Emily Atten to go first. Wow. And Julia Hannaford as well. By the looks of Julia Hannaford, I think that is a PR for her. She was stoked with that lift. Emily Atten though, her legs did not look like they had any fatigue in them whatsoever. Straight up out of the bottom of that squat, no problem. Athletes may not attempt to redo the complex after they have failed an attempt. So all on the line, Jolene Neville is pushing it a little too much. Adrian Gear at the back. Can she hang on? Just catching it on her quads in the wrong position through her back. And that old phrase of getting spat out, there it is. Both Jolene and Adrian getting spat out the back of the platform. And you would think with a complex like this that if you can squeeze out that third clean, you go in a front squat it. It's the third clean and the shoulder to overhead that seems to be giving us the problems here. Our guaranteed rate storyline of the day is that this complex is not complex. At all. It's a matter of setting your mind to what you can achieve and getting the job done. Complex designed by CrossFit Games staff in order to test these athletes within one pound, half a kilo of what they're capable of doing. Lucy Clark and Katie Brock. Katie with a failed lift last time. She needs to nail this one. And unfortunately, Lucy Clark finished her rep off the platform, so that third one's not going to count. But Katie Brock in the background, she made her. She needed that rep. Great save from Lucy Clark, but as the rule states, step off the platform. It will be a no lift. But great work from saving that one. But Katie Brock, a little bit more composure that time as opposed to her second lift and able to nail it. Our Perth girls, Talia Jordan at the back, is still Pridgen at the front. Their last attempt at max weight, which will be their score. We've still got power cleans here at 95 kilos. 210 pounds. She's made her second squat. She just has to get it over her head. Talia Jordan happy in the background, nailing hers. Castell Bridgen, five foot nine. What a reach and a long way to go. Some good quality lifting from our ladies. Very good quality. And by the look on Jordan, it is uh, it is a tough complex. Very taxing. Talia Jordan. Not only did she lift well, she lifted fast. Got through, minimised the fatigue on what's coming up later on this afternoon. That's right. The longer you stand there with that weight on your body, the worse it is going to be.
our heat one ladies our first 10 competitors leaving the competition floor what a great test the barbell complex and a lot of moving parts i love it i love a barbell complex it doesn't really matter what your one rep max is with a barbell complex it's how good is your strength endurance how long can you hold on to that heavy weight for okay grip strength to an extent coming into play as well had our rogue replay jade williams kicking things off Jade Williams getting two really good attempts under her belt. Jolene Neville, veteran, still doing her thing like a champ. Lucy Clark, though, missed her first rep, which is not what you want, but came back, got her second one. Great lifting all round from our Heat One women. Some very happy athletes. And great to see such good lifting out there. Hannaford was great, Emily Atten was great, and Jolly Neville happy with her second lift. Katie Brock coming back, and even Talia Jordan cheering her on. Talia Jordan's last split jerk just looked too easy. And for self bridging. Bam, straight arms, and locked out overhead. And plenty of people filling very few empty seats here at Pat Rafter Arena. For a special day while we paint the pro pink in remembrance of Hannah Clark and her three children, Alia, Liana and Trey, tragically lost to us in 2020. And raising awareness for domestic violence, not just here in Australia, but right around the world. And lovely to see Hannah's parents here and a big photo with the whole crew in the pink shirts earlier on just before this event. Our US Army start list for Heat 2. And the heavy lifting will continue. And I am going to race straight to lanes 6 and 7. Olivia Kelly and Emma Wright, knowing full well that they are going to ship something pretty special in this complex. Well, we saw some great clean and jerking from Olivia Kelly at last year's Torium Pro. So I'm excited to see what she can do on this six rep complex. Grace Walton, our newcomer from CrossFit Dignus in Western Australia, one to watch. Rachel Toamua for Amina. Keep your eye on her as well. Emily DeRoy was good yesterday. Let's see what she can do with a barbell. And Georgia Wellsman. Event two was definitely her friend. Day two, moving day. Generically at most semi-final competitions. We find out who gets that breathing space going into the final two events. The first of two events for the individual females today. It is brought to us by US Army Barbell Complex Individual Event 3. Three attempts for a max load of three cleans, two front squats, one jerk. But they can use any style of shoulder to overhead if they please. They have a 15 minute time cap. They can do any style of clean, power or squat. And we are going to be moving down the floor, two athletes at a time. But first, they're going to load their bar to their first attempt weight. Rachel Tokamua from Awina. Reloading that bar for the first lift. She'll lift with youngster Grace Walton in the second minute. But we are about to get started. Beck Lannister, Chloe Gregory will be our first two athletes to lift. And this one can't really compare with anybody else. This is you and the barbell, and that is it. That's right. And uh, previous one rep maxes don't really matter in this instance because they have six reps to do touch and go. 
They've got to clean it three times, squat it twice, and then get it over their head. I can feel the tension in the stadium. <laughs> These athletes just wanting to get things started. Getting that first rep successful is where all the nerves are. Once you get that first rep in, you can chill out a little. Chloe Gregory taking a few deep breaths. Chloe Gregory at the back. Beck Lannister at the front. Oh, what a clean. Beck Lannister. Easy power clean and an easy squat clean. Really fast elbows. Keeping those elbows up is going to minimize fatigue in the shoulders and in the front rack position. And an easy one, 65, 75 kilos. Chloe Gregory successful at 180. That's about a smidge over 80 kilos on the conversion. But great elbow position from Beck Lannister early. And a good elbow position is going to reward you when it comes to the shoulder to overhead. Fresher shoulders. Three, two, one. Grace Walton. Superstar in the making. If yesterday was anything to go by. And Rachel Topamua from Lena at the front. Comfortable. 180. Grace Walden is rock solid in that front rack position. We're seeing minimal caving of her upper body. It's nice and upright. Rachel, quality first up. Now Grace for the shoulder overhead. And for 19 months in the sport of CrossFit, she's doing pretty well if you're lifting like that. Not bad at all. Our third lifters, Olivia Kelly. Three, now two, that is a big number one. for your first attempt. Hey, we expected it. She brought it last year. She wants to bring it early. 215 pounds, 97.5 kilos, and Olivia is taking a wider grip on that bar. Georgia Otto at the back as well, looking strong. Looks like 175. No problem with the squats for Olivia. Georgia Otto successful, Sorry, Olivia no. Kelly. Yeah, she knows, she's going today. And Olivia Kelly is one of these athletes that she's going to clean and squat anything. It's going to come down to the jerk for her. Emma Wright at the back. Thorndon CrossFit from Wellington, New Zealand. And Amy Alessi, CrossFit Northwest. Sixty pounds on the bar for Amy Lessey. Opting to power clean the first two, squat clean the third. One ninety pounds for Emma Wright in the background. One ninety, easy. Emma Wright, eighty-six kilos comfortable and you can definitely tell the athletes that have spent a little more time on their weightlifting because they're adjusting their hands as they go along with each movement you don't keep the same grip if you cleans and you squat as you do for overhead two ladies who did very well yesterday georgia wellsman at front of camera emily deroy at the back Georgia, great front rack position. And just making sure she had enough room 
to split jerk, taking a bit of a step forward before jerking it. Because oh. the wrap has to finish on the platform. <laughs> that was close. 90 kilos there, 200 pounds for Emily to Roy. You're dicing with the edge of the platform there, but great recovery, Emily DeRoy. And the first lifting window has completed. Second one about to start. And Chloe Gregory and Beck Glenister. Let's see those elbows back right through nice and quick. <laughs> Great speed on those elbows. Really great bar placement too, nice and high. So she's not using the muscles in her shoulders and her grip to hold the bar. She's just sitting the bar on her body. It's all patience in lifts. Beck Glenis had just then, perfect example. Overhead and didn't move made sure she was stable enough to move her feet. So many mislifts happen when you're moving your feet too quick. That's right, we're seeing a lot of jerks go running off the platform and generally that is happening because they're moving their feet too fast. Hold that split position, stabilize first, and then bring your feet together. Tomomua, Tomoina at the front, Grace Walton at the back. Rachel continuing the power cleans. Great lifting from both these athletes. Easy split jerk. Grace Walton sneaking in there. I think she surprised herself. Now, Rachel is one of the rare athletes we're going to see where the squat and the clean is probably not as strong for her as the overhead. Great punch overhead from Rachel Tomo Famoina. And Olivia Kelly continues that progression of flip cards. Let's see how high we can go. 230. 104.3 kilos. She's so strong in the front rack, just taking that moment in the middle to re-grip before she touches the ground. And we're coming up to the challenging part for her, shoulder to overhead. Great shoulder overhead from Georgia Ono. Olivia Kelly. That was a better jerk than her first attempt. Much more solid, less wobbles. 230, what's she going to go to? 250? I think she's going to jump another 15 pounds. 245 is my call. I'd like to see 250. <laughs> but I'm greedy. Emma Wright. Amy Alessi. Two of her most experienced athletes. Emma Wright, national champion of New Zealand for many years. And just going a little wide on her catch, Emma Wright. Amy unfazed as always. I love how fast Amy is standing up out of that squat. I had an easy push jerk for Amy. Emma Wright now, 195. 88.5 kilos. Great lift. It's always so relieving when you get your first two in because the third attempt is playtime. Just see what you can do. The second one is the money. Is that always the case on a weightlifting competition platform? Not necessarily because it depends on what you're lifting for. Medals or team spots. Georgia Wellsman at the front, a little bit wider on that catch now, trying to get under that load quicker. Emily DeRoy doing the same. DeRoy 210, 95 kilos. Wellsman about to attempt the jerk. 
Not a great split, but still. Just a bit off with her timing with her feet and her arms, but still an easy rep. 22-year-old Emily DeRoy from CrossFit Townsville. Kelly, it's 250. She gets a new record. 245 thrown around at the Syndicate Crown in Knoxville, Tennessee yesterday. So the third lifting window commences. Final lift. Chloe Gregory and Beck Lannister. Time under tension gets greater and greater the more the weight increases. It does. We're well, seeing those midlines starting to fold over, but no problem overhead. It's like instant fear and then instant relief when the barbell goes overhead. Grace, Rachel. Rachel has been lifting very well. As you mentioned, that Three, jerk two, is exceptional. One. If she can hold on to it through these cleans and squats, I don't doubt she's going to be able to put it over her head. She's got two. And Grace Walton in the background getting a no rep. That's got to hurt. That means an extra rep in an already six rep complex. Rachel getting steady. She is looking good. Rachel. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Wipe the sweat off the brow. Now Grace Walton did an extra clean. She has done four cleans into these two front squats. As she run out of gas. That's a long time standing with a barbell. Uh, wow, that was a good fight from that no rep. I'm not exactly sure why she got the no rep. Olivia Kelly. Two forty, so five pounds off the record lifted. The syndicate crowned yesterday, Olivia Kelly. Just catching that front rack a little low. She can recover through the front squats, though. Oh, so close. A great grind out on those first five reps. We're just seeing that front rack fatigue get the better of our athlete. Georgia the Otto. Attempt. <laughs> Olivia Kelly shaking the head. She knows it was close. Amy, Emma, third and final lift for them. We have two minutes left. pounds for Amy, 200 for Emma. 83.9 kilo conversion for Amy and for Emma. Just over 90 kilos. Now Amy has just missed that second squat. <laughs> Not sure what happened there, which is unfortunate because her shoulder to overhead is so easy. Emma Wright, great lifting. And it was a short, fast split, and she stood that up pretty quick. She wasn't going to mess around down there. Georgia Wellsman, Emily DeRoy. The final lift of the barbell Three, complex. Two, one, oh, and some skin off on the rack position as well for Georgia Wellsman. You tell she's getting the bar high enough. She's nicked the skin off her neck. Solid reps to start for Georgia. One more squat to go. 
Good set from Georgia Wellsman. Oh, wow. That's an impressive joke on that, the third attempt. That was great from Georgia Wellsman. Confident in the splits. Emily DeRoy, an opportunity now. Oh, just throwing it out and around her head. You really want to dip if your body straight up and down, get that bar in one straight line. Georgia Wellsman, that was impressive. Great work from Georgia Wellsman. Blood, sweat, and tears here on the floor. Victorian Pro. And some quality lifting. Rachel Totomua for Moina and Olivia Kelly. Oh, she'll be disappointed with that last attempt. The old what if, what if. But athletes now leaving the floor. We'll see them back here later on for event number four. Our road replay. Kick things off with Chloe Gregory. Some really impressive lifting from these ladies in heat two. Olivia Kelly, though, well out in front. Emily DeRoy just saving that, staying on the platform. Olivia Kelly showing why she lifted so well last year. She's just so strong on her cleans and squats. Unfortunately, Grace Walton, though, getting a no rep. And a no dice on the 240 for Olivia Kelly. But Georgia Wellsman had the most impressive jerk of the bunch, I think. Very easy overhead on the third attempt. And exactly what you don't want to do is leave something in the tank out there. And so close yet so far for Olivia Kelly. But setting a good standard of what is to come. Filling in still on the Saturday afternoon here and the US Army start list for our big boppers after day one yesterday and I don't think you have to go much further than lanes 8 and 10 as they come onto the arena. Kara Saunders and Tia Claire Tumik. What are we going to see? Bailey Rogers, I'm excited to see. And has Ellie Turner done enough homework in the off-season to put up something big. There are some heavy hitters in this heat. Gemma Hoke as well, proving last year at the Torium Pro that she can play with these big girls. Hey, she did it yesterday as well. Gemma Hoke, top 10 finish in event number two. And that 245 pound record yesterday at the Syndicate Crown, I reckon is definitely under threat right now. Our US Army Barbell Complex, individual event three, three attempts for a max load of three cleans, two front squats, one jerk. The athletes can do any style of shoulder to overhead they like. Any style of clean as well. Now, I think we're going to be seeing a bit of game playing here in this heat. Like how there's going to be some eyes around the floor. What's she lifting? Now, interesting, because of the rankings of these athletes after day one, Kara is going to be lifting before Tia. Tia can have a look back and see exactly what she has to do. Even one pound two pounds above what Kara has to do to take the win, assuming that these two are going to be the top two lifters out of these last top ten athletes. And we know Tia does not give up 100 points easily. She's going to be coming in here wanting a clean sweep this weekend. And for those of you just joining us or you've stayed with us right throughout the broadcast, thank you for your company. 
I know there's people watching right around the globe. The five-time champ back on Aussie soil once again. And the crowd here at Pat Rafa absolutely loving it. Now, trifecta recipe for success in event three of the Barbell Complex. Get a lift in the bank first and foremost. Missing that first rep can be crucial. One movement at a time, not getting too far ahead of yourself in the complex. There are six reps to do. And play to your strength. If shoulder to overhead is your strength, you still have the three cleans and the two squats to get through first. So there is absolutely no point loading that up for your strength. It's like coming into a competition and thinking about event number six when you haven't completed event one. What do we load first? What do we load first? The athletes get to load their own bars. And we're going to be going two athletes at a time down the floor. Our first two athletes, Daniel Ford. She's at the back, two, Ellie Hutchins one, at the front. Athletes from Adelaide, South Australia. 190 pounds to start, making easy work of the squats. Daniel Ford starting at 180 pounds. That's 82 kilos. Easy first attempts for these ladies. One minute windows as we propel ourselves down the competition floor. Three five minute lifting windows. And I'm loving Daniel Ford's pink chucks. That's great. <laughs> oh, it's all about the look, isn't it? We haven't seen chucks on the floor for a long time. We're seeing some old school stuff going on. Split snatches, chuck tailors. Hey, throw it back. We've got a rich history. I'll tell you what, the wind is blowing a little bit in here and the athletes have got a long time between lifts. Got to ensure you stay warm. 2.05. The order of the day from Ellie Turner, Bailey Rogers, proficient weightlifter. Exceptional. Bailey Rogers having represented New Zealand at the Commonwealth Games in weightlifting, but she's just missed one of her cleans she may have started a little heavy no problem for ellie turner though at 205 93 kilos now these athletes would have had an extensive warm-up out the back especially because the weather is a little cooler they would have been wanting to warm up to some heavy weights so that when they came out here and were waiting their muscles weren't getting cold Maddie Sturt having a bit of a boogie at the back. Trying to keep herself warm. And Gemma Hoke. £195 pounds for Maddie Sturt. She's been doing some work on her lifting. Amazing stuff. Oh, wow. Easy jerk from Matty Sturt at the back, 195 pounds in the bank, 88.5 kilos. Hope now with the jerk to go. It was a rough first attempt, but she made it. That's all that counts. It is in the books for Gemma Hope. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a look up to her coach to go. Whoa, what just happened? That was heavier than she would have liked, I think. Kara Saunders. Two, one, and our newcomer, Georgia Pryor, had a magnificent day yesterday. 220 on the bar for Kara. 165 for Georgia. Kara making easy work of 100 kilos. Georgia hitting 74 and a half. Saunders off to a great start. Georgia Fryer getting a good lift in the bank. 
as we said play to your strength Georgia Pryor her strength definitely was yesterday great work on the gymnastics movements legless rope climbs and ring muscle ups and if you're finishing fourth in a field like this you're doing well 225 for Tia Claire Toomey 195 for Jamie Simmons what a statement to make first lift the proficiency for weightlifting we don't even need to mention with Tia Claire Toomey Olympian in Rio Commonwealth Games gold medalist with 102 kilos to start wants a clean slate and going the right way about it and a great first attempt for Jamie Simmons as well coming off the back of a shoulder injury that front rack position and then finishing with the shoulder to overhead that's got to be tough for her something to be said for rehab doing all the right things gets you back to the competitive level first lifting window completes and back down the floor to Danielle Ford and Ellie Hutchins. Ellie Hutchins wasting no time, touch and go with those cleans. Power clean at 97, sorry, 90.7 kilos. She's moving fast through this complex, wasting no time. Oh, and it might have hurt her in the shoulder to overhead. Maybe an extra second could have helped compose herself before throwing it over her head. Danielle Ford just chipping away. Now Ellie Turner and Bailey Rogers. Bailey missing her first lift. Ellie 220. 99.8 kilos, as close as you're going to get to 100 kilos. Good finish in this event to set up the rest of her weekend. Bailey looking better already at the back. Bailey through the front slot. And now Bailey, Bailey Rogers it looks like she went down in weight. Got a good rep in. Ellie Turner jerk to come. Solid as a rock. Great patience in that split jerk, just waiting for the stability before moving her feet. Although the weights might not be as heavy as Kara and Tia, Ellie so strong in that position. Gemma Hope now and Maddie Sturt. Excited to see what Maddie Sturt is going to max out at. Looks like it's 205. Very respectable weight on the bar for Maddie Sturt back there, making easy work of the first three power cleans. Maddie Sturt has an outstanding jerk, so once she's past the squats, it's easy work for her to get it overhead. Gemma Hope, she's grinding her way through. Oh, and just missing that jerk. So that 220 avoiding Gemma Hoke on the shoulder to overhead position. 235 pounds. Kara Saunders. Having a look around to see what was on the other barbells and Kara choosing 235. She's done exactly what we thought would happen out here, which is play the game, stay ahead. Put the pressure on, the lift is ahead. Strong from Kara Saunders. She says, what do you got? Georgia Pryor. 
that's a great jerk. Georgia Pryor, 175, just under 80 kilos. Just an easy day at the office she for goes, Cara Saunders. She just goes, that's okay. She's got more. Now we all know that this woman here can grind out a barbell. Three, two, one. This is to equal Cara Saunders. As you mentioned, Pip, lots of game playing going on. An only loaded 235 after she saw Tia put 235 on. No rep. So didn't complete the stand-up of the rep of the squat clean, which will mean another rep. And you mentioned grinding it out. She's going to have to do it here. She has to do an extra squat clean. If anyone can do it, though, it's Tia Claire Toomey. We know she can squat, but is she going to have the strength to put it over her head at the end of this? Jamie Simmons successful at the back. And in true champion fashion, she does with an extra rep to boot. So we've just made the complex a little bit harder and still managed to get through it. Wow. <laughs> I don't know if you saw in the background, Cara Saunders just applauding what Tia just went through. Oh, credit where credit's due. That's unbelievable. Ellie Hutchins and Danielle Ford. Ellie still going through her power cleans. I am loving that. Saving the legs for the squat. Danielle Ford still looking strong. Great punch. Ellie Hutchins. U.S. Army, know your army for more information, visit goarmy.com slash CFG. The pink chucks have worked for Danielle Ford, just three great lifts for her. They're magic. Bailey Rogers now and Ellie Turner. Ellie needs to move today. Turner about to get started with Bailey Rogers and more on the competition floor. Let's head down to Kayla Banfield. Thanks, Jeremy. And I'm standing basically right in front of Tia and Kara, and I can see both of them looking up into the crowd, up onto the left-hand side. Tia, I believe, is looking up at Shane. I don't know who Kara's talking to. I assume her coach, but she's getting a lot of feedback on what bars to put, what weight, sorry, to put on the bar. So initially, for her second lift, she had 230. And then I saw her ask her coach, is this okay? I'm assuming she got back a no, because by the look of her face, she didn't want to put on 235. But gradually she put it on, and obviously luckily that she did, because she did make that weight. So, I mean, I, if I get to interview her after, I'll definitely chat to her about that. But it looks like she didn't even really have a say over what the second weight was on the bar. Um, but she's had quite a lot of back and forth with someone on the sidelines, and uh, they're definitely controlling the show. So who knows, could have had something to do with the fact that Tia did change the barbell first. Um, and I'm wondering if Tia might now slow down her change of her third barbell based on the fact that they can change it pretty much any time before their lift. So Kara's just having a conversation with her coach now, but I'm looking forward to chatting to both of those girls after, hopefully. Um, yeah, to see who's giving them influence from the sidelines. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks for your insight, Kayla. Kara, 245 loaded on the bar, but Maddie Sturt going for 215. Maddie Sturt. Wow. Amazing lifting for Maddie Sturt. Just so solid in the jerk. Oh, and unfortunately, Gemma Hope, this hasn't been the event that she would have hoped. Just missing those jerks. Kara Saunders. Georgia Pryor, second last minute of heat number three, and 245 will equal the record at the Syndicate Crown in Knoxville, Tennessee. Can Kara hang on? That is looking heavy. The bar bending. Kara straining. We know the squats will be okay, the jerk will be the tough one. Kara Saunders equaling the record worldwide and trying to recatch. 
watch it. What a fight. Oh, true competitor right there, Georgia Pryor. Tia Claire Toomey had loaded 250 on the bar to get ahead of Kara. She's now dropped it to 245 madly just before the lift. And in the last lift of event number three for the individual females, Tia and Jamie Simmons underway. After having to do an extra rep in the last attempt, we know what Tia can do with the bar when she's angry at it. And I think she's angry right now. Jamie Simmons looking really great at 215. Three easy cleans for Tia. One squat to go. It looks rough, but can she get it over her head? Tia Claire Toomey. to Aussie soil. I'm speechless. Are we going to see a clean sweep from her? I think if the trajectory is right, we are. The atmosphere in here at Pat Rafter Arena is off the charts. And we've just witnessed something amazing. But there is something about Tia Claire Tsumi and getting back here to Australia. And I don't know what has happened, but she's feeling the vibe from every spectator out here. Some great lifting from our female competitors. And down on the competition floor, two of our best with Kayla Banfield. Thanks, Jeremy. Now, Kara, I saw you having a sneaky conversation with someone on the sidelines. Who were you talking to and what happened? I was talking to Maddie and I'm just like, well, you have to, like, you know, tr make the decision for me so that I'm not responsible. I'm like, help. Um, and he's like, oh, yeah, you look good, like, trying to help me. But, um, yeah, ultimately, i got to make the call, right? <laughs> and, Tia, I saw you looking up there somewhere as well. Are you having chats to Shane telepathically throughout the event? Yeah, he's like my eyes above, just to make sure I'm actually counting everyone else's weights pretty good. <laughs> now, you girls are no stranger to barbell complexes. I want to hear what you thought about this particular complex this year. Yeah, it's different, you know. I think that that's the beauty of our sport. We get to try different things, and um, it just keeps it interesting. Is that the weight you were going for? No. <laughs> I just went for it. <laughs> the, the great thing about having a coach on the sidelines, Cara, what did you think of the complex? Yeah, it was good. Um, like Tia said, it's super interesting. I really appreciate when CrossFit kind of throws something a little bit different rather than just your standard, like, 1RMs. Like, you know, this kind of makes the athletes have to really think and test a few different other um, aspects to the lift. So, yeah, it brings a little bit more intensity, a bit more stress, a bit more risk. So, yeah, it's, it's super thrilling. I think it's pretty cool for, for the crowd to watch too. I agree. Very exciting, isn't it, guys? Thanks, ladies. Well done. Thank you, Kayla, and our road replay. And eyes were on Sia Claire Toomey, but we had to get there first with Daniel Ford and the pink chunks. The top heat of women, it did not disappoint. We knew that there was going to be a bit of game playing and a bit of a showdown going on between Kara Saunders and Tia Claire Toomey. But I'm still speechless about that second attempt where Tia did an extra clean in her complex. Uh, just amazing. Well, not to be completely overshadowed, Jamie Simmons, her comeback has been outstanding from that shoulder injury, traveling all the way out here from the UK. Cara not able to get that jerk done, a lot of strain. But Tia, outstanding. I love how Kara winked at Tia, like, over to you, your turn. And in Tia fashion, she true, did. True Tia fashion. And some wonderful lifting here on the arena floor. And coming up next, we are going to get into the same complex 
but the men are hitting the floor. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back here at the Torian Pro for 2022 very soon. Hello everybody, welcome back. Short break in between male and female individual events and we have seen some wonderful lifting here just after lunch on Saturday at Pat Rafter Arena for day two of the Torian Pro. And this event has not disappointed. Plenty of pink splashed around the arena. We'll get to that in a sec. The US Army Heat One starting list we have got some heavy hitters but keep your eyes on lane number nine jake standard from crossfit cq crossfit central queensland up near rockhampton because that guy can throw some weight cleaned up the clean and jerk ladder last year and he's at bottom right of screen just in front of that number seven and the splash of pink honoring Hannah Clark and her three kids that we lost tragically to domestic violence in 2020. And the US Army event number three, three attempts of three cleans, two front squats and one jerk. Cleans can be power clean, squat clean, split clean if you like, two front squats and the shoulder to overhead movement for the jerk. Shoulder press, push press, push jerk or split jerk. But knowing the guys on the floor, split jerk is going to be the go-to movement for the complex. Some great lifting from the ladies over the last couple of hours. And Tia Claire Toomey continuing her domination, not just CrossFit worldwide, but down here in Australia as well. And great to have her back here on Aussie soil once again. And the crowd has bought an absolute vibe with them and she is leaning on that as much as she can and i was absolutely just astounded at that last lift from tia considering she had to do an extra rep on round number two and if anyone watching has ever done a barbell complex like that with around six reps you know that an extra rep at that weight as well just amazing it's brutal getting things underway evan morris back of screen jack fleming at front Evan Morris, a very accomplished lifter. He is going to go big today as well. Probably something comparable to what Jake Standen will do as well. Jack Fleming, great start, something in the books.
and athletes will lift on the one minute mark we will Three, progress down the floor two, one, with each platform minute. to each lifting window will consist of five minutes with two athletes lifting at once score for these athletes will be the max amount lifted for a single lift zach thomas riley martin up next 315 on the bar and that's a great start 315 143 our, kilos a record is 345 at the syndicate crown yesterday 156 kilos this is a fairly good complex 315 he almost lost his back foot off the platform then that was very close jack clark another very good lifter from crossfit underway in melbourne darcy hancock at the back just stretching out that overhead position jack clark just to remind his brain what he needs to do once he gets it up overhead some heavy weights from jack clark as well and some really quick turnover from that front rack position back down to the ground wasting absolutely no time under tension wow wow the reminder helped because that was a beautiful jerk so fast overhead and he knows it he was nodding at the bar for approval our next lifters costa illick Bottom of screen, CrossFit Dignus and the Beard of Power. John Champion, both our WA counterparts coming across the country. Three, two, one, Costa, 295. Good champion backing that up with a 295 as well. Costa happy to just power clean this. grinding out those front squats trying to keep his elbows up in the front rack position interesting costa bouncing the bar off his shoulders three times before he went overhead is there something in that well in weightlifting you're not allowed to do that you're not allowed to literally bounce it off your shoulders you're allowed to re-grip but if it actually leaves your shoulders like that that would be a no lift that will be considered your jerk attempt yes that's it it was a no lift but John Champion in the back there, fantastic red pants. And one of the guys that cleared up the clean and jerk ladder last year. Jack Stannon, this guy can shift weight. Power clean to squat clean, good combo. And he does it so well. Great positioning under the bar. He's not folding through his midline. His front rack is rock solid. Chest is nice and upright, giving him a great setup for that jerk. Liam Ford as well, good lifting at the front. Did you notice Jake Stanton move forward of the platform to give himself more room to split backwards? Yes. Great awareness of where he is. And we will see that more with the men if they do take a longer stance with their split giving themselves more room for their feet to go long the first lifting window completes Three, two, one, left. we're on to our second attempt evan morris starting with a power clean second one's a power clean Third one's a power clean. Some really easy squatting from Evan Morris. He's so strong. Oh, oh <laughs> come on. Give us a challenge, come on. Heavy loads from Evan Morris. And Jack Fleming pumped with that one at 275, which converts to about 125 kilos. The 
We've got 330 pounds on the bar here, 150 kilos. That is a big second I attempt. I love to see that weight. Oh, and he's standing it up easy. 149.7 kilos, 330 pounds. So upright in his front squat. Impressive attempt. Wow. 150 kilos. Talk about throwing down the gauntlets. It's been thrown. Darcy Hancock and Jack Clark. Darcy happy to power clean still. Oh, Jack doing the same. 310. 140 and a bit kilos. Darcy Hancock successful in the back. Such a solid split, Jack. <laughs> and a cheeky one foot landing. For Jack, the owner of CrossFit Underway, his two teammates who are in the team with him, Lucas O'Brien and Benny Newland, the three of them lift together and lift often. And you can see why they are very successful. Costa Illich, John Champion. Costa Illich. Look, it's rough around the edges, but it's 3.05. People don't see that when they look at the scoreboard. It does not matter. He's getting the job done. Bouncing that bar again into the front rack. Oh, he just lost it on his dip for the jerk. His knees caved, didn't get enough hip drive. John Champion, one of our favorites from last year. And it's a good rep for John Champion. Jake Standen. Luke Ford. The end of lifting window number two. I'm excited to see what Riley Martin's going to put on for round three. Standen. 325. Oh, it's looking like 135. And Liam Ford at 320 strong. You're not kidding. pounds in the bank now will he go they probably don't know the record of 345 but Liam Ford as well CrossFit Geo getting 320 done so 320 sitting around 145 kilos and that's a lot of weight to be shifting under that much time Three ten on the bar, 140 kilos. Jack Fleming, Russell Blackburn, great clean at this heavy weight at 290. Evan Morris just doing a little bit of a pause clean at the back there. That's going to have taxed his front rack a little more than he would have liked. His overhead's magnificent. Oh, but he's missed it in front. Undercooked. Jack Fleming. And athletes pushing the boundaries.
complex complete by Evan Morris and Jack Fleming. 340. 154 kilos. That's a rough deadlift. He's going to try and wrap it out for six. And the first one's easy. Riley Martin, 340. Not really sure exactly what Zach Thomas is up to at the back there. This is going to be outstanding if he gets this overhead the final lift of the complex oh, and he almost does the splits trying to get that one and running out of time just, as well that would have been a quick stand up if he got it just but running out of power in that front rack by the end of it just not enough left in the tank for a solid dip but such a good attempt at the back from CrossFit CQ as well from Rockhampton, the same gym as Jake Standen. Trying to outlift each other. Jack Clark at the front, CrossFit underway. Darcy Hancock. Awesome. Oh. Jack could hear the roar of the crowd, might have spurred him on. <laughs> and the Flamingo. <laughs> Flamingo in pink on the competition floor here at Pat Rafter. Champion 320, Costa 305. John Champion using up about 20 seconds of his lifting time. And Costa Illick, a much better attempt that time. 305 pounds, 138 kilos. 145 kilo for John Champion, 320 pound. Can he finish off the third and final lift of the complex well? And the ooze from the crowd tell the story. Just not able to get the jerk done. The final complex lifts from Liam Ford. CrossFit Geo in front and Jake Stan and CrossFit CQ at the back. 345, the equal record set at the Syndicate Crown in Knoxville, Tennessee. Oh, and he's lost his grip. He'll be disappointed with that one. And down now to Liam Ford. Strong, but not strong enough. That's disappointing for Standen because he looked like he had no problem with the strength in the reps. He just, the bar slipped out of his hands. Great start to the lifting complex from our individual men hitting the floor for the first time here at the Torian Pro today. Moving day Saturday. And who are we going to see shift into the top five for a chance at one of those top three qualifying spots? Our road replay starting with Jack Fleming. Pete, one of our men with some big weights thrown around right off the bat. Riley Martin in that previous clip, just unreal. Evan Morris, we know he's good under a barbell, but Riley Martin. Jake Standen, disappointing third attempt for him, but just beautiful lifting. I love how clean and easy he makes it look. 
Jack Clark, Darcy Hancock. They did very well. They were lifting platforms three. And our noble standings after two events. Still two heats of the lifting to come. Jake Crouch and Bailey Martin. Equal first, Ricky Garrard with that event win in event two, propelling him up into third. Matt McLeod doing wonders for him, and Royce Dunn getting to fifth. A surprise packet, I suppose, was James Newbury, who hasn't been doing a lot of CrossFit training into sixth. And Peyton Brown, an event win, but not so good in event two, dropping him down to seventh position. Eight through ten, Michelle Millennia and Jackson three of our smaller statured athletes in the field but plenty of moving and shaking going on on day two of the Torian Pro and pink everywhere today and the crowd really getting behind small steps for Hannah Charity and our US Army Heat list. This is heat number two. And I tell you what, Mr. Jake Douglas, he has got one of the biggest clean and jerks you have ever seen. And I'm excited to see what he can do post injury and knowing full well that that's recovered. And he's ready to throw that barbell again. Kieran Power will also lift very heavy. Athletes coming on to the field of play. So the athletes get to load their own bars to the weight that they would like to start with for their three attempts. Now, US Army Barbell Complex individual event three. Three attempts for a max load of three cleans, two front squats, one jerk. The athletes can use any style of shoulder to overhead they wish, as well as clean. They can power clean or squat clean. We're going to be moving down the floor two athletes at a time and cycling through for the three attempts. Now, I'm interested to see what Jake Douglas is going to load this bar to for the first attempt. I'm scared to see what he's going to start with, not what he's going to finish with. 345 our record, and he is a big human. <laughs> he's not lacking in the upper body, that is for sure. First two athletes to get underway for our first lifting window will be Thor Heinel, another one of our West Australian athletes in CrossFit Artax, the lead owner and head coach Hayden Lavanda, one of our old school regional competitors, and Mitchell Case from CrossFit Uplift, Thor at the back, and Mitchell Case there. Showed very well event one number one yesterday, King Arthur. 285 pounds to start for Mitchell Case, 129 kilos. 275 for Thor Heinel. Pink knee sleeves, absolutely love it. To go with these pink socks. Nice fast elbows for Mitch. successful and happy. Now you mentioned before about lifting with glasses or competing with glasses, that sort of stuff. Does fogging up become an issue? It really does. It really, it's a problem. Those watching that wear glasses know the glasses problems when working out. 320, Jake Douglas. 
Kieran Power at the back, 270. Jake Douglas looking very strong. Oh, that squat. Oh, stop it, Jake Douglas. And he doesn't look like he has the shoulders of a guy with great overhead mobility, but man, does he look good with a bar overhead. Just great range. Jake Douglas. If you're starting with 320, where are you going next? Are you going 345, 350? Mitch Clark at the back. Ash Rusenthal front. Ash Rusenthal, Mount CrossFit, Mount Moganui, New Zealand. Mitch Clark from CrossFit Active in Sydney. 285, still a heavy complex to get things started. 29 kilos that ain't light for your first attempt Mitch Clark looked good at the back who's jerk a little bit narrow on his stance but still good oh great and save. one of the greatest saves you'll see the tightrope walking at the front of the platform Ash Rusendahl it is a no wrap if the athletes step off the platform they have to control it and stay on there Our next two athletes, Jake Souls, at the back. One of the OGs, Mason Doherty at the front. Mason looking very upright as well, very steady. Very conservative lift from Mason Doherty until the jerk. And that's why he picked that weight. Thought he might have gone a little bit too light looking at those cleans and squats. He knows better than I do. We really want to see minimal movement through the elbows in that front rack position. We're seeing those elbows drop each rep. That is really going to affect the fatigue levels on the shoulder to overhead on the last Three, rep. Two, one, Peter Ellis and Matt Gilpin. Peter in front, Matt at the back. Roughly around the same weight. Got that 120 kilo mark for both of them. Strong jerk, Peter Ellis. And Matty Gilpin, CrossFit speed here in Brisbane. Just nice and comfortable first lift. So the first lifting window complete here for heat number two. Rocking in here to Pat Raft Arena. It's Saturday Three, afternoon. Two, one, Wherever you're watching from on the broadcast, if it's on Facebook, Swift.com. Thanks for spending your time with us. As Thor Heinel and Mitchell Case get underway. Mitch, 295. 134 kilos. Great recovery jerk, considering how long he held that rack position. He looked more comfortable that time on his first three cleans and two squats than he did in his first attempt. Perhaps it's a bit of nerves gone after the first attempt. 340, Jake Douglas. Wow. Big jump, 320 to 340. Three, two, one. 100. 54 kilos for Jake Douglas. Don't forget Kieran Power at the back either.
still looking easy, Jake Douglas. He is like a forklift in that front rack. Jerk. Maybe just didn't take enough time before it to compose himself. 131 kilos, Kieran Power. Ooh. The jerk nailing him to the wall as well. And we heard it from Cara Saunders in her interview after the top women. This complex really does make the athletes think about risk versus reward. Ash at the front, at the back, 295 versus 285. Mitch looking strong in his squat at the back in the black shirt. Ash, bit of a regrip. Easy on the front squats. A lot better than his last jerk. And Mitch Clark threw me off a little bit. He must be a left footer because he put his other foot forward and it didn't look right. But he could have a favoured foot. Depends which one you put front or back. There's no such thing as a goofy foot <laughs> in the jerk. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> Mason Doherty underway quickly. Failed first jerk for him. Made easy work of those cleans. The squat, no problem at all. Jake Sold's very upright in his squat in the back as well, in the black shirt. Better, Mason Doherty. He's got under that barbell a lot better than he did in his last attempt. Jake Sold's running out of seconds. Four must be shredded after that. Oh, he's judged through him a bone then. It was a nice quick hand to say good rep. The last lift in the second rotation. Peter Ellis underway quickly with a couple of power cleans. Matt Gilpin at the back. Matty Gilpin, 295. <laughs> 234 kilos. And Pete 75. Ellis, great split. Pete Ellis. Matty Gilpin, successful as well. That's a great lift from Matty. <laughs> I won't repeat that. But as you say, Pip, the second lift is the money lift. Now you've got those two in the bank. Now we're going to have a bit of play time. That's right. But as we can see on these athletes' faces, this is a taxing complex. It taxes your grip hard on the shoulders. It's hard on the lungs. Nervous system as well, Pip. And our guaranteed rate storyline of the day that it is not complex at all. All you've got to do is get six movements done at the heaviest load you can. Some movements proving tougher than others. Mitchell Case and Thor Heinel. Thor missing the lift at the back, 285. Mitchell Case now at 310. And for the majority of the athletes now, they can definitely squat it. They just can't put it over their head. Three, two, one, lift. Jack Douglas repeating the previous lift. Kieran Power. Caught those cleans a little 
looking shallower than he did on the last attempt. Now he's spotting it. Regripping every single time. Fatigue in the front racks really setting in. Proving how hard that 345 record is. Jake Douglas, can he hit a 340? Kieran Powell successful at the back. Jake Douglas collapsing under the load. So he'll finish with a 320. He loves it anyway. It was a good thing he started so heavy. That's a still a respectable weight, 320. 145 kilos. Yes, it is respectable. Mitch Clark and Ash Usendahl. Mitch, very good in his squatting and cleaning position. Very upright. Expect nothing less from the boys from CrossFit Active in Sydney. Mitch, great lift, 300, done. Ash Rusendahl at the front now, 305. Trying to back rack it. Let's not back rack that weight, he's good to go though. Lots of F-bombs getting thrown around the competition floor. It's a pretty good indication that this complex is ruthless. And difficult to maintain heavy load for that amount of time. Jake Souls, 280. Mason Doherty underway already. At 280 as well. Jake Souls, another of those athletes from CrossFit Wollongong and just getting spat out of one of those squat cleans. So his complex is over, as is Mason Doherty's. And if they're not pushing the boundaries, you don't know where your limits are. That's right, that's what they're here to do. Push their limits. It's what they train for. Ellis at the front, Gilpin at the back, their final lift, the final minutes of heat number two. Three, two, one, yes. Just looked over at Jake Douglas and the amount of sweat pouring out of his shirt. It has been taxing. Pete Ellis, great squat position. Same with Matty Gilpin. 305 for Gilpin and he's out. The regrip in that final platform and got Jake standing in the previous seat. It's jumped up and bitten Matt Gilpin. It's down to Pete Ellis now. 285 pounds. No problems at all. 129 kilos and a great way to finish this heat off. And a massive injection of adrenaline straight into Pete Ellis's bloodstream just then. He's ecstatic with that lift. And the curse of platform nine continues on the floor. Both athletes. You've just put it out there into I the have. universe, rookie. <laughs> I have. And. Both Jake standing in the previous heat. And just then, the rogue replay proved that athletes could lift through the squat clean, but not through the jerk. Matty Gilburn having no trouble overhead. Jake Douglas starting with that 320, and it's lucky he did because his second two attempts is losing it on the shoulder to overhead at 340. Matty Gilpin, some great feats of strength shown in this heat. Big Jake Douglas. Oh, those, I, I'm scared for the ankles around this arena at the moment. Ankles and elbows. Mitch Clark 
lifted very well, very consistent, three from three, right within his realm. And our second heat done. Our third heat to follow very soon. Are we going to see the same amount of game playing we saw in the top women's heat with this top men's heat? I have no doubts, and I have no doubts that that 345 is under pressure. Likes of number six, Royce Dunn, the US Army heat three starting list. Baden Brown, another one to watch. Ricky Garrard, we know he's back. We know he's been weightlifting a lot. And also Bailey Martin, equal at the moment at the top of the leaderboard with Jake Crouch. But I am excited to see what is going to happen and the actual game playing that you mentioned that's going to go on in the next 15 minutes. Crowd a little bit more somber than they were this time yesterday. I was screaming from the rafters. I'm sure they're gonna be doing that once we get to event number four, which is gonna be something special here on the Torium Pro floor. As our top 10 athletes after day one of competition enter the floor. US Army Barbell Complex Individual Event 3. Three attempts for a max load of three cleans, two front squats, one jerk. The athletes can do whatever style of shouldered overhead they like. We're going to move down the floor, two athletes at a time. They get one minute to lift. They elect the weights they want on those three attempts. And as we saw with the women, they can go down. And they can change at the last minute. AKA, it's here Claire Toomey when Kara Saunders missed her lift. All our key players are at the front line. They'll easily be able to see what each other are doing. Joel Malinia. We saw him for the first time here last year on the competition floor. Impressed us massively. And our trifecta recipe for success in event three. Get a lift in the bank. Really important to get one in so you don't leave yourself with a donut on the leaderboard. One movement at a time. You can't get ahead of yourself. You have six reps in this complex. Baden Brown, the man with it all to do today. Event win in event one, but not going so well in event two. Everything on the line on moving day, day two. These guys are going to try and play to their strengths, but they're also going to try and play the game with each other. First two athletes, both from CrossFit Wollongong, home of our breakout star last year, Luke De Jong, who's not competing this year. John Linear at the front and Curtis Jackson at the back. Two of our smaller framed athletes as well. John Millennia making easy work of this bar, getting that easy lift in the bank. Fifty-five pounds. That's a hundred and sixteen kilos. Next up, though, the King of the North, two ninety-five on the bar. That's quite respectable for a first lift from Baden Brown, three-time CrossFit Games qualifier. 
Reese Michelle at the back. <laughs> Quick power play from Beto. And same, same goes. Reese Michelle. seem to be getting the lifts done a lot quicker they're not resting too long just get it done minimize the fatigue time under tension that sort of stuff yes Which, the longer you spend in the front rack the worse it's going to be on that last rep getting it shoulder to overhead big Royce proudly wearing his CrossFit Games shirt. James Newby's cut half of his shirt off. Royce with a 315. James with a 265. Royce looking really good. so fast and impressive on the muscle ups yesterday as well McLeod and Gerard Ricky conservative at 300 Three, two, it looks like McLeod's got 265 on the bar Great range of movement for Matt McLeod either. Ricky looking strong. That's what noted right along. Something in the bank first. Then we'll have a play. Great lead for Matt McLeod. Great lead for Ricky Garrard. We've seen a change in Ricky Garrard from events one to event two. He mentioned in his interview the anxiety levels of coming back on the floor. And how debilitating that was for him. Couldn't eat, couldn't do anything. But once he got that out of his system, he was impressive in event two. I was going to say the young and the old, but they're both still young. Bailey Martin and Jay Crouch. Jay Crouch wants some love from this partner of the crowd. 15 start Bailey Martin. I knew he was going to go big, but not this big eel, this early. He's going to try and match Royce Dunn. Oh, and his front rack just catching it way too low. 295 is good for Jay Crouch. But Bailey Martin starting a little bit heavy. Bit off a little bit too much that time, Bailey Martin, but he'll probably stay at that weight for lift two. Got time for another crack. It's a better front rack this time. He's showing some real determination to have a second attempt. Three, two, one. Bailey not aware of the rule that once you fail an attempt, that's all she wrote. Head judge coming over to let Bailey know just that as underway with lifting sequence number two, Curtis Jackson and Joel Molinia. Seems like Wollongong exploded after regionals and these great athletes coming out of that region. Both steady increments in weight but their technique didn't change. Baden-Brown's got 315 on the bar. 143 kilos. Three, two, got an easy one out in the first attempt. 
Now, this is the money. If you can get this one in, then it's playtime. A quick work of the cleans. No messing around. Michelle getting it done as well. That little Boston Brown sitting behind us. Smashing the glass here. US Army, know your army. For more information, visit goarmy.com. CFG. Beto just looked like he rushed that jerk then. Just needed a couple more seconds to compose himself. Sometimes if you don't get a breath in before the jerk, can't get enough power. Royce done. 335. Wow. These are looking really easy and that 345 under threat. James Newbury and his power crop top in the back. It's good for James. If he actually stepped off the platform then or he got caught at the side of the platform. He lost his footing nonetheless. But James Newbury is happy with that second attempt. He looked really surprised that he actually got that lift. 285 for James Newbury. 129 kilos. Now Baden Brown and Royce Dunn don't look like their plan has gone the way they would have liked it to. Garrard, 315. What can he do with this bar? Very quick transition from rack back down. To squat clean repetition. Focus, determination. Garrard. that dip sideways as he was coming up and down and I was going to be surprised if he actually caught that and a miss for Matt McLeod as well in the background at 280 it looks like the second attempt for this men's top heat getting the better of them I told you the curse of platform nine continued because it bit Bailey Martin on round one oh, if you put it out there Bailey Martin, redemption now for him, 295. Jay Crouch, 315. So that weight that's proved difficult. The three athletes so far, can Jay Crouch nail it? Martin looking better at the back. Crouch, deep on the dip and drive, but got it nonetheless, and he loves it. Martin, way better. Great comeback from Baden Martin. And that's hard to do, all that pressure of missing your first attempt. You do not want to be left trying to get a number on the board on your third attempt. Nothing screams pressure like only having one left. Second lifting window complete, millennia. I've seen some good young lifters in my time. This guy looks good. Curtis Jackson underway at the back early. Joel Millenia, so fast with his elbows under the bar. Just catching a little bit on his toes. Can he recover though? We know he has a great overhead position. Two such good mates. And great for them to lift together. An event number three. Speaking of redemption, Baden Brown, same weight. 
has to rectify the jerk mistake. Still happy to power clean. If he gets this, it puts him at level pegging with Jay Crouch. Patience in the jerk is all Baden Brown needs. A little bit of self-talk. Way better. Baden Brown. So much better. Michelle. 295, yes. And that little bit of patience and chat to himself. That rack position. Once he got that, he knew that was going only one way. Regaining composure makes all the difference. Done. Has he stayed 335? Yes, he has. Newbury, what has he jumped to? Looks like it's a 295 from Newbury. We know. Royce Dunn is good for these first five reps. Can he get his footwork right under this jerk? Newbury 290. Can he get it? Done. Done. Oh, and it looks like his back foot has slipped out from underneath him. Now, Pip, crucial, because now Jay Crouch has an opportunity to jump over the top of Royce Dunn's previous 3.15 from round one. That's going to be disappointing. Jay Dunn. Crouch, like a cage tiger, pacing up and down, waiting. Ricky Garrard needs to nail this as well. Looks like he's gone to 3.20, which will put him ahead of Royce Dunn as well. Cloud at the back. Ricky's looking better on his third attempt. Much more solid front rack. McLeod looks absolutely drained. That sideways shift on that jerk again. And 320 as well for Jay Crouch. And I just saw Ricky and Jay's eyes meet. Gerard, both 320. Jake Douglas will be taking the W on that one. Baden Brown as well at 315. Royce Dunn on 315. But we did not expect Jay Crouch to come out on top of that heat. Crazy stuff happening here at the Torian Pro Day 2. Event number three for the individual males is now complete and moving day definitely happening. And there's going to be some moving and shaking on this leaderboard at the end of today and down on the competition floor.
couple of usual suspects with Kayla Banfield. Oh, <laughs> Ricky, you mentioned that the nerves were intense yesterday and you're looking amazing today. How are you feeling? Still very nervous, but I'm in it now and I'm um, in the groove and these are the feelings I've been missing and yeah, I'm just loving it out here. How did you strategize those three lifts? Uh, didn't quite go to plan. I wanted to hit 315 and then 325. Devo on the 315, but don't fuck it, the crowd's here. Go for the Hail Mary, chuck an extra five pounds on and have a crack. <laughs> Good job. Now, Jay, you've come in at the top. How did you strategize those three lifts and how did that event go for you? Yeah, honestly, it was just the way I warmed up and then we decided my lifts from there. Um, obviously, yeah, you got to listen to the body. If you just got numbers in your head and you come out here, it's not always going to go to plan. So, um, yeah, it was crazy. And uh, in front of the crowd, you know, it's effortless. So. It's unreal. So thanks, guys. It's mad. The more noise you make, the better we perform. So let's go. Last question. Speaking of warm up, how do you warm up leading to a lift, especially when you've got time outside, you know, waiting to get onto the stage? How do you warm up in anticipation? Yeah, and that's the hardest part, like the wait in between from the warm up to come out here. So, yeah, you know, like for a complex like this, it's like you don't do exactly that. You might just do like a clean and jerk, a, clean, a power clean, squat clean jerk. So, nah. <laughs> Save it for the floor, hey? Great job, guys. Well done. See you out here later. Thanks. See you, Jake. Thank you, Kayla. And our road replay. And some big lifts, but also some big misses. Well, that heat did not play out how we initially thought it would. Royce Dunn didn't quite hit what he would have liked. James Newbury with some respectable weight thrown overhead, but it was this man, Jake Crouch, that really surprised us in this heat. Baden Brown came back on his third attempt. But Big Royce, he was losing his footing on the 335. So many upsets on a big complex like this. But some great composure from Jay Crouch and Ricky Garrard. Now he looks different than he did yesterday being peeled off the floor. He's come out here looking much more energized and ready to go. Ricky Garrard on the charge. And event number three concluded now here at the Torian Pro. I'll tell you what, if you are watching this broadcast, wherever you're watching it, don't go anywhere. Event number four is not going to disappoint. Don't stop me now. That event coming to us very soon. We'll be back here at the Torian Pro for 2022 in just a few moments. What does it take? How do I train? What do I eat? How much do I sleep? How do I react? What if this happens? What if that happens? It all adds up. It's not about what I do. It's about what I don't do. No excuses. No shortcuts. No gimmicks. No tomorrows. No bull. helping our members not only with their fitness one hour of the day, but we want them to improve 24 hours a day, every day of the year. We're helping with nutrition, we're helping with their sleep, their recovery. I take Thorn every day as a multivitamin, a pre-workout, and then before I go to bed. 
After using Thorn products, I feel a lot more powerful in my workouts, and then I can also focus better not only in the gym, but outside of the gym as well. strong fade out. 
always need a fade out. Can't have the abrupt change. All right, crew, when you're ready to rock, we'll bring it in over here. We'll brief it up. Are affiliate owners any better than members at following directions for a workout? You just can't. You have to treat them like, like elementary school kids, and they'll fall right in line. You give them too much, you're, you get eaten alive. So we are at Gorilla Fitness, a CrossFit Paramus here in New Jersey, and it's one of our affiliate gatherings. We've invited all the affiliate owners to come and really just have an opportunity, one, to get together. It's been a long time since we've been able to, you know, all get together, you know, even in a smaller fashion. Three, two, one, go! One of the big pieces of feedback we've heard over the past, you know, couple years, and we're trying to implement specifically with the reps and our regional managers and as to how do we communicate, but at different levels. Welcome, thank y'all so much for coming. Um, those who have not formally met me, uh, my name is David Osario. Uh, I'm your field rep for New York, New Jersey, also own CrossFit South Brooklyn. So the field leaders are essentially liaisons kind of between CrossFit home office and the affiliates. Um, so we, were, we have a variety of, of uh, services that we offer. By putting some trusted affiliate owners in particular areas around the U.S., it gave um, that sense of like safety for communication and a line to home office right there, you know, boots on the ground style. I was just talking with someone about how it's good to see that CrossFit is really looking to the affiliates. It helps give us that um, foundation and feedback for everybody to kind of take that information and, and build their own gym in their own way, but also as a broader community of CrossFit. It's kind of mentoring without that title like people are really giving you information telling you it worked for them and i'm excited to be here because just speaking to them i have a lot of ideas that i'm going to leave here today with that i didn't have when i walked in the door and that's really what it's about cap round tables the playbook all these different initiatives which we always kind of wish we had are finally coming to fruition but just knowing that somebody is there thinking about them that someone has you know their concern in mind and that they're, they're seeing the change that are happening um, is, is really heartening. I've been in the game for 13 years, uh, hosted level ones way back in the day, hosted sectionals in 20, 2010, and it's been a long time since we've done something like this. And I think that CrossFit itself right now is on the precipice of great things once again. I think the last time I saw this many owners is when back when we had the Northeast Regionals in Albany where there was thousands of people and quite a few affiliate owners there so it's pretty neat to see so many owners in one place again. After being here today I honestly think there's nothing more powerful than being surrounded with people that are doing the same that have the same goals as you. I mean we, we look at how we work out in our community and we put all these people in the same space that want, have a common goal and so it just makes sense that in business we do the same thing. Is this right for our affiliates? If the answer is yes, then we'll do it. If the answer is no, then we'll change course. And, and all the way through leadership, that is, a, that is a red thread, and that's something that is, I'm really proud of, and that's something that is only gonna get stronger, and it, it will only benefit our affiliates. We want every affiliate owner to know and to feel that they are part of this family, that we are a family, you know, just like their membership base is their family and their community, and it's, it's what they truly care about, you know, the health of that community. We're never going to stop working hard to help them thrive and help their members thrive, and um, I mean, that's what we're here for.
Welcome back to Pat Rafter Arena, day two of the Torian Pro 2022. The first live semi-final event for the Noble CrossFit Games season. We're going to find out very shortly who are our three qualifiers heading over to Madison, Wisconsin for the CrossFit Games and representing the Australia, New Zealand CrossFit region. My name's Jeremy Austin. Alongside me, two-time games competitor and Australian Commonwealth Games representative Pitt Malone on the competition floor. Joining us later on will be Kayla Banfield. Three events down for the individuals. One to come and Pip, this one's going to be a cracker. We have a special event coming up. And for those that have been around the Torium Pro before, this format of event that's coming up is not new to this event, but it is very unique and it is rough on the athletes. Now we spoke about risk versus reward in the lifting complex. This is massive risk if you get it wrong. If you get it right, you are going to be rewarded handsomely. And the move it or lose it concept has been around with the Torian Pro since inception. And aptly named, don't stop me now. And we are gonna have four two minute windows for some work to get completed. And this is it, don't stop me now, individual event number four. In two minutes, the athletes will compete complete 15 chest to bar pull-ups, 15 or 10 echo bike cows and max snatches in the remaining time. Then they will rest two minutes, rinse and repeat until 60 snatches are completed. Now, they have a 14 minute time cap, but if they do 60 snatches in the first two minutes, they're done. 60 snatches in two minutes might be a little bit out of reach. It's two rounds of this is achievable if you are fast enough and risk enough. Put it all on the line. Majority of athletes on the floor will get it done in three. Some slow athletes, if they're struggling with the loading, will do it in four. But the carrot dangled for two rounds is there if you want to go and get it. The barbell is 75 pounds for the women. It's not a heavy barbell, but they do have 15 chest to bar pull ups to start. So that grip. Woo. Spicy. The rogue lane assignments for heat number one Gary Freestone, Julia Hannaford, Adrian Geary, Jolene Neville, Emily Atten, and Jade Williams. And it'll come down to who can get onto the barbell the quickest with the least amount of fatigue. Now, a two-minute resting window, Pip, your nervous system is pretty much completely recovered by that stage, giving you false hope that you can do the same thing again. At this level of fitness, you would think that two minutes is going to be plenty of time to rinse, repeat, and be able to finish those snatches off. But... As we've seen with this format of event in previous years, it packs a punch and it packs it quickly. You thought event one was bad. Wait for this one. Underway for heat number one of event four. Don't stop me now. Day two of the Torian Pro. As Pip mentioned, 15 chest to bar pull ups, 10 echo by calories. And as many snatches as you can get done, and we are going to have a fairly good idea of how many snatches are going to get done in this first two minute window. And all of the athletes did their 15 chest to bar pull ups unbroken, no problem. Harry Freestone in lane two. Hammering down, as is Jade Williams. 
trying to get themselves as much time as possible on that bar. Time equals reps. Emily Atten, the first to move, and she's got a greater range of movement than the other ladies, and she wants to get on quick. Now, strategy on the snatches. Do you have a set number like Emily Atten's doing and drop it, or do you just hold on for dear life like Jolene Neville in the middle of screen? They are moving their bar down the floor onto those numbers. You can see Emily Atten's over the 20. Are these ladies getting this work done, pull-ups, and the echo by Kalu's in about 40 seconds. So they have got a long time under tension with this barbell, however light it is. It's going to really drain those forearms. <laughs> And time up for our first two-minute segment. And it looks like the three athletes in the middle of the floor have gotten about half of their snatches done, about 30 reps, unofficially, of course. Can they back it up? Remembering once they do finish the 60, they're going to have to run down the floor to the finish line, Julia Hatterford. I don't know how she's got the energy to smile after that. But a two minute break. These 60 snatches are giving me Randy vibes. Randy, the CrossFit benchmark, 75 snatches for time. I'd say that any athlete with a fast up two minute randy time they're going to do very well on this event emily atten energy to dance you know you're fully recovered when you either start dancing or you start talking athletes about 40 seconds before we kick off segment two and are we going to see anybody get after it and try and get it finished in two segments. You fall one rep short, you've got to go back to segment three and go through the pull-ups and echo by calories for one rep. You really can't hold back in an event like this. You have to absolutely go for broke. Jolie Neville still breathing fairly heavy. the camera underway segment number two of don't stop me now this is heat number one the fourth and final event for the individuals day two of the Torian pro and no doubt athletes will be going through their 15 chest of bar pull-ups unbroken once again jade williams over to the far right of screen very fast off the chest of bar pull-ups 30 seconds down already. Carrie Freestone doing the same thing she did in round one and really ripped in with the echo bike. Only 10 calories. I tell you, if Samantha Briggs was doing this event, she would be probably doing it in one and a half rounds. One minute remaining now as Emily Atten comes to the bar. Has she got enough time? Two seconds of rep will do it and she'll get over the line. Just pausing a little bit at the hip, which is causing her to slow down a little. She is using those biceps a bit more on the snatches with that pause at the thigh. That is gonna hurt her grip. Adrian Geary, our local girl from Brisbane. Athletes slowing down a little bit on segment number two. J 
Jade Williams trying her hardest to get as many reps out, knowing she's got a two-minute rest period coming up. And the rest period is now here. It looks like the race is going to be on to get this finished in the, the third round. They have a 14-minute time cap. <laughs> well within it. Adrian Geary hasn't moved yet. I know she's got two minutes, but that two-minute segment hurts. It's very deceiving because of how quick it is. But if anybody has done that many snatches before, they know how hard it is on your grip and your shoulders. Let alone your lungs and your nervous system, which has just gone, what have you done? Julie Hannaford doesn't look too phased by proceedings. She's looking okay. She looks like she's done about 40. Fifty seconds remaining on our second two-minute rest period. I'll tell you what, once we get through these heats, are we going to see one of the top competitors get through in two segments? If you're going to dangle a carrot for a clean sweep, is Tia going to be able to come through and wipe the floor with it? I think this event has Kara Saunders' name written Hassan, all over it. it. What? Little over 10 seconds remaining before we kick off. Segment number three, you're going to see most of the girls, if not all, finish in this segment. Underway. Can they push through that fatigue and hold on to get this event finished this round? Or are they going to cop another two minutes rest? Freestone first onto the bike, Emily Atten there as well. Jolene Neville jumping on. Adrian Geary who was hurting a little bit on that segment to the last to the Echo bike. She might be looking down the barrel of four segments. Breaking up those chest to bar pull ups is going to be crucial. Keeping them unbroken, super important so that you have enough time for the snatches. And also not cruising on the echo bike. You have to get it done as quick as you can. Give yourself enough time. 10 calories is not many, but if you're cruising, it can take a little while. All eyes on the echo bikes. On who can get off first. It's going to be Hannaford off first, but she's walking to the bar, as is Freestone in lane one. Atten running to the bar. She wants to get done. I'm not sure she's going to have time. Jade Williams has got to be close to finishing. Atten moving forward, last 20. Hannaford repping very well, bar close to the body. Hannaford really using those hips to get the bar over her head, saving her grip and shoulders. Coming close to time cap. And workout segment number three. Hannaford looks like she is closest to getting this done. And now <laughs> the hurts. Hannaford's just walked off. Everyone else looks like they've been run over by a truck. Now that time has been chewed up way quicker than I thought it would. 14 minute time cap. They get two minutes rest now. Freestone has been sending this Echo bike pretty hard. But Hannibal doing the right thing, getting back to the start position and then starting her recovery rather than dragging herself off the floor and taking her time getting back. 
Neville buckled over in lane number five in the pink and white. Emily Atten with sweat dripping off her nose. Ladies are working hard. If they want to finish this in the time cap, they're going to have to do those chest bar pull-ups unbroken and go hard on the bike. And that is why this format of event is so punishing because you, you have to go hard to be rewarded. Last 30 seconds of our third rest period. We will come into our fourth and final work period and by the looks of things most if not all are going to be completed with time to spare keep in mind they've got to move quick to get those reps done the fourth and final segments don't stop me now, underway. Heat number one. This is the final heat for these girls today. Two more events for them tomorrow. And Jolene Neville out of the gates hot. She wants to get this cleared away as soon as possible. Neville just then is taking off her grips of her hands and just using her legs. Although there's not a lot of leg work in here, there's still a lot of strain once you do get that barbell cycling. At the first five seconds of the bike, with just legs only. And will she be the first to get off Jolene Neville? Freestone pushing hard. It's going to be Hannaford once again. 45 seconds remain. She only has a few reps left to get finished. Atten moving to the bar just before Freestone, just before Geary. Neville getting to the bar and now Williams. The pace has picked up. We are under 30 seconds. Hannaford, less than five. She's going to be the first athlete finished. Hannaford. The strategy paying off. Julia Hannaford, the only athlete to get finished. And Jolene Neville sprawled out on the floor, but what a performance. Julia Hannaford. Our official time of 13.51. Emily Atten started strong. Perfect example of how south this event can go and how quickly it can go south. Isn't there a phrase? It's called pear-shaped. <laughs> and these ladies except for Julia Hannaford, haven't moved, and they are hurting. Our rogue replay will show the start when the girls were fresh. Starting hot out of the gate, all unbroken on the Chester Bar pull-ups, looking fresh on their Echo bike, but just proves a bit of strategy comes in. A big set on those snatches. Might just smash your group a bit too much that second round that Julia Hannaford she was consistent throughout from her first round just chipped away at those snatches getting in under the time cap great performance from her the only athlete to finish in this heat Absolutely. If that's the way things are starting, I cannot wait to see what's coming. Our no-ball overall standings for the women after three events. 
Sophia Klansumi, 1-1-1, one, one, and one, giving her 300 points. Tara Saunders, 276. Jamie Simmons, equal now with Maddie Sturt after Maddie Sturt put a fair bit of weight on that barbell in event three. Ellie Turner making the move up, and our top six coming in are still our top six now. Can't wait to see what's going to happen in a couple of heats time. Georgia Pryor minimizing the damage on the lifting and staying inside the top 10, but Olivia Kelly moving inside the top 10. No surprise there with our top six. Some moving and shaking, but we still have a few events to go. And is Matty Sturt possibility going back to the games once again? Never count out Matty Sturt. <laughs> Never. We have seen her come from pretty much dead last to a ticket to the games. First time was 32nd place on day one and clawed her way back to make it to the games for the first time. Heat number two, ladies, hitting the floor. Katie Brock, a local girl from CrossFit Newstead, front and centre. Now rogue Elena Simons for heat two. And a number of athletes that could really do probably three segments in this, but after seeing what I've seen, it's going to be tough to get done. Excited to see what youngster Grace Walton can do in this, considering it is just work. The last heat really showed us that if you've got a plan, you need to stick to it. Rogue, don't stop me now. Individual event four in two minutes. 15 chest bar pull-ups, 10 echo bike cows, and then max snatches at 75 pounds. They get two minutes rest to rinse and repeat until the 60 snatches are completed. They have 14 minutes to complete the work. We only had one athlete in the last heat finish in just under 14 minutes. Four work periods, three rest periods. And if you want to hammer it down and get it done quicker, it's going to hurt that little bit more. You really need to earn your rest in this event. Earn it by getting those snatches done but also a very good way to train some good interval stuff. There's our youngster, Grace Walton, lane number five. Don't stop me now, heat number two for the individual females underway. And the level of elite athlete that has come into the Tour and Pro, 15 chest bar pull-ups each round should not be a problem. Castell Pritchard first onto the bike and she is going ham. Lane number seven in the white and the pink. And she is getting after these 10 cows as quick as she can. She's another athlete, very tall stature as well. At five foot eight. Wow, she is moving that bike. Giving herself plenty of time to get as many reps as she can get out of the snatches. It's Del Pritchard. Legion athlete from Perth, Western Australia. She is way out in front, Lucy Clark. She is coming second, Grace Walton now. And Katie Brock, fourth to the bar. Ticked over for uh, the one minute mark. Which gives us about 50 seconds now. The athletes are going to move down the floor every 10 reps. Number of reps written on the floor. still our leader. She has been cycling and cycling well. Bridgen 
moving on. And not really wanting to get started. And possibly 32. We'll have to wait and see what happens. The she had out. a really good crack at that first round. But as we just saw from her last couple of reps, that fatigue really set in. Her barbell cycling time really slowed down. But they get two minutes now to rest and try and replicate what they just did in the first round. Talia Jordan, not real happy with proceedings, but a number of athletes sitting on their right up as a way to try and recover, calm that heart rate down as quickly as possible. Consistency is key in this event. Try and keep that speed going into the next round. Probably the fastest two minutes of their lives and the slowest two minutes while they're doing work. Katie Brock. Looks like she's got about 20 something repetitions, but still Bridget. She went after it and went after it hard. on the cycle as well just not picking up on the pull-ups or the echo bike and what are we going to see from Castell Pridgen this time can she go close Pridgen absolutely roaring in lane number seven Looks like she's going to be off first once again. And with Lucy Clark, straight onto the bike. And it's the same speed she had in round one. She's on a mission to get this finished. She loves the, the air bike. She's got a college volleyball background and loves cycling a barbell. Best friends with one of our competitors on the competition floor, Georgia Otto as well. Bridgen, a little bit slower on the bike this time, but she could well be the first athlete off once again. It is Lucy Clark just ahead. Bridgen, seconds behind. Walton. Can Bridgen put another big dent? Clark having to break it up with only 45 seconds left. Lucy Clark going to work on this second round. Short breaks. You do not want to be stepping away from that bar. Stay on top of it. You get two minutes rest after it's done. So no time for resting during the round. Bridgen battling with Clark down the floor. Lane seven and eight is where it's at right now. Walton seems to be in third. Brock finishing fast. But Bridgen now breaking up the reps. And our second work segment complete. That last rep from Castell Bridgen won't count after the bell. Castell Bridgen doing the right thing and going straight back down to the start position. The second round looking like the most brutal round for these athletes. Castell Bridgen just went over to her bike and adjusted the pedals so she knows when she gets there, she can plant that left foot down nice and hard to get that bike going. That's the sort of strategy you need in an event like this where you can make up seconds. Lucy Clark, Talia, 
has done well thus far today lifted very well this morning we are halfway through the time cap two work segments and one rest segment to go and the fatigue has just started to kick in for these athletes Receiving one as an athlete, because you look at the weight, you look at the reps, you go, yeah, 15 chest bar pull-ups is nothing for this level of athlete. 10 cows on the echo bike, nothing. 75 pounds, not too bad. Put it all together in a two-minute round. Wrap it all up in a bow, it make is, it sound nice. It is painful. Estelle Pritchett, can she finish in three? We are about to find out in the next two minutes. Talia Jordan Lane two, purple and black, deliberately breaking up the sets and coming off. Give herself some more grip strength at the back end. Beck Lenitha, first to move this time in lane three. Lucy Clark not too far behind, and now Castell Pridgen. Beck Glenister didn't come out too hot in the first segment. But segment three, she was first to jump. Like we saw in the previous heat, the athlete that is hot out of the gate in the first round isn't necessarily going to be the one to finish first. Consistency with your speed is key. Beck Lannister, first on, first off. Now to work, Lucy Clark coming lane eight. Katie Brock in one. Chloe Gregory, Castell Bridget. Has she come out of the gates too hot? Rachel Tottenham Pomoina coming through in the black in lane number five. Pardon me, lane four. 30 seconds remaining. Can one of our athletes get finished in three? Lucy Clark, can she get there? Last 10 for Chloe Gregory. Time ticking, 10 seconds. Can anyone get there? No, they can't. And you've got to wonder how close some of them were. Lucy Clark looked to be the closest. 58. Ouch. We've got to do it all again for two more reps. Talia Jordan on screen. Single mum and coaches at Hillside CrossFit. <laughs> Beck Lannister doing what she needed to do round three. It just wasn't enough. And Bridgen, did she bite off too much too early? Now you've got two reps left, rookie. Do you go absolutely guns blazing and get your 15, 10, and 2 done as quick as you can? Absolutely, without a doubt. Correct you answer. Need to, you need to get over that finish line as fast as you can because a number of athletes are going to be in exactly the same position as you. So you need to send this. You know it's not going to be two minutes of work. It's going to be about a minute 10, a minute 20. But you need to send this as hard as you can. Two reps. You know you can do two reps in about five seconds. So you need to get on that bike and push the limit. 
10 seconds remaining. Chloe Gregory moved up in segment number three. Our final two minutes of work underway for heat number two. We thought two rounds was doable. Three rounds is proving difficult. Beck Lannister, can she do the same thing? Yes, she can. Now, she wants to go. She might be one or two reps behind the other girls, and she is leaving nothing to chance. Lucy Clark. That is a struggle lane eight on the far right of screen. Bridgen coming now. Who can get off the bike? It looks like it's going to be Glenister first. Lane three, the pink and the black. She'll get down to the barbell first. Can she cycle it quick enough and get over the line? We're in for a fast finish here. Number of reps remaining is a mystery. Pritchard not far away. Katie Fox. But it's going to be local girl, Beth Flannister from CrossFit Moore to get done in about 13.10. 13.12, the official time. Katie Brock and Lucy Clark going rep for rep. They've just got to go and sprint. Clark taking a break. Ta'amua Pamoina in the middle. How many she got left? Bridget now in the red and white, moving forward to the bar. Talia Jordan, but it's going to be Katie Brock to the two local girls. One, two, in heat number two. And now less than 30 seconds remain. Clark with less than five. The Ta'amua Famawina could be our next athlete to finish. Yes, she is. And Ta'amua Famawina, the third and final athlete. Oh. I don't think Brutal covers it. Wow, you would think that after two minutes rest, just a minute of work wouldn't be too bad, but this event proves otherwise. Beck Glenister. Just cool, calm and collected in a fast and furious event from the get-go. Beck Glenister. Giving the heat win. What a performance, 13-12 for Beck Glenister. Katie Brock, 13-44. But the two local girls getting it done. And wow, that's some tough work out there. Cannot wait to see what happens coming up next with our road replay of how things started starting to think our two rounds is a little savage to put out there but Pridgen she was hot out of the gate so strong on the echo bike but did she go out too hard too fast because she couldn't hold on to that pace it was Peck Lannister over the other side of the arena just chipping away Keeping a great pace throughout the rounds. Giving her the event win for this heat. And you know what Beck did very well with Katie Brock finishing up? She paced her first two rounds and came home hard with three and four. While the other girls were fatiguing, she was accelerating. Great strategy from her. I wonder if anyone out the back waiting We'll take note of that. Two heats down, two remaining of event four. Don't stop me now. Day two of the Torian Pro. And our rogue lane assignments for heat three. And I have no doubts that Miss Olivia Kelly is going to be loving getting on that echo bike and the barbell to cycle it. But we've got a number of contenders who could do some really good stuff.
Georgia, Otto, Emily DeRoy, a couple of our youngsters coming in. But the pull-ups don't really seem to be an issue for any of the girls. They just start to slow down a little bit on the echo bike and that barbell, very unforgiving. Yes, the echo bike pacing seems to be where athletes are coming a bit unstuck on this event, going out too hot in the beginning and not having enough left to speed up towards the back end of the time cap. Rogue Echo Bike, that's the part I want to see of it. You've got to work for every meter, every calorie. And with a high power output event like this one, once you get to that barbell, Two minutes is a long time to be working. And our rogue individual event four, Don't Stop Me Now, in two minutes, 15 chest bar pull-ups, 10 echo bike cows, and then Max snatches at 75 pounds in the remaining time. They get two minutes rest and then repeat it until 60 snatches are complete. They have a 14 minute time cap. We are yet to see anybody finish it in less than four rounds. Time to beat at the moment is Beck Glenister from the previous heat, 13-12. Very competitive time from her but I want to see an athlete do this in three rounds. I would love to see it. Now we know Amy Alessi in lane number two is going to get through these pull-ups like lightning. Depends what she's got in the tank for the echo bike and making sure she gets that seat way down low. The barbell cycling is going to favour her as well with that shorter range of movement. Is that going to be of benefit? You'd think it will with your speed, being able to get that bar from ground to overhead a lot quicker. But it really comes down to technique. Trying to save your grip on the bar, not ripping with the biceps too much. Big muscle groups versus small muscle groups. The big ones are going to win every time. <laughs> Heat number three underway. Event number four. Don't stop me now. Day two of the Torian Pro. And ladies getting to work. Look at the speed on Amy Alessi in lane number two. She's off the bar already and onto the bike, wasting no time. Talk about hammer down. Alessi has thrown it down. And moving super fast. That blonde mane. Blowing in the breeze from the echo bike. Olivia Kelly next to her in lane number one. How many reps can these athletes get done in the first segment? <laughs> Kelly, Alessi, together lanes one and two, getting the barbell at the same time. And Olivia Kelly really using those legs and hips to pop the bar up overhead, saving the grip. Doing two to one of Amy's. Ellie Hutchins moving quick in the pink and white in the middle. Amy Alessi, a little bit slower now. Coming up to one minute 30, which means 30 seconds remaining of work and two minutes of rest incoming. Barbells seem to be moving faster on the cycle rate. I think we've learned some lessons from the previous two heats. Emma Wright doing well, lane seven on the far side of Pat Rafter. Olivia Kelly rocking it. She's got under 10 
seconds. Can she dig in? Georgia Otto. Wow, that was a fast first round from our Heat 3 women. Olivia Kelly, she got a fair chunk of those snatches done. Her barbell is over the number 30. We've seen that before, however. We have. Castell Bridgen doing the same thing in the previous heat. And it just unraveled a little bit towards the back end. Olivia Kelly having a shorter range of motion, though, than a taller athlete like Bridgen may play to her advantage on the barbell. Emma Wright small statured athlete as well and that's benefited her Georgia Otto a little bit taller so range of movement is going to count for everything if you're a taller athlete you're going to have more range on the echo bike but you're going to have to move that barbell further and it will work Damages your nervous system a fair bit, but a two-minute recovery is a long time. We dig back into the old-school fight gone bad type setup. Five minutes on, one minute off. One minute doesn't seem enough, but two minutes might be too long before they get moving once again. When you're moving as fast as these athletes are, Two minutes really isn't a lot of time. Kelly Hutchins. Messon Moore, CrossFit down there in Adelaide, South Australia. Looking for a big segment two. Alessi underway, lane two, cycling fast. The blonde ponytail whipping her in the face every time. That's got to be annoying. Unfazed by all this, Alessi first to the Echo Bike. And it is a great battle between her and Olivia Kelly in the next lane. Danielle Ford, another one of those athletes. Look at the stature of Danielle Ford in the center of the screen. Her posture impeccable on this Echo Bike. Kelly Hutchins in the next lane. Hunched over a little bit, but look at that positioning. Danielle Ford doesn't look like she's doing a lot because of her composure, but she's doing some damage on that echo bike. She's really putting the power through her arms and legs, keeping her body nice and still. Emily DeRoy, our first athlete to move onto the barbell for the second round. Ford not too far behind. Hutchins straight after. And we have seen the previous heat's composure pays off. Olivia Kelly just falling behind a bit. Did she send it too early? Thirty seconds left. Round number two. Let's go, Ellie! Let's go! Ford moving forward with the Roy. Well under 30 reps, we just don't know by how much. And it is going to be out of reach for the second segment. The third, however, could be interesting. Danielle Ford is like a silent assassin in the middle of the arena. She looked like she jumped ahead of the Roy. Hutchins looks like she's in touch as well. And the two that came out of the gates hot, Kelly and Alessi seem to be hurting a fair bit. Wellsman hurting as well. Keeping consistency on that echo bike so that you've got room to accelerate towards the back end of this event seems to be key to completing it. Now is DeRoy going to go again? 
get to that barbell first. Two workarounds done already. Ford, big move, segment two. Nice and steady on that first one. Over 13, 12, our time to beat. That is into the fourth segment of work. Beck Lannister currently holding that from the previous heat. And this is where we have seen on previous two heats where the bodies start to shut down and shut down fast. That two minutes rest time just starts slipping away quicker and quicker. The athletes maybe not feeling as fresh after it as they were the first time. Olivia Kelly, what has she got in the tank? Can she bounce back? We're about to find out. Keep your eye on Emily DeRoy in lane six. Alessi, the speed. Range of movement, quick. Alessi looks like she's back with a bang. Great shot of right to left across the floor. With all the athletes getting to the echo bike at roughly the same time, and lots of body movement compared to Daniel Ford, who's just sitting pretty. Emma Wright. Very composed as well. Danielle Ford has her hand up first. The composure and consistency, is it going to pay off for Danielle Ford? DeRoy, first to move forward. One second behind. Emma Wright has made a comeback. Can she start cycling quick? Great race going on now. Ford, faster cycle time than DeRoy. Hutchins moving into fourth. Alessi and Kelly moving in now. Otto and Wellsman, our last two to the barbell. 30 seconds left. This has been slower. 10 reps for Danielle Ford. Can she get done in three segments? She's got to hold on. She doesn't have time to put that bar down. DeRoy, last five reps. Emily DeRoy, Danielle Ford. Can they get it done with five seconds remaining? DeRoy, can she do it? Yes, she can. Emily DeRoy in three. Wow. What a last set of snatches from Emily DeRoy. Destroyed that barbell. And Daniel Ford so close for the 10.04 from Emily DeRoy. So as long as you get those 60 reps complete, you still can progress to the finish line and that will be your time. If you were at 59 reps, you've got to go back and do a whole nother round and Daniel Ford is in a world of hurt. And that would be messing with her head big time. Coming in to this last round, she only had a couple of reps left, but now she has to do the 15 chest to bar pull ups and the 10 echo bike cows as fast as she can to put up a good time on the leaderboard. She looks pretty buckled. Got to be looking at Beck Lennis's 13 12 and try her hardest to get under that. DeRoy content to sit and watch these other athletes punish themselves. And we called it early with a risk versus reward, and there is your reward extra rest time. Oh, I'm disappointed for Danielle Ford. She looked like her game plan was going so well she just did not have enough juice left in the tank for those snatches on the third round 
now she's got to put in the work to get it done. Underway, fourth and final work segment of Don't Stop Me Now. Final event of the Torian Pro for today for the individual females. One athlete has finished in 10.04, that is Emily DeRoy. And now, Danielle Ford hurting big time. in lane four is going for it. She's close to finishing. Going to be a tight race between Hutchins, Emma Wright, Danielle Ford. Can she get there? Emma Wright, quick on the bike in the final segment. Otto doing the same. Wright's got the lead, though, over Otto. Wellsman, Hutchins, Alessi, Olivia Kelly struggling in lane one. And Emma Wright, can she cycle quick enough and get ahead of Danielle Ford? Danielle Ford, it's got to be one or two reps to go. Emma Wright with one, and she's going to come through. 13, 18, unofficial time. 13, 21 for Emma Wright. Danielle Ford had a few more than we thought. And Hutchins getting the jump on Ford. Placing's all important. Alessi has got to be the next athlete to finish, surely. Wellsman. It's got to be Georgia Wellsman next. Alessi sending it a little bit too strong too early. And time is up as Georgia Wellsman falls over the finish line. But Emily DeRoy, the new time to beat at 10.04. Three segments, there you go. Well, she gave us our three. But we saw a whole bunch of different game plans at play there. Georgia Wellsman just sneaking in. Amy Alessi and Olivia Kelly hot out of the gate. It did not pay off for them. <laughs> she's not budging. Not budging at all, Amy Alessi. And Emily DeRoy, she's looking fresh. She's had a whole round off, but worked exceptionally hard on the three, and our road replay will show just that. It was Olivia Kelly and Amy Alessi hot out of the gate on round one. Olivia Kelly getting a whole bunch of reps done, 30 odd reps out, but it did not pay off. She blew out way too soon. Danielle Ford, calm, cool and collected, but just no grip left on those snatches, making way for Emily DeRoy to take the heat win and doing it pretty easy. She does not look as gassed as the others. DeRoy having a great Torian Pro. And for those athletes leaving the floor, four events down, two remaining tomorrow. And day two, always moving day. And who are we going to see climb the leaderboard? And who are we going to see descend? We'll find out very shortly as our fourth and final heat for the individual females come onto the floor. Great day here at the Torian Pro once again. Packed out Pat Rafter Arena. And pink everywhere in honor of Hannah Clark and her three children. Hannah's mum and dad joining in on Thursday, Friday, and here today as well, raising awareness for domestic violence in Australia and right around the world. Small steps for Hannah, the charity 
and they encourage everyone to wear pink on Saturday here at the Torian Pro and they have not disappointed. It's been great to see so much pink in the crowd, all of our volunteers and officials wearing pink. It helps send the message out there. Pink, Hannah's favourite colour and one of our former Torian Pro athletes. Rogue Lane assignments for our fourth and final heats and I don't know I'm excited as you are Pip but I think this is going to be something special. Kara Saunders has got to be a special for this especially chewing up those echo bike calories and the barbell cycling. I'm really interested to see what the game plans are going to be. Is it worth going out hard or are they going to keep their composure? Welcome back to Pat Rafter Arena and the girl on fire, Tia Claire Tsumi. Three event wins from three. Can she make it four? Our rogue individual event four, don't stop me now. In two minutes, 15 chest bar pull-ups, 10 echo bike cows, max snatches at 75 pounds, and then at rest two minutes and repeat until 60 snatches are completed. They have a 14 minute time cap, four round cap to get it finished. Our quickest so far is three rounds. 10 minutes and four seconds from Emily DeRoy from CrossFit Townsville. The 22 year old throwing down the gauntlet to the top eight athletes after day one of competition. And I tell you what, hold on to your hats, people. This one is going to lift the roof off. And we said earlier that there's no doubt that Tia would be going for a six event sweep. To do that, the recipe for success in event four, pull-ups unbroken, unbroken snatches recover quick. Well, we're seeing the recovery quick, but unbroken snatches we are not seeing yet. Athletes choosing not to risk everything and hold on to that barbell until the two minutes. And it's costing them pressure seconds and extra work, extra tension, extra fatigue. Our fourth and final heat of event four. Don't stop me now. Seconds away. And are we going to see 
five-time champ, Gia Clea Toomey, go four from four at the Torian Pro. Focus, determination and desire, all that is needed. As Heat 4 gets underway, and these ladies are moving fast. Tia will be first off with that cycle race. Closely followed by Jamie Simmons. Ellie Turner moving quick in lane one to the bike. We know what Ellie Turner can do to an Echo bike. Keep your eye on her in lane one. Kara Saunders, we know she's strong in lane three, but do not discount the five-time champ. Turner, first off the bike, onto the barbell, with a significant lead. Saunders not moving as quick, but eating up those reps, and a narrow trip from Tia Claire Toomey. He's going to make sure that cycle rate is quick. It's quicker than Ellie Turner's. Ellie going very wide with hers. Simmons quick with her cycle rate as well, next door to Tia Claire Toomey. 45 seconds remain, and Tia has not stopped. Don't count out Jamie Simmons, though. Lane five, she also hasn't stopped. Matching Tia, rep for rep. Fast punch out overhead. Tia, moving forward. 20 seconds left, Simmons moving forward. The cycle rate of these ladies, we spoke about unbroken barbell sets. Well, you've just seen it. Turner trying to hold on in lane one. It's hurting. Tia has absolutely demolished the first set. Wow. That was fast. Has that speed hurt Ellie Turner? Don't be fooled by the bent over Kara Saunders either. That's her way of recovering faster. We saw it last year. We thought it was her struggling a little. It's just her recovery protocol. But what a cycle rate, especially Tia and Jamie. This event has Jamie Simmons written all over it. She's got an engine on her, but Ellie Turner, so fast out of the gate. It's gonna be interesting to see if that hurts her in round two, if she can keep that pace up, or if she blew out a little too early. A guaranteed rate storyline of the day in an event called Don't Stop Me Now. You can't stop, and these ladies came out of the gates hot and didn't stop at all. And the first time we've seen athletes hang on to the bar from the moment they arrived at the barbell, and the cycle rate was so fast. Tia Claire Toomey using a narrower grip than normal so she can move that barbell a little bit quicker. Are we going to see our two rounds, Jeremy? I'm really, really hoping so. And with a clean sweep, Carrot dangling in front of Tia Claire Toomey. Can Kara put a stop to it? Segment two underway. Jamie Simmons, Tia Claire Toomey are the two fastest on the butterfly pull-up. Sally Turner moving quick as well. She was the first to the Endo bike in the first round, but Tia, she wants it, she wants it bad. Jamie Simmons is not gonna give it to her easy. Neither is Kara Saunders. But I don't know if Tia can be stopped at this point. Tia, very, 
narrow elbow position. Kara going wide with elbows. Ellie Turner wide as well. Now the cycle rate from Tia way quicker than it was with Kara. Kara seconds ahead, and we've seen this race before. Tia and Kara down the floor. Ellie Turner, the newcomer. Tia moving quicker. Lane number four. Patience, composure from Kara on screen. But Tia ripping through those reps like there is no tomorrow. Simmons coming hard in lane number five. But there is no stopping the five-time champ at this point. Can she get done in the next 30 seconds? I think there is every possibility. Last 10 reps. Tia Claire Tumi. She's thrown it down early at the Torian Pro. She wants to win all six events. She's got three in the bag already. Tia Claire Tumi. This is what the crowd has come to see. Tia Claire Tumi. time in a second. Five fifty nine. What a performance! A big upset for Kara Saunders at the end there, with only a couple of reps left. She copped a no rep. Now she has to go back to the start and do it again. She's not happy. Five. 59. That's ridiculous. Tia, the queen of CrossFit, has arrived back down under and she is on a mission. I'll tell you what, Ellie Turner got painfully close as well. The race is going to be on. Now, has Kara emptied the tank too much and can one of the other athletes jump ahead interesting times coming i think car is angry enough to get this done pretty quick <laughs> 30 seconds remain Rusty, fix your pain fast with a Rusty remote recovery. 50% off or visiting a Rusty.com slash CrossFit recovery. Third segment underway for event number four, heat four. Don't stop me now. And we've got a race on our hands. Tia Claire Toomey demolishing the field with a second round finish of 559. And Ellie Turner needs to make a move, as does Jamie Simmons. And if both can finish ahead of Kara Saunders, this leaderboard is going to juggle. Ellie Turner is going and going hard. And she's going to be the first off the Echo Bike. Kara in the zone and doing what she needs to do but the Ellie Turner Jamie Simmons race is on Ellie Turner how many reps does she have left Jamie Simmons Gemma Hope but it's got to be Ellie Turner with a second place finish in this event. Jamie Simmons now has 10 reps to go. 9.04 official time for Ellie Turner. Bailey Rogers out wide, lane number eight. Don't discount her. Jamie Simmons, though, it's gonna be Kara Saunders. Minimizing the damage, Jamie Simmons with a fourth place finish. Bailey Rogers will be next best. Bailey Rogers coming in. Under time cap for the third segment as well.
Gemma Hart getting in in under 10 minutes unofficially. Massive for her. We still have Maddie Sturt sneaking in in under 10 minutes also. And Georgia Pryor, the final athlete left. And I hate to say it, she's out there all on her own. She's got a good cheer squad over the finish line, though. She's got a very fit cheer squad as well. Fans flocking to the five-time, and will we see the six-time champ? Now Georgia Pryor out there all on her lonesome to get these last reps done. She could still put up a competitive time compared to the previous heats. Absolutely. Girls meeting their hero and the tears are flowing here at Pat Rafter. Tia straight down the competition floor. And she's going to hang with the Georgia Pryor for the whole thing. There was a time way back when, when roles were reversed. And as Tia said yesterday in her interview, she didn't finish the rope climb event back in 2014. That's right, Tia has been there. I think everybody is used to seeing her on top, but she has climbed her way up. She's been on top a lot. 30 seconds left for Georgia Pryor, who has had a great two days of competition. She just needs to finish this one out. Bailey Rogers, Maddie Sturt heading down to add some support for Georgia as well. Just needs to stay in her lane and get the job done. Fourth round underway, this Pat Rafton crowd. Ready to lend some support as well. Beautiful chest of our pull ups. No surprise after the performances yesterday. Body weight movement prowess. And someone we're going to have to keep an eye on in future years down here in the Oceania region. So much potential. Gemma Hoke joining the support party as well down with Georgia Pryor. Georgia from Snake CrossFit, same affiliate as Jake Douglas in Tamworth, New South Wales. moving and shaking Maddie Sturt has done that today and sneaking up towards that one minute mark and how many reps Georgia has we're not sure Georgia Pryor finishing up she's now got 50 seconds She's got the entire crowd and the fittest woman on earth urging her on. And moving well, she just needs to hang on to this bar. And the cheer that will go up right now. Five reps, she's gonna get finished under the 14 minute time cap. So yes, still a competitive time. Georgia Pryor. Thirteen forty-eight official finish time for Georgia Pryor. And what we have witnessed in the last fourteen minutes is something exceptional. Four events down. Four event wins for the champ, but shaking and moving going on on that leaderboard. And what are we going to see after these results shake out? Jamie Simmons did exactly what she needed to do. Stay in touch at the top. Kara having to do that fourth round. Kara just talking to husband Maddie. 
and down on the competition floor with Caleb Banfield, two of our best. Tia, you did the workout in two rounds. If anyone's going to do it, it's you. What was going through your mind that whole second round? <laughs> well, the crowd just went ballistic, and so I was like, I have to hang on now. Don't have any choice. How do you train for an event like that? Were you able to do something like that in training, or do you prepare for it in a different way? Yeah, I think, you know, Shane puts us through a number of different tests. So, you know, we're ready no matter what our, whatever the workout is. That's our job as these athletes here in CrossFit is prepare for the unknown and unknowable, right? So, um, you know, something like that, you just got to really embrace the suck and, um, you know, try and get it done as fast as possible. And leave the performance to the competition floor, hey? Yeah, that's right. Well, when I've got incredible competitors, you know, either side of me, they only just push me more. Speaking of incredible, incredible competitors, it's so nice to see you down the floor encouraging your fellow athletes. What were you telling her in that last, uh, last few minutes? Um, big deep breaths, you know, that's what you got to do in those two minutes of recovery. Um, and, you know, like I remember when I very first came out here my first time, it's so daunting and um, not to say if it's her first time, but yeah. um, when I was starting out, it just helps having that support, you're not alone. And Ellie, you're a previous Games qualifier. How are you finding this year in this Torium Pro? Um, I'm having so much fun. I mean, I grew up watching these girls and I started the sport because of them. So to be alongside them is just all I could have asked for. And especially uh, in front of a home Aussie crowd, they just get you over the line. So it's been, it's been so much fun. These guys are absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, guys and ladies. Well done. Go get some well-deserved rest and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Kayla. And exactly what Ellie Turner needed as well. Start propelling her back to possibly another qualifying spot for the CrossFit Games. And our road replay, she was just on fire. Oh, she just never disappoints, does she? Tia Claire Toomey putting on a show in Don't Stop Me Now. Held onto that bar the whole way. But I tell you what, Ellie Turner, she went out on a mission and we're gonna have to wait for the overall standings, but she may have completed that mission. Kara Saunders getting a bit of an unfortunate hiccup on her last couple of reps, really costing her in this event. It was such a tight race. They entertained the crowd, that's for sure. And we were wondering if anyone could do it in two, let alone three. And there was no questions. And the car up just getting timed out and the question asked. But time was up, unfortunately, after that no rep. And then Ellie Turner grabbed the opportunity to get ahead and some important points. What impressed me about Ellie Turner was her intensity from the very beginning didn't change. She looked busted, but she just did not stop. See ya. Doing the politician thing. And don't stop me now. What a great title to event number four. And our results, 559. Ellie getting in at 904. Sakara minimizing the damage there. Jamie Simmons getting in at four. So important result for her. Bailey Rogers, great for her. Maddie Sturt, 9.57. So with Maddie Sturt currently sitting in fourth, tied, that's going to juggle things up a little bit as well. So the top six should be the top six still. But Tia, four from four. Can she make it six from six? It's going to be hard to stop her. When you're on a roll, it is going to be hard to stop. The overall standings, men's competition, Jay Crouch overall lead now after coming into day number one, tied with Bailey Martin. Gerard jumping up after that 315 pound complex on the barbell. Bailey Martin still staying in touch, but Royce Dunn hunting him down. Baden Brown jumping up exactly what he needed to do.
McLeod, Newbury and Standen. Even with that missed complex lift on the third segment for Jake Standen, jumping into the top 10. And if anyone keep your eye on in the men's division for this event, it's going to be Mr. Baden Brown. I'm very interested to see the difference between the men and the women in the tactic for this event. Are the men all going to go hot out of the gate and try and get it finished in the two rounds like Tia, or are they going to strategize a little more? So they've just seen it unfold in front of them and know full well that it is possible to get done in two. I know program director Mike Towner, that was his strategy in programming this event, to dangle the carrot for two rounds. He was hoping someone would, but the men now, who is going to be able to get it done? Our rogue lane assignments for heat one. We see Jack Fleming lane two, Riley Martin in three, Jack Clark in four, Darcy Hancock in five, Zach Thomas in six. And lane number seven, Evan Morris. As we've seen over the last couple of heats, stop the pull-ups, they're gonna stop people, it's everything else. Rogue, individual event four, don't stop me now. In two minutes, 15 chest to bar pull-ups, 15 echo bike howls, Max snatches at 105 pounds, rest two minutes and then repeat until 60 snatches are completed. They have a 14 minute time cap. Now, the fittest woman on earth just did it in two rounds. Are we going to see any of the men do the same? Great question. I don't have the answer. for heat and number one of the individual men for the fourth and final event for today, Torian Pro Day 2. Don't Stop Me Now, quite aptly named. Riley Martin very quick to the bike, Jack Clark very similar. Zach Thomas is going bananas in lane six. That's a gutsy pace on the bike he has going. Darcy Hancock doing something similar, but Zach Thomas, wow, he is moving. 15 calories required from the men, as opposed to the 10 for the women. Zach Thomas, he's got to be close to getting first off. Lots of hands in the air, but it is going to be Zach Thomas first. We saw in the early women's heats that going hot out of the gate doesn't necessarily pay off. But we'll have to see how it plays out with the men. Jack Fleming, the black and pink in the far left. Riley Martin. Jack Clark, just stepping forward with the barbell. We spoke about hanging on to the bar as well. Jack Clark doing just that. Well, we just saw some very fit women hold on to the bar, unbroken. No problem at all, really. Zach Thomas, quick break. Dropping under the bar very well. Zach Thomas. Evan Morris moving very fast. Lane number seven on the far edge of the arena. And not too long to go for segment one. And not as quick as the final female heat. At this point, I think it's going to be smarter to break up those snatches a little bit. Save the grip. Round two can significantly drop in speed. As we've seen with the previous heats with the women, this event catches up and it catches up quick. Evan Morris.
Harris chipping away in lane seven. Cross it 5.05 in Brisbane. Good to be able to have a semi-final in your own backyard, sleep in your own bed, keep things as normal as possible. That would definitely help with the anxiety and adrenaline levels. Being in a familiar environment really helps. Evan Morris. Been around the traps for a while now. And are we gonna see the same from Zach Thomas? Zach, another one of the CrossFit Wollongong athletes there is so many of them and competing down there on a day-to-day -day basis got to be tough to get wins but great experience though being around other competitive athletes can really work to your advantage coming into competition always being pushed Great lifting earlier on in event three. Great pull from Riley Munn. Look at that. Beautiful movement. You just see Riley Martin then just get stuck on the pedals when they started going backwards. Something that we saw Castell Pridgen do in the females is set her pedals up prior to going back to start the next round. Transitions in a fast event like this, super important. If you can plan ahead and have your bike set for a quick transition on and off, it's going to help give you that extra time for extra reps. Zach Thomas once again off first. Bigger range of movement. So it's taking him a little bit longer to get this barbell overhead. But he is way ahead. He has had a great transition. Hancock, Clark, Fleming, and now Morris. But Riley Martin first to the bike, last off the bike. Zach Thomas starting to hurt a bit now on these snatches. He's put a good dent in them though. Popping a no rep. Really important these athletes stand up all the way, extend their hips to the top. They can't just catch and go straight back down on a bent body. Getting close to the time cap on the second work segment. Clark moving quick in the center of the arena. Jack Clark. He made up a heap of ground on that one, and he's off to recover. Zach Thomas backed up his speed from the first round. That was impressive. I didn't think he would go that fast again, but he did. Can he finish it in the third round? The third round with the women seemed to be where the fatigue really hurt. Darcy Hancock, one of the athletes from CrossFit CQ up at Rockhampton. He had some great lifting as well in the bend number three. Zach Thomas has just come down the floor to talk to his judge. Not exactly sure why. He might be asking why he got a no rep so he doesn't do it again. Or he could be asking how many reps he's got left to do so he can strategize how he's going to do these pull-ups and echo by calories. You can tell it's Zach Thomas because he's got it on his shirt. <laughs> Needs it on the front. <laughs> we know who he is. Both smart questions though need to know where you are. Awareness is everything. Riley Martin 
Not sure what happened, but once he got onto the Echo Bike, but those calories just did not seem to tick over as quick as he wanted. The steam coming off Evan Morris. Segment number three underway. As we mentioned, fairly cool conditions here. And not really what we're used to seeing here in southeast Queensland. Humidity way down as well. And now, Martin once again getting there. But can he increase his rate on the bike to get off quicker? Zach Thomas in lane six. He wants to finish this. Now, checking with his judge how many reps left he had, probably a good strategy, because if it's something like 18 reps, or getting close to 20, he knows he could probably hang on for that. The hand up for Zach Thomas. He's going to give it a good crack. Zach Thomas had a great open. Did enough in the quarterfinals to find himself here. And now, in heat number one, can he get it completed in the next 60 seconds? He's given himself a good amount of time. He just has to manage the fatigue in his forearms. Last five reps for Zach Thomas. And checking was a great option for him because he knows he's going to be over the finish line soon. Zach Thomas from CrossFit, Wollongong. He's our first finisher in heat number one. 9.29 official time for Zach Thomas. And can Jack Clark finish off? Five reps to go, Jack Clark in 20 seconds. Clark's got a move. reps remaining for Jack Clark and not a lot of time. Can he get the last rep done? That's all he needs to do. Clark. Ten minutes and change for Jack Clark as long as he got his reps done under the time cap. He is allowed to progress forward to the finish line. So an official 10.02 for Jack Clark from CrossFit underway. He cut that painfully close. As we've seen, having to go back and do another round with only a couple of reps left is brutal. Those echo bike cows are just punishing these athletes. But Zach Thomas came through from round one. He kept his pace. So impressive. Yeah, for a youngster, that awareness, go down and speak to your judge in your recovery period and say right where am i sitting what am i looking at going back and having that extra minute to do a, probably a different strategy and go okay there's probably about 11 or 12 reps he had to go and he went right oh, i can get this done quick so let's just get after it that's a smart athlete something it takes some athletes years to accumulate is that sort of experience and the fourth and final segment of work coming up. Rest is no more until they finish or that 14 minute time cap hits. Fleming, a little bit of self-talk, telling himself exactly what he needs to do. Self-belief as well, Jack Fleming, just going, yes, let's get in, let's get this done. Hancock. Large body as well. Lots of weight, body weight to shift. But that will help him when we get to the Echo by Calories. No Jack Clark, no Zach Thomas. They're down at the finish line and will wait for the rest of their heats. Martin quick again. His pull-ups have been really quick. His cycle rate is impressive. Hancock going to work on the bike. It's going to be a bit of a race here on the bar between Hancock and Martin. 
Darcy Hancock giving that echo bike some. And he'll be first off, lane number five. And I don't think it's going to be too many reps to complete before he gets to the finish line. Minute to go now. Hands in the air for all three remaining athletes on the Echo Bike. It's the last round. Why not full send it? Darcy Hancock moved to the bar and spent a little bit of time setting up. If you're in this situation, don't you just want to pick that bar up and go? You do, but getting your hands uneven on the bar, very annoying having one side touch the ground before the other. And Darcy Hancock from some barbell star jumps to finish. Getting the job done. Martin moving fast. Lane three. Martin, how quick can you go? He wants to get this done. He's going to empty the tank and try and get there. And time will beat the remaining three athletes on the floor, Jack Fleming, Riley Martin, and Evan Morris. Massive effort from all concerned. Similar sort of carnage as we've seen in the previous couple of heats for the females. The guy with a spring in his step. Zach Thomas in the background there, and Darcy Hancock's pretty happy as well to get it done. Three athletes in the first heat getting it finished. Our road highlights. Zach Thomas in lane six from the get-go. Super fast out of the gate, but he kept the pace in the coming rounds, he did not slow down. And it's super smart work going down and asking his judge where he was at so we could game it and finish it off well under the time cap. Jack Clark also finishing with a very respectable time. Now having three athletes finishing the first heat, you think that the coming heats are watching it going, Oh God, we have to go hard. Zach Thomas, one of the youngsters from CrossFit Wollongong. Finishing up in the 9.29 for our Rogue results. Jack Clark and Darcy Hancock. There are only three athletes. Getting finished underneath that 14 minute time cap. One heat down, three heats remain of day two of the Torian Pro. And what a jam-packed day it has been here. The rain has poured down for most of the day. We're lucky enough to be underneath this open-air roof. Crowd very happy to be here as well. They have seen a lot of fitness and they have all come out to witness what is going to be something amazing if they hang around tomorrow. Tia Claire Toomey, can you believe it? Four from four. Now going back to the original Torian Pro back in the day in 2015 at the first affiliate that Mike and Jono both owned way back when. Tia won six from six. Won all six events, and it was points per place. So she finished with six points. We were going off that format. She'd currently be at four points. Well, at this rate, she might have 600 points. We're going to multiply by 100. I'll tell you what, 600 points for the dancing in the crowd. the beers and the pizza.
getting consumed here at Pat Rafter as they wait for the second of four heats. For the individual men, we get grab something special for the females in heat number four. Are we going to get the same thing for the males? Our rogue lane assignments for heat two. A lot of heavy hitters in this one and a lot of athletes with a lot of power. Kieran Power being one of those. Jake Douglas, Costa Illick, Jake Standen, John Champion, Mitchell Case. This is going to be awesome. But one guy I'm looking out for, Thor Heinel in lane six. I've got a tip that this guy's going to do something special. Well, as we've seen, it takes something special for this event because it is brutal. Our Rogue Individual Event 4 in 2 minutes. 15 chest bar pull-ups, 15 echo bike cows. Max snatches at 105 pounds. Rest two minutes and repeat until 60 snatches have been completed. The athletes have a 14 minute time cap to complete those snatches. Our fittest woman on earth, Tia Claire Toomey, doing it in the two rounds. But the previous men's heat did not disappoint. Zach Thomas, Hey, he threw it down early. Come on, boys, come chase me down. John Champion, we know how much of an engine this guy has got. But if my insider information from Western Australia is correct, Thor Heinel on screen is going to be one to watch. As a fellow glasses wearer, I hope the fog isn't too much of an issue in this event. Get the wipers on. Kieran Power, left of screen, Thor Heinel on the right. We're not too far away from getting started in heat number two. Costa like a caged tiger. Ready to roll. And heat number two underway. For Don't Stop Me Now. Who is going to be the first stop in? It's going to be Costa Illick in lane number one. But a lot of athletes moving straight to the Echo Bike. Jake Douglas, Snake Crossfit. He can do some damage on that bike with those shoulders. John Champion Lane 8 is going mad. And then just slowing it down for the last couple. And look at the composure, John Champion. He is way ahead of anybody else. Douglas coming now, Illick coming to the bar at the same time. Ford now, Case, Power Standard, and finally, Thor Heinel. Jake Douglas, how easy is that? Jake Douglas, muscle snatching. Not bending his knees under the bar, just hands out to the ends and ripping it up over his head. Making it look empty. 30 seconds remaining. John Champion sends the Echo Bike. Douglas having a break. Are those muscle snatches going to blow Douglas's grip out though? Going singles now. John Champion has done very well in segment number one. 
And although he got to the bar quick, champion Douglas with those muscle snatches. And he is back and ready to recover for round number two. But not many athletes have been able to back up their intensity in rounds two and three. Costa Illich going so hard, his shirt's falling apart. Richard Case, all doing well. Now, is John Champion going to do the same thing round after round? Follow the format. Manage the fatigue as best he can. Douglas looks ready to go already with one minute recovery. He does, but will those muscle snatches hurt him? He was doing singles in the end. Final champion, two of our Sam Gropers. Another one, Costa Illich. Athletes are waiting. More punishment from the competition floor. Barbells all in about the same sort of alignment. Costa Illich looking good. Douglas, look at him. Raring to go, foot forward. I reckon he's going to try and finish this. Douglas, let's keep an eye on lane number four. Athlete with no shirt, four athletes in. He's got a very strong pull. What can he do with his Echo Bike once he gets there? Champion moving fast once again, but Douglas, he wants it. Tested the water with round one and knew he could move the barbell quick. And look at him go in lane four now. He is not holding back, neither is John Champion. Champion was quick, but Douglas is gonna get the jump on round two. Douglas, can he get there and spend a minute on the barbell? He's gonna have a minute 10. Douglas, the muscle snatch worked for him in round one. Can he hang on and get this done? And do the same as Tia Claire Toomey, Toomey did in heat number four of the women and finish the event in two rounds. He's got the speed, he just has to hold on. John Champion keeping his composure, sticking with his own game plan. Now Douglas still moving fast. Quick nod to his judge. Find out how many reps he's got remaining. Don't be surprised to see the judge hand in the air very soon. 30 seconds left. Can Jake Douglas from Snake CrossFit hang on? Costa Illich finishing fast in lane one as well. Douglas. Resorting to singles. Is it too much? Douglas, eye to eye with his judge for every rep. And now he's just gonna pace this in and he won't even get credit for that last rep. But he knew he wasn't gonna get it done so he didn't bother. Save a little bit more in the tank. That round has got to hurt him though because that was a blistering pace to have not finished. John Champion, I think, is going to be our silent assassin on the outside. He looks so composed. He's running his own race. Costa, not as much. <laughs> but Costa's got to be very close to finishing that barbell, hovering over that 60 rep mark. And look at this, more experience that you don't see on the competition floor too often. Chalking, pre-chalking the bar. He looks pretty fresh to me. He looks also pretty annoyed. One minute down on their recovery, one minute to come. 
Liam Ford cycling well with his barbell. He's probably got about 10 reps remaining. So a lot of these athletes are going to be finishing in this segment. Costa just needs to hang on. Putting plenty of chalk on those hand grips. Probably not a bad way to recover on your haunches considering you're not doing a lot of work with your legs. No, apart from the echo bike, this is a very grippy event. Shoulders and forearms. Right, a prediction coming. Douglas is coming in hot. He is ready to go once again, lane four. Only athlete that looks excited to get back out there. Foster Illig did not look keen to get back up on that bar, but he's almost finished. Champion looking good, lane eight for Douglas. I don't think the upper body strength is gonna be an issue. Champion coming quick, lane eight. Judge's hand went up quick, but it's gonna be Thor Heinel. Thor going for it. Douglas knowing if he just goes hard for 20 to 25 seconds, he will be done with these calories and finish off the last couple of reps. Douglas working hard to keep his pace. Doesn't look like he has much left in the tank, but John Champion has not changed his composure on that bike. Costa going quick, lane one. He just wants to urge his body to go through now. Costa, with only a couple of reps to go. Can he get the jump on Jake Douglas? Costa about to get off. No, it's Thor Heinel and Costa. Mitchell Case. Costa's got to be close. The legs aren't working for Costa Illig. Thor wrapping this out quick. Costa Illig, Jake Douglas. Walking forward to his bar, only a few reps to go for Jake Douglas. He'll be done in under 10. Costa Illich, can he get him? Douglas and Illich, it's got to be Costa Illich. CrossFit Thickness in Western Australia. 9.38-ish, Douglas finishing up about 9.43. Great result from those two gentlemen. Champion struggling. And that is going to hurt Mitchell Case, able to get over the line. So Mitchell Case, the 60 reps completed under the time cap, which is the requirement. And doesn't have to go back and redo the finish home. But Costa, Illich. Busting out of that shirt, he went that hard. Jake Douglas, looking like he was going to finish it in two rounds, but just looked like that forearm fatigue from muscle snatching. We're not really sure what happened there. I think brain said yes, and body just went. Uh -uh. Mitchell Case flat on his back. Champion will have about seven reps left. So now he knows he can just go hard for about 45 seconds and he'll be done with this event. He looks pretty good for the intensity of this event. Champion. Cafe in WA coaches at CrossFit Legion Standen. One of our youngsters has come through the ranks over the years as well from Rockhampton. Waiting so they can get back to work. Five athletes remaining. Can we get them all over the line? in the final work segment of two minutes. Underway. The 
final segments. The last bit of work for these five men. The day two of the Torian Pro final. What a great cycle, Ray, getting up the same time as champion. And Kieran Power standing just behind. John Liam champion. <laughs> champion. He wants this and he wants to get it done quick. He's moving the fastest out of all five men. Ford focused on the barbell, looking ahead. Champion will be off first. And only a couple of reps separate him from finishing. Champion has it stuck to his own game plan the whole way. It seems to have paid off for him. Last five reps now, champion. Heinel with five. The 55 reps finishing for Thor Heinel on round number three. And John Champion, sir, you are a champion. Finishing up. Event four in the books of the Torian Pro. Thor Heinel's next. Heinel, great result for him as well. Tyler by day. Crossfitter when he's got spare time. Liam Ford is done as well. Less than 30 seconds remain now. Kieran Power finishing up. Can Standen hang on? Five to go for Jake Standen. Will he run out of time? Three reps remain for Standen. And the trail of sweat behind him tells the story. And this has been, as you mentioned earlier, very unforgiving. It has. We have seen so many different tactics and game plans out on that floor. Some have paid off and many haven't. 16 athletes have been through, and I reckon we've had 16 different strategies. Champion still looking pretty fresh after having to go through four rounds, but our rogue replay kicking things off and Costa Illich far left of screen. Started off very well early. John Champion, so strong on the echo bike, but Jake Douglas, Looks like he was going to finish it in two rounds. Muscle snatching, but just missed out. Costa Illich taking that opportunity and finishing ahead of him in the end. A great finish for him. Jake Douglas sneaking in behind Illich. Great to see Jake Douglas back on the floor after getting a pretty severe injury. And the Mexican wave kicking off at Pat Rafter Arena. Two heats down of the individual male, two to go. The crowd have to say has been amazing this weekend so far. Our rogue results, Illich at 9.38, Douglas just after in 43. Mitchell Case getting it done and it was a slow stroll over the finish line, which is why it was 10.05. Champion, Heinel, Ford and Power all getting done in that fourth segment. Standen, so close, three reps to go. Great results so far. We've got two heats coming up. The CrossFit game semi-finals are proudly supported by Noble, the official footwear and apparel brand of CrossFit. Arosti, the official rapid recovery provider of CrossFit. Oh. 
O2, the official recovery drink of the Noble CrossFit Games. And US Army, know your army. Heat three moments away of the individual male competition. Two heats to finish things off here. Day two of the Torian Pro. And our rogue lane assignments for heat three. CrossFit Wollongong represents Millennia, Jackson and Sold, three of our athletes from that stable just south of Sydney. Mix it in with a couple of Oh geez, and that makes for a very good heat. And are we going to see something a little bit similar to heat number two? I'll tell you what we are gonna see is a whole lot of different strategies in Rogue individual event four. Don't stop me now. In two minutes, 15 chest bar pull-ups, 15 echo bike cows, and then in remaining time, max snatches. They're going to rinse and repeat after two minutes rest until 60 snatches are complete. They've got a 14 minute time cap. All by one athlete in heat number two needed that time cap. And with some smaller stature athletes in this heat, like John Molinier on screen, Curtis Jackson's another call it now and say we're going to have a CrossFit Wollongong showdown in this heat. Can we see the treble one, two and three with Millennia Jackson and Souls getting over the line. Three youngsters, three athletes with so much potential. Ash Rittendahl from Mount CrossFit, Mount Moganui in New Zealand. Clark lifted magnificently earlier on in event number three. Let's see what he can pull out of the bag for event four. But don't count out in lane six, Maddie Gilpin. Two down, two to go. This is heat three, individual male competition. And the cycle rate, apart from Curtis Jackson, seems a little bit slower than normal. Jackson looks like he was going to be the first athlete off and onto the Echo Bike, closely followed by affiliate member Joel Millennia in lane number four. Lots of composure on the bikes in this heat, except for in lane number two. Mason Doherty's getting the hand up first. He's going hard on that bike. Mason loves his stuff from CrossFit MSD in Tasmania. And to the bar quickly. And barbell cycling is his jam as well. The speed, I'm not sure if it's going to be fast enough to get it done in two rounds, but three definitely doable. He's just dropping under the bar with those hips and knees, save his arms a bit. We saw in the last heat that muscle snatches can blow you out early. We're seeing some in lane number three, Ellis muscle snatching. Gilpin pulling under the bar well, punching out well. Ellis moving forward now. And that press out from Ellis in lane three. Minimized now by dropping under a little bit deeper. Jackson cycling well. Lane number six. He's got the red shoes on with no shirt. And that cycle rate for the smaller guys, a lot easier to manage. Doherty, the first to the bar. Continuing his progress down the floor. He's nearly finished 30. Two minutes down and our horn hasn't gone off. Horn out.
out of gas once again. Very similar to the athletes we've seen in the last six rounds. Yeah, we have just a little bit of confusion going on. Not sure if it's the fatigue from the event. Gilpin, great first set. Curtis Jackson was quick. His power output on the Echo Bike is going to be the telling factor. Gilpin looking to progress his way up the leaderboard today. Believe it or not, a minute of rest has already gone by. This is the event where the two minutes rest is the fastest two minutes of your life, but the two minutes of work is the slowest two minutes of your life. Curtis and Matty swapping strategies, maybe. How did you go on that one? Millennia and Jackson. I'd like to see what Curtis Jackson does with this, the Englishman. Big heart. Such a small statured individual. And his pull-up cycle rate is really quick. Segment number two underway, Jackson. Same, same, no different at all. Oh, Jackson, he's got through those first 10 super fast. And in a bit of a rush to get this completed. Mason again, hammer down. Lane number two. Composed Curtis Jackson goes about his business. Looks like Joel, Millennia, and Jackson have a similar game plan. They're both staying pretty composed and controlled on that bike. But Mason Dolby, not so composed and controlled. He is going for it. Dolby off. Same as last time. He's got some damage control to do. Gil the end of that first round got a bit messy. Gilpin now moving to the barbell. Ellis, not too far behind. Jackson now, Salt and Clark out in lane eight. Now the rep scheme set from Doherty, shortening by every second that ticks by. 30 seconds remain now. Joel Millennia's overhead position, so clean. Cycling through those reps with so much speed. Jackson, cycle rate continued, but Gilpin now moving into the back end of the rep scheme of 60. Second round, done. Two more remaining if required. Two minutes of rest in between. Ash says time for the shirt to come off. Maddie Gilpin is on the last of his snatches. He's just been quietly chipping away in lane six. Gilpin, our overall leader after day one of competition last year here. Now, aside from Mason Doty, none of these athletes have been going exceptionally hard on the echo bike. They all seem to be holding their composure just that bit and saving it up for the snatches. It's been rewarded with Matty Gilpin.
keeping that composure. Doherty. I'm not sure that the barbells on the floor reflect the position of the reps they are in. John Mulaney is way back there in 25 reps. 30 seconds left now of the second rest period of Don't Stop Me Now, the fourth event of the Torian Pro. Two more to come tomorrow. We're going to find out who our three representatives are for the men to go to the CrossFit Games in August. Segment three commences. Gilpin looking smooth in lane six. Mason Doherty, he is busted. He's hurting. He's doing strict pull-ups. His butterfly has left him. Jackson onto the bike first. But Matty Gilpin, lane number six, just next to Curtis Jackson. Moving quick on this one. Matty knows he's not far away from finishing. Now, problem. Mason Doherty may have picked up an injury of some sort because he does not look happy at all. And his body just didn't want to work. Or is he going to sit this round out and save it up for the last round? Changing up his grip now on, he's not doing a half chin up, half pull up. So is it an issue with his shoulder? We're gonna to have to find out, but Matty Gilpin now moving to the bar. 45 seconds remain now. Gilpin repping well. Peter Ellis doing the same. Jackson, lots of touch and go reps. Clark finishing strong in lane eight. Ellis going for it. It's going to be Gilpin finishing first, I believe. Yes, Matt Gilpin, five reps remaining, but he can't rest. He's only got 15 seconds to get these done. Can Jackson get done? No, a no rep from Jackson. Gilpin, last rep. He's going to sneak under the time cap. Matty Gilpin, well done to you. We called it from the beginning. We knew he was going to do something special in this event. He's got an engine on him. Great finish for Matty Gilpin. No surprises here. None at all. Official I'm so glad I don't have to go 10.03 again. for Matt Gilpin from CrossFit Speed right here in Brisbane. And I think he said he's glad he doesn't have to go again. I'm sure he's glad he doesn't need to go again. Mason Doherty now just chatting with judges. I'm sure they'll sort out what the issue is. Curtis Jackson, I was very surprised to see the judge's hand not go up. He was close. So Curtis Jackson will probably get to the bar, do one rep, and then the hand will come in the air. Mason Doherty does not look happy at all. So it looks like a left shoulder that might have done some damage to. We hope not. Love to see him back here tomorrow. Mitch Clark, CrossFit Active in Sydney. He also seems to be on his last few reps. Not sure who is ahead out of him or Jackson. I'm going to say Clark, just because he's been chipping away in lane eight, minding his own business. Souls looks like he's got about between 10 and 20 reps to go. Those outside lanes are a good spot to hide away and just do some sneaky squirrel business. Absolutely. It's hard for the other athletes to see what's going on in those outside lanes. The final segment of work, the final two minutes of work for some of these athletes, for those others with under 
15 reps on this barbell. It's going to be even shorter. Jackson coming to the bike first. Ellis, then Millennia, then Clark, then Rusendahl. Souls on the bike as well. And no one moving overly fast. However, Clark in lane eight in the far right of the screen. There he is right there. Just got a little bit more power than the rest of the field. Ellis absolutely going bananas in lane three, but he's possibly got more reps than Clark and Jackson. Ellis is going to be on the bar first. He's just asked his judge how many he has to go. That many. Ellis will be the next athlete to finish regardless of how many reps Curtis Jackson has. Peter Ellis, CrossFit Peak Plaxland. Oh, the legs, they're not working. Great job, Peter Ellis. 13.26 for Peter Ellis. Jackson with five remaining now. Clark with five. This is gonna be a tight finish. Can Jackson. Hold on in lane five. The speedy red shoes are going to get him over the line. Only just to Mitch Clark. And now in less than 30 seconds, Rusendahl, millennia souls left on the floor. And that's all she wrote for heat number three. Tight race then at the back end. But Pete Ellis doing well. Eventful heat. Not sure what's happened to Mason Doherty. A great result, Matt Gilpin. Exactly what he needed to do. With one heat remaining. It's going to be possibly a top 10 finish. A road replay. So we had some hot out of the gate contenders. Mason Doherty seemed to be the fastest, but we're not sure exactly what happened. He copped an injury, but Matty Gilpin just quietly going about his business. He's got an engine. So his ability just to hold on to that bar, get the work done, minimal resting time, really paid off for him. Reed Hound, one remain. Day two, lots of moving and shaking on the leaderboard and our results from Rogue. Matty Gilpin at 10.03, so getting the job done and then finishing after the time cap over the finish line. Ellis, Jackson and Clark. Look at Jackson and Clark. About a second and a half between them. But as we get deeper into the heat, getting this event finished proving to be quite difficult still. This is an event that has not been kind to the athletes. We well, did probably uh, put the reverse on to yesterday with event number one, and then fast forward to now. The bit in the middle has been okay, but the start and finish of day one and day two have been very unkind. They have. These athletes have been really tested on these first two days of competition. Leaving it all out there on the floor. Our rogue lane assignments for the fourth and final heat of event number four. Don't stop me now. I'm going to keep my eye on lane number one, Baden Brown. This is going to be a special one for him. But we are Lattered with talent in this heat. Gerard, we know he is going to eat up those Echo Bike calories. And Royce Dunn, he didn't have the result I think he would have liked in the barbell complex. So he is going to want to do some damage in this event. We know what Newbury can do 
to an event like this. We saw it at the CrossFit Games. And talk about full send. He emptied the tank that day. And are we going to see it again from James Newbury? Crowd waiting in anticipation for our top eight athletes to hit the floor. Jay Crouch coming in as an overall leader. Can he maintain that and stay on top? Head back to the CrossFit Games once again. One of our big names is going to miss out. We know that for sure. Who that is going to be. Can Ricky Garrard do enough to warrant a spot back Here CrossFit Games 2022? Heat of the night. Your final heat of your elite men. I hope you are ready. Brisbane! That's what I like, like to hear. Let's go, 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 I don't think it could get any hotter. Rogue, it's individual event four. Don't stop me now. In two minutes, 15 chest bar pull-ups, 15 echo bike cows. Max snatches at 105 pounds in the remaining time. They get two minutes rest and then they repeat until 60 snatches are completed. They have a 14 minute cap. Now, Tia Claire Toomey did this in two rounds. Are we going to see one of these top men do it in two rounds? 5.59 for time. Tia Claire Toomey. And our trifecta recipe for success in this event. Pull-ups unbroken. Unbroken snatches seems to be personal choice amongst the athletes, whether they do or they don't. But recover quick is imperative need to keep that intensity up across all the rounds hopefully it's not too many rounds Tia proved that unbroken snatches is the way to go if you want to get this done in two rounds or less and are we going to see the king of the north Baden Brown do just that segment one underway Two guys I want to see on this Echo Bike is in lane one, Baden Brown. The other in lane three, Ricky Garrard. We know they are going to eat up those calories very quick. Baden Brown on a mission. He wants another event win. He needs to propel himself up that leaderboard. And today is the day to do it. Don't count out this man, James Newbury. He's got an engine on him, but also over in lane number six, Matt McLeod. He can do some damage on a bike and a light barbell. Brown. Left the screen, Royce Dunn. Two of our CrossFit Games qualifiers from years past. Brown off, same time as Jay Crouch. Gerard coming and McLeod. Now, Brown, who can cycle quicker? Crouch. Big hip bend for Jay Crouch. 
don't think anyone's going to be cycling the barbell quick enough to get this done in two rounds. We aren't seeing any muscle snatcher. They're all dropping under the bar. But Baden Brown, he's not putting it down yet. Brown, 20 done. 30 seconds left. You can eat in two. Past that 30 rep mark, you are in for a shot for two. Crouch. Getting close. Jay Crouch probably looking the best out of any of the athletes so far. Bailey Martin, lane five. Don't discount him hit and him at all. Spit it out. It's exciting here at Pat Rafter Arena. Whoa. At this point, it's anyone's game. They're all very level. Bailey Martin speeding up a fair bit at the back end. Baden Brown, what a start from him. Baden just going back, setting his bike up. Jay Crouch doing the same, all these games athletes. So experienced with what they need to do. But just getting a count from the reps. Our guaranteed rate storyline of the day. Don't stop. Newbury has got a habit of doing that. Baden Brown didn't stop the entire time till the two minutes was up. And you don't stop in this event, you get rewarded very well. James looks very composed. But unless I'm mistaken, I just heard that Jay Crouch was on 28 reps. So it is going to be tough going to back up a plus 30 rep set in a second round. This second round, is it really going to set them apart? Not sure if any of them can finish in two rounds, but Getting ahead is going to give them an advantage. Whoever can do it, put a dent in those snatches. Baden Brown needs a good result in this event. second working segment of Don't Stop Me Now. And speaking to CrossFit Townsville affiliate owner, Dan Strickland, just prior to this event, he said that this was going to be a really good event for Baden. He has not slowed down in this round. Look Keeping at the punch on Baden on the Echo Bike. Long loping punching strides with his arms matt mcleod going to work as well silent assassin in lane number six brown crouch dan and garad our first four who is going to get off first brown and crouch done he's there garad can he make up some ground? Baden Brown, 30 done, 30 remaining. Jay Crouch cycling has been exceptional thus far. Brown breaks for the first time. Ricky Garrard. Doing well, hanging on, not wanting to put the barbell down, less than 30. Crouch still going, he's going to leave himself, I reckon, about 10 reps at the end. Brown starting to fatigue a little. Bailey Martin, center of the arena as well. He's moving quick, seconds remaining. Ricky Garrard looks like he's moved forward with Jay Crouch. And at this stage, it looks like a three-horse race. Garrard, Crouch, and Martin in the center 
of the arena here. Royce Dunn also getting a lot of snatches out in lane number two. Baden Brown just seemed to have fatigued out a bit in that last 60 seconds. The intensity caught up with him. But Royce Dunn, he's looking pretty good. Jay Crouch sitting at 50 reps to give us a gauge of where we're at. So Jay's been cycling well. Murph is coming. Are you ready? Get the gear you need to take on the challenge. Visit roguefitness.com. Second rest period has got a minute left on it. Royce refueling. And Tia Claire Toomey, no one is going to outdo her with the two rounds. It's going to take the men three rounds. Gerard Ruff of Fent one. Anxiety, nerves. Unsure of what was ahead of him, but once he settled in, event two win. Event three, very competitive top five score. Great battle with him, Jay Crouch, Royce Dunn, Baden Brown. All athletes that have gone to Madison, Wisconsin before. Underway here. And what has this event got in store for us in the next couple of minutes? Crouch, super quick with his cycle rates. And he may get off first. Yes, he will. McLeod going quick. Brown ripping the handles off the Echo Bike. Baden Brown, look out. Here comes the King of the North. He says, don't count me out of this race yet. Baden Brown, the first judge hand in the air. He needs to get this barbell moving. Garage second, Crouch third, Dunn fourth. Baden Brown, can he get another event win? Brown, he needs to move. He needs to move quick. Ten reps, Baden Brown, Garage to the bar. Royce Dunn there. Coming in third. Crouch fourth. Matt McLeod fifth. Five reps, Ricky Garage. Four reps, Baden Brown. Who is going to get over the line first? Baden Brown. It's going to be another event win. Ricky Garrard in second. Jay Crouch in third. And Bailey Martin. What a result from him in fourth. Royce Dunn still out on the floor. He's going to be next over the line. Matt McLeod. Newbury, Michelle, still battling it out. Michelle will be next in lane eight. Matt McLeod. Newbury. Out of time. But when the pressure is on, the king of the north, he delivers. That he does. He had... He dropped those eyes at the beginning of that last round. And I feel sorry for that poor old Echo Bike, who has just copped a lot of punishment. Gerard, are we going to see him head back to Madison, Wisconsin after four years? But Baden Brown, outstanding. The composure that that took to take that last round off Crouch and Garrard was unbelievable. Now, speaking to his coach and affiliate owner a couple of minutes before the event, he said he's got in the bag. I wasn't so sure after the second round of work. But wow. Now, James Newbury still on the floor. Beto's gone down. 
Ricky's gone down as well. The other athletes down now to help. One of the greatest CrossFit athletes that we've seen from the Oceania region, James Newbury, finish off event number four. Last round, absolutely outstanding. Talk about delivering under pressure. And a guy who won three events last year has now won two events this year. Crowd getting behind the lone athlete, James Newbury. I'll tell you what, speaking to him last night, saying that he's only done one CrossFit workout a week on average. He's in great shape. I think he is just working from experience this weekend. And he has so much of it. That doesn't go away overnight. Lots of muscle memory still in there. He knows what to do. has done himself all the favours by finishing where he has in third position. But James Newbury battling these last 15 Echo by calories. He's going to try and minimise the damage with a respectable time to finish. We'll get to the barbell with not too many over five reps left. Newbury. Soiled hard this weekend already. <laughs> 35 seconds remaining of event number four. And Newbury, can he hang on to these last five reps? <laughs> He does. James Hubery coming over the line to finish. You just jumped out of your skin then, Jeremy. I just did jump out of my skin. I wasn't ready for that one. Well, wow, what a finish to day two here at the Torian Pro. I probably wasn't the only one that scared the life out of. Almost jumped onto the competition floor. Our top men's heat did not disappoint. Absolutely not. And hats off to Mike Towner, the programmer and director here at the Torian Pro for pulling on two wonderful events. Event number one and event number four. Wow. I think by the end of the weekend, we can definitely say we will be sending our fittest from the Oceania region. Oh, I have absolutely no doubt. And a great two days of competition already. Can't wait to see what's coming up tomorrow. But plenty of people will be here to watch the action as well. And the King of the North standing by with Kayla Banfield. Beto, you came in from behind in round three. What was going through your head as you approached that last part of the event? Uh, round two, I was like, holy shit, this is too hard to get done in two. So I was a little bit measured. Um, and then going into round three, I was like, fuck it, I don't have anything to go, like, anything to hide. So I just sent it and tried to hang on to the bar and it, it worked out. The other boys, are, they move fast, they move so fast. <laughs> And now you've got two event wins under your belt. What are we bringing into the final day of competition? Um, I have no, the pressure's not on me. The pressure's on the boys at the top. Um, I'm coming in this weekend just to have a bit of fun and that's what I'm doing and I'm loving every bit of it, so it's, it's great. Awesome, well we love you, Baden. Great job today and see you tomorrow. Awesome, thank you guys. Thank you, Kayla. Yeah, We've got a little last Boston Brown, Baden's little boy sitting behind us. Watching proud dad, Fado, 
wrap it up on the competition floor here. Two event wins already for Baden Brown on two of the most difficult events so far. What does that tell you? Oh, it's a testament to the kind of athlete that Baden Brown is. He is a class act, but he knows how to push it when it counts. And so many fans out here to see their favorite CrossFit athletes, which is great to see. Great for the athletes to be spending some time with the athletes, uh, with the spectators as well. Lots of Baden Brown fans in the crowd. Our rogue replay of the fourth and final event. Look, in the beginning, it was anyone's game. Baden Brown, Jay Crouch, Ricky Garrard, all level pegging in the beginning. Jay Crouch and Ricky looking like it was going to be theirs, but Baden Brown, he said, hold my beer. And on that third round, he just emptied the tank. Beto, in his interview, mentioning that he found out pretty quickly that this was not going to happen in two rounds. So he backed it off a little. So I'll tell you what, sent it round number three. He really just backed himself, didn't he, in that third round. Knew what he was capable of. Got him in ahead of Ricky Garrard, Jay Crouch. Now named at the top of the leaderboard. Beto saluting the family sitting up behind us. Our road results for heat four of our fourth event for the weekend. Leighton Brown just ahead of Ricky Garrard. Jay Crouch again doing well. Very consistent in those top three. Bailey Martin doing what he needed to do and Royce Dunn. It's gonna be an interesting leaderboard shakeout at the end of today. It is moving day. And moving is gonna be happening right across the three leaderboards. The teams, the females, and the individual men as well. And plenty of pink here in honor of Hannah Clark and her three kids today when we painted the pro pink. Hi, How are you doing? Lots of selfies going on. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, back this morning. Seems like so long ago, Pip, that we're into the team competition. It has been a long but exciting day, but our team this morning, Urban Energy, just really going out there and stamping their dominance on that competition floor. They train every day together as a team and it's paying off. But CrossFit and ESF are impressing the heck out of me. Urban, another event win for them. That'll keep them up the top of the leaderboard, EXF chasing hard. Henry with a stumble across the line. But Urban, it's all happening for them after four events. 390 out of a possible 400 points. So Urban doing very well thus far. EXF, as you mentioned, impressive. And all they've got to do is maintain consistency and they'll see themselves at the CrossFit Games later on. Selwyn in third after coming in ranked first at Arwaside with a little bit of work to do on day number three. The women are absolutely outstanding and this lady, Tia Claire Toomey, definitely did not disappoint once again. Oh, absolutely no surprises here with Tia Claire Toomey. She just continues to outdo herself event after event. Don't stop me now. What a performance. Unbroken snatches, the only athlete to get it done in two rounds. But the other women also putting on a great show. Ellie Turner, she needed a good finish in event four. And she delivered. Kara Saunders. Still a dominant performance for her. Probably not where she wanted to finish in that event, but still up the top. And our overall 
women's standings after event. Tia Claire Toomey. Her dominance continues. Four wins from four events, 100 points for each of those. Can she back it up Sunday with another two? We're going to have to wait and see. Saunders, second position. Ellie Turner making a massive jump on moving day, getting into the top three just ahead of Jamie Simmons. That's going to be a tight race to the finish. Maddie Sturt moving up a little as well. And Bailey Rogers, our top six, still our top six. And the men's competition, tell you what, that continues to keep on giving. The men's competition, we've had some real surprises today. Ricky Garrard, he hasn't surprised us though. He has come out after quite a devastating finish in event one yesterday. He looks fresh as a daisy today. Delivering on his barbell complex. Gerard, a lift that he needed to make to maintain his presence in the top three. Plenty more action for the men coming up tomorrow. And a great day two of action here at the Torian Pro. Don't go anywhere if you're watching the broadcast right around the world. We're back here in about 12 hours time for the final day of the Torian Pro. And I'll tell you what, it's gonna be exciting. On behalf of the entire crew here, I'm Jeremy Austin, Pip Malone and Kayla Banfield. We'll see you back here tomorrow, bright and early at Pat Rafter Arena.